ML Play is an innovative gameplay format that is completely unique to Major League Pickleball. It doubles down on the team aspect of MLP competitions. ML Play format starts with women's doubles, followed by men's doubles, and ending with two mixed doubles games. This unique dynamic means that teamwork is just as important as speed or technique on the court and within the community of the league. Bringing all players, regardless of their background or gender, here to MLP. Welcome to MLP Mesa by Margaritaville. This is the second day of coverage, which means it is time for the premier level to hit championship court and actually the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. And welcome, of course, to the Rock and Protein Pickleball Center at Bell Bank Park. We're so thrilled to have you with us. It's time to get the premiere started, but first we need to get you a little glimpse into what our day is going to look like. So let's take a look at our schedule. Starting off the day, we're starting right up with the premier level. Level. So it's the Milwaukee Masters versus the New Jersey Fives. I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be absolutely electric. You're going to want to keep your eyes on that women's doubles matchup. Then we'll head to the Utah Black Diamonds versus the Brooklyn Aces. That's going to be some quarterfinal action from the challenger level. Then we're going to bounce back and forth as the day continues on. But again, that is our schedule just for this championship court. But it's time to get you introduced not only to myself, Cameron Irwin, but also to professional pickleball player Adam Stone. We are in the bird's nest just above championship. Court here. We have a pretty phenomenal matchup to get started. I mentioned the women's doubles. It's Annalie Waters, Leia Jansen facing off against Lucy Kovalova and her normal partner, Callie Smith. That's right. And a lot of fire from that team of Lucy Kovalova and Callie Smith. So this is a great way to kick it off. Challenger level yesterday was phenomenal. If we, how can we up it a notch? But we have with Premier today. So super excited. Uh, a very balanced team in the Milwaukee Mashers and the number one pick in the draft Anna Lee Waters for their New Jersey Fives. Uh, my pick to click or, or the deciding factor in this match very much could be Hayden Patrick when the last pick of the draft. Can he step up as a young buck of 17 years old? Oh boy, that's going to be the big question. We saw some youth out on the court yesterday. There's a lot more youth, but Anna Lee Waters, well, she's added one more year. Happy Sweet 16 to Anna Lee. It was her birthday yesterday, but it's time to introduce you to the third member of our crew as well. You're sandwiched by Cameron. So it's Cameron Irwin. <laughs> Cameron Blackwood down on the court. Take it away, Cam. I think this might be the best match we see all day. There's a lot of gold medals won on the side of Lucy and Callie with, on the PPA tour. But on the other side, you have Leah Jansen and, like you said, the number one player in the world, Annalie Waters. It's going to be who sets the tone first and then who can make the quickest adjustments that's going to come out on top to this morning. Back to you, Cam. All right, so setting the tone is a great, great point to bring up. And also one of the other things you noticed just there on Cameron is the sunlight. That's actually a really big factor here on this court because as the sun comes in in the morning, one side definitely has an advantage. There's also shadows kind of coming in and out as we also have some coverage over the top. There's a look at Leia Jansen there, but we noticed yesterday by about, I don't know, we'll say the second match of mm -hmm. the day, conditions were almost ideal besides some wind yesterday. Correct, yes, and so the, the shadows are definitely a factor. Uh, you know, just one more thing to think about out there for these players, but you're exactly right. Uh, MLP Commissioner Brooks Wiley decided to push the start time back one hour because of the cold weather, and I think that was a good decision with how hard the ball was to start the day yesterday. So um, uh, the wind is very calm right now. We'll see if it picks up in the afternoon, uh, but right now, besides for the shadows, uh, the temperature is really nice, much better than the start of the day yesterday, and I expect that to help the players uh, play a clean game, uh, and especially in this first matchup. A clean game, that's what we're hoping for. But let's give you a little bit of a glimpse into both of these teams. We have, of course, James Ignatowicz, Annalie Waters, Hayden Patrickwin, and Leia Jansen all on one team. They are the Milwaukee, or excuse me, the New Jersey Fives. Whereas the Milwaukee Mashers, it's going to be Darian Young, Andre Deescu, right, Callie Jo Smith, and Lucy Kovalova. So those are the two teams facing off. Let's take a look at head to head as they're about to get to first serve. So 63% to Waters and Jansen. Again, number one player in the world on one side. But Smith and Kovalova, they have a lot of experience facing off against Waters. Exactly right. No, I don't believe that that has a matchup. I haven't seen that matchup uh, at all, so uh, it's great. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. It, it, 
you play with the top player in the game, it's obviously a great situation to be in, but there also is a little bit of pressure. We'll see how Leah Jansen handles that. She was all over it. And as you see, you don't see a lot of players on the right side take so much court, but Annalie absolutely will. The most dangerous backhand in the game. There's actually a few of them out there right now when you're looking. Yes, basically everyone on court, two-handed backhand counter is electric. Watch out. Side out forehand from Cali. Very big physical presence out there. Lots of power in her paddle. No. And as a reminder, in the MLP format, you will have an opportunity. You start with women's doubles, then you go to men's doubles. You'll have two mixed doubles matches. You must win three out or three out of those four to then win a match. The score is 2-2. Two -two. You go to the dream breaker. Just wide on the yeah, slice dink from Callie Smith, questioning the call, and now saying it was good. The second referee. And I will say, too, with those shadows, it is very difficult to see not only your calls, but where the ball is, the trajectory, where the contact. Like, there's just so many elements of the ball traveling in and out of those shadows that make it difficult. Nice job. Not, not to mention. Uh, being 10 feet away from your opponent smacking wiffle balls right at you. So just, it just I mean, these little things are, I mean, the, the edges are razor thin. Everyone's so talented out here. These little things matter. Yeah, and hot is Callie Jo Smith. Big power to start off from the mashers. So comfortable. And we mentioned it. First time Annalie and Leia played together. Incredibly comfortable. Callie Smith and Lucy Kovalova. And you see that with a quick start. added by Leia Jansen. Definitely. So all of 2022, Callie Smith and uh, Lucy Kovalova played together and also to begin 2023 as well. Yeah. Tough break off the left board. No chance for Lucy Kovalova. Lucy and Callie regularly talk about the chemistry they share. Callie saying she just absolutely loves playing with her. Ooh, the ball was called out, but Annalie Waters Looked, looked wide to me, but I have not a great view. <laughs> Second referee saying she did not see it. Annalie not pulling the trigger on the challenge. Only get one per game. Yeah, just sustained pressure. Just really going for it, stepping forward into the court, and not really looking to do a lot of soft stuff. Yeah. Another good look. He was a little late getting in. I like the drive attempt from Kovalova. Stick with it. Especially from this side. It was. It was swirling, and uh, Leah Jansen having something to say to that second ref or a, or a fan. I'm not exactly sure. That brings us to our very Absolutely first quick start from Smith and Kovalova. Like I said, not a lot of uh, extended rallies early on. Uh, a lot of grip in, grip in. I think taking advantage of the first match cold conditions if that ball is definitely flying. We'll see if Anthony yes, can insert herself a little bit more from the right side. I threw out a tweet about a week ago saying that we need to get away from this left side, strong side. Everyone needs to be versatile and be able to play both sides. So, uh, you know, great comment from her. And if anyone can play a strong side from the right side, it's Annalie Waters. 
New Jersey, Jersey, there's been a lot of conversation position. in the opposite direction. Becoming a specialist, exactly. trying to make sure you're so great at your craft on one side or the other. But I don't know, I'm kind of on the side of Anna Lee. <laughs> I think you got to be able to do it all, especially in this format when you don't know who you're going to be playing alongside. So now I would say the good side is where the New Jersey Fives are. At least the sun, maybe not so much in the eyes. And there's a big poach. And a little mini stare down with the fist pump. I love to see the energy from Anna Lee Waters. Lucy Kovalova knows this little something about a fist pump up in the air. <laughs> something. <laughs> Great drop by Leia. Oh, Leia called it out for sure. And I believe we're going to have our first video challenge of the day. Yeah, second referee says the ball was out. The call on court is out. The ball was out. Okay, here we go. Well, I, mean, I think that's three or four <laughs> somewhat questionable calls we yep. had early in this match. So we'll take a look at it a, a, a little bit closer and see what we can see. But I will say, though, too, that's quite the uh, switch from the New Jersey Fives from one side to the other. I do think it seems not only like there's some momentum growing, but also maybe that side switch oh, gives you a little bit extra. No question. It, it could be visibility. It could be backdrop. It could be wind. There is very often a, a good side and a bad side, and it plays a huge role. There's a look. That looks good to me. Just on the outside of the line. We had a couple yesterday that, and you know, that the call on the court is a big factor on whether it can That's be true. overturned or not. Very but I do see this one is like pretty clearly on the line. So we'll have to see if they overturn or not, but I think that they will. Yeah, and I, I mean, we talk about the, the shadows and the lights, and you mentioned it earlier. It's not, it's also for the referees and, and yeah. the players as well calling it's everybody. Lines. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's not just seeing the ball in the moment, in the point. It's, it's also some of the calls and, and some of the weird angles and glares that you get off the court. It's not easy to make those calls. Lucy and Callie sitting at the back, awaiting the decision. So, again, with the challenge, if you challenge and you get the call correct with your challenge, then you get to keep your challenge. So, the Milwaukee Mashers maintain theirs. Correct. I concur. <laughs> yeah, I concur. <laughs> uh, what movie was that? Some Leonardo DiCaprio movie where, where he says, uh, I concur. You. It's the thief one where yes, he like, does yes. all the money. Dang it. I'll come up with it in a second. It's not to catch it. It's another one. Oh, well, somebody, somebody at us. We'll get it here in a second. Let's go. She, she, she gave him the bats out. I love this. It's chippy. This is this is so intense, and this is so, there's so much energy. It's palpable. You can feel it out there. I love it. I love seeing women compete like this too. The more energy, the more aggressive. Communication, like the fiery spirit. I'm all for it. Yeah, sorry, we're gonna keep it on the court, but it's catch me if you can as the movie. Let's move back to the let's move back to the pickleball. Sorry. Great job. When Annalie's poaching, she's the ball, most of the court is to her left. You're thinking she's going to be sitting backhand, but her ability to still come and take that ball forehand is incredible. When she's getting Absolutely. Her court positioning right there. So two points ago, it was her shot that was incredible. Her court positioning rattled Lucy Kovalova just a little bit. She sailed it out. Lots of ways to be aggressive, and her footwork and her movement is one of them. Well, and since the switch, the Milwaukee Mashers have only scored one point. Yes, this is so good. So but Lucy kind of waited at the net, kind of in, in Leia Jansen's grill, and Leia just throws the ball to the side of the court. Oh my goodness, this is fun. <laughs> I love this. 
Get after it, ladies. Let's go. in the air. Lucy Kovalova esque. Go! Go! Not a bad idea to send it up into the rafters on that side. decision by her to take a little half step to her left and rip that forehand. Just too much power for Kovalova to handle. Leah Jensen, just 30 years old. Five foot 10, but using her frame well. Big drive cross court. Yeah, definitely. Those drives crossing from light to shadow. Very difficult on the stick ball. Lucy Kovlov, unfortunately, for her confidence in the game. A volley attempt. A lot of energy over there for the fives. Team owners Gary Vaynerchuk and Ryan Harwood. Kovalova. Your new Major League Pickleball, we played 21 points, must win by two. We hit 20, and there's a freeze. later they get back to the kitchen kitchen and win the point a little bit of everything there from the ladies it's an incredible job from Leia Jansen getting them back up to the net too yeah! you gotta watch out toss that one up like a beach ball she's gonna finish it you can almost see the tension on the first volleys of Kovalova and Smith just knowing that Anna Lee is lurking around ready to pick that off and possibly poach yeah it's making that fourth that much more difficult Makes it so tough to cheat and get a head start. You, there's nothing to anticipate with her ball. It's so difficult to try and pull that ball two hands up the line. And she has the ability to have such expanse and range. It's oh, just remarkable. Absolutely. There's no weaknesses in her game. Unbelievable from a fresh 16 year old. Talk about the tale of two halves of a match. 
19-14 now. Make it 20, which means the score is frozen. You must have the serve to win the point. And right now, the New Jersey Fives have the opportunity. Just long. Where do you look to go in the fourth? The thing is, is occasionally, you might not have to try to keep the person that hit the third back. You might just have to dink and concede the kitchen because yeah. Annalie's just too athletic and too good with her poaches. Yeah, we're always taught to keep the back player back, and that's true, but if you have an explosive athletic player out there, you can't always do that because they can pick those shots off. The second for the New Jersey Fives. Slicing that ATP, but it's defended. morning but once you change sides it looks like you are a different team out there what was said in that changeover um well i mean a lot of it was this was the side and lee just told us to start using our drives and start crashing and it worked you guys are a new partnership going up against a pretty seasoned partnership a lot of people want to know how long you guys have been training before stepping on the court this morning yeah so i think tuesday was our first practice we played once tuesday twice wednesday once yesterday uh, i think tuesday afternoon was kind of when everything clicked and we were just like, all right, like, you know, we, we think we're unbeatable in this MLP team. So, you know, I think we showed that by beating one of the best women's teams in the MLP draft. And in the world. There you have it. Fives are up one to zero. We're going to come right back with men's doubles. Don't go anywhere. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can 
go to Margaritaville too. Visit MargaritavilleResorts.com. Welcome back to the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. Women's doubles just closed out. It's time to get to some men's doubles action. And I believe maybe as a treat we get to see the last point. But before, before I say that, I have to see if our crew gets it dialed up. The last point from the women's doubles. If not, here it is. Yes, perfect. I mean, we saw so much of this. That ATP was beautiful, Adam. But we saw this point in and point out between these four. Hit that ATP better, Kelly. Like, what do you do? I mean, it's just too good. Anna Lee uh, able to dig that after hawking in the middle and still gets all the way to the sideline to, to retrieve the ATP. Just incredible movement from Anna Lee. Wait, is this a, did you just say hawking? Oh, yeah. Like, lurking, hawking. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Oh, absolutely. You didn't use that yesterday. Well, I, got, I, got, I got a lot in my bag of tricks. Hawking, lurking. Just wait. This is happening. All right, let's get to men's doubles. Find out what other tricks he's got up his sleeve. And there's the first off the net. Off the net into the chest. Classic. <laughs> Two nice backhand drives from James Ignatowicz. Just 22 out of Delray Beach. Slippery uh, side spin slice attack from DJ Young. Unable to get it past the heavy paddle of James Ignatowicz. It's Andre Deescu. It's a great ball from Hayden Patrick Quinn. I love the little guys. I've, I've been in this situation like Hayden Patrick Quinn so many times. It's me and a bunch of 6'4 guys out on the court. I love me some Hayden Patrick Quinn. He's a cool customer and a lot of talent. You mentioned just 17 years old, right? Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, but the, the, the whip and the power he creates with that slight frame is very impressive. That's a large Romanian man, Andre Deescu right there. <laughs> Phenomenal Ernie, almost leaping from the middle of the court and clear with his feet. No good. Hayden Patrick went shaking his head right now, saying, yeah, you can't go there. Nice try. Great touch. Very nice shot from Andre Deescu. One of the players that uses his length better than anyone. Full extension, using every bit of that 6'4 frame. Nice solid dink rally from the fellas, very patient. Lots of heavy hands on the court. You gotta pick your spots. Frivolous speed ups do not work against these guys. Nice job by Deus, you chopping that down. Just a few missed dinks right now on the side of the mashers. Yeah, a, cu a couple questionable attacks from DJ and a couple loose dinks. The, the fellas, the mashers will get that cleaned up, I promise you. DJ Young, tons of talent. Really kind of committed to that right side role at the end of 2022. And I really like this pairing, uh, Dayescu and DJ Young. DJ Young known to be one of the most creative on the court. Nice job getting yes, that ball yes. down, but. Both nice hands from Hayden and from Andre. Yes, DJ Young, very creative. I talked to yesterday, the Cardinal sent a pickleball is changing your mind. Sometimes gets DJ in trouble because he's got about 19 options <laughs> with, <laughs> with, with, with all the shot and shot making ability that he has, so. Sometimes too many options is uh, one too many.
Nice job from James Ignatowicz, imposing his will, leaning into the kitchen line, getting that ball to his opponent, DJ Young, very quickly. Wow. Corner pocket. Corner pocket, exactly right. <laughs> you saw Andre's reaction. He was like, really, man, you made that shot? And he did. Little clip off the tape, catching James Ignatowicz, who is really a pretty big stud up at the kitchen line, but hasn't quite got the full feel of the midcourt and the third shot drops. See if he can keep that clean this match. Watch out. just outside the line there. Yeah, so. yes, go, no, I, I was just gonna say definitely a little bit of a shorter return. James Ignatowicz is gonna take advantage of that every time. He drives the forehand and then rips the two-handed backhand cross court. A very nice pressure play from James Ignatowicz. Well, and it's so interesting because as they go through the uh, change of ends here, the short returns are so dangerous, but you're starting to see more and more of them because the service pressure has increased. Correct, yes. So, uh, yes, we, we talk about that paddle technology uh, quite a bit. And so when you can get the grip and the spin, it just allows you that margin for error to hit the ball harder. So when these serves are coming in faster, deeper, and with spin, it's going to create some opportunities for third shot drives and aggression. So uh, that's exactly what we've seen a couple times in this match, and I just don't really see it changing much throughout the day. A lot of heavy hitters, lots of guys hitting heavy balls, and <laughs> it's just tough. It's tough. Without a doubt. So 7-11 now as they switch sides. So Ignatowicz will serve. He's playing the left. It's also one of the unique elements of MLP. You stay on the side you're on. Switching from right to left. And that ball finds the baseline. Yeah, Hayden kind of looking over at James, and James tapping his chest saying, my bad, my bad. Uh, it, it's, it's one of those tough ones. Kind of a stab, a Hail Mary that floats over your head. You're just not expecting the ball to come there. Some slight confusion in the middle. DJ Young checking the ball. Looks like we have a crack. Get a fresh one. Freshy. Freshy. Definitely, when you go out wide to these guys, they got a lot of options. It's a lot to cover. Keep it middle, keep it simple. Yeah, a little low, maybe a foot or two off the kitchen. Reasonable, reasonable attack with how much spin that he creates, but I think he didn't quite fully commit to that one. DJ, I believe, is at his best when he is counterattacking, when he can sit on that backhand. So I think that's why him on the right side makes even more sense along with his forehand creativity. Section happens to the best of us, but really seeing some patience and some controlled chess uh, point construction these last handful. Yeah, right. 
I mean, that was a huge ball from James Ignato, which great counterattack from DJ Young. Rocking the fives paddle too. He's committed to the team, let me tell you. <laughs> Always loving the short guy. They do it to me too, Cam. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I thought it was just because you didn't have it Oh my God. Says no, 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 sir. Let's see if Andre. Did we likes. lose another ball? That's right. <laughs> These yeah. boys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're supposed to play nice with your toys, guys. Big boys here. <laughs> got a lot of, a lot of power, man. I tell you what. I'll tell you what. If I was on that court right now, hitting overheads, we would have gone through seven <laughs> balls by now. Okay, Cameron. All right. Thank you. That's so good. We got a slight little shot of Jeff Warnick over there in the Challenger League yesterday. I think he's going to be having a couple of adult beverages and heckling people. Can't wait for that. Big drive, and I think what happened was DJ Young was considering letting that ball go out, kind of swiped at it at the last second and paid the price. James Ignatowicz nearly had to jump out of the way of that one. And I have no doubt that the conditions on the played a little role in those loose first volleys off the drive from the finishers. So you could, you could see just by the lead up of how they looked uh, with, with their technique, they were just a little off and not quite seeing that ball as clean as they could. So 17 to 12 right now, the Milwaukee Masters is going to take a timeout. Ignatowicz and Patrick Quinn get solid advantage. Also a reminder, the women's doubles went the direction of the New Jersey Fives. So it's the first to three points through these three games. Oh, we got Papa Patrick Quinn in the house. A very nice shot from the booth. Appreciate that. Oh, we got Mama Patrick Quinn too. We got, we got the whole family here supporting. You love to see it. Oh, there's the, we got a rapid clap. Yes. Rapid clap. Yes, excellent work, Mom. Perfect job. Oh, we're using that. <laughs> oh, oh, they're saying it was in. Yeah, and immediately, this is where it's interesting, too. The New Jersey Fives team is actually on the side of the Milwaukee Mashers on the sideline. You can see Annalie Waters there, so they have a good look at that. So immediately, they decide to say, hey, you should challenge that. Yeah, so that's Annalie Waters and Ryan Harwood, the owner, just instantly. There was no hesitation. No question. Said, challenge, challenge, challenge. I'm not, I'm not sure if the finger in the air is, yes. <laughs> is, is what's considered the challenge call, but I mean. It's either that or the, the Rafa Hewitt round them up. Yeah. <laughs> he likes what, what, one of the two, but I think we need a challenge flag. Somebody just yes. start tossing flags yes. out there. Let's but, go full NFL. But but often when that happens, you see some slight hesitation, or they think about what they saw. That was instant, so they have a pretty good look at that ball, and they were very confident that it was in. So we'll see in a second, won't we? We'll go to a video challenge. And now all of them are talking over the net, but there's smiles up there. Yep. They're giving them grief. Slight different vibe than in the women's match over here with the, <laughs> with the fellas kind of meeting meeting at the net having a chuckle having a laugh ladies I'm not sure we would have seen that in that ladies match Cameron <laughs> Most recently, Anna Bright, Leia Jansen now. Probably you know, 25, 30. Catherine so, Brett. So, I mean, the numbers like that, yeah. have to be astronomical. No, for sure. You Here's see a that. look. Ooh, and see, this is a great, great example of the shadows and what can happen on court, too. So, you, yeah. those two bright areas, obviously, the sun coming in and it causes some issues. Right, and they were so confident. That looks pretty clearly out to me. So, uh, wow. Yeah, so, and, and like I said, they were right off the bat, they thought it was good. Everybody's struggling with the with the shadows. It is up to keep that challenge. All I know is I didn't get my eyes checked. <laughs> <laughs> After this event, what am I? I did. I had a decent run yesterday of, of being correct on the calls, but it's tough. 
you want to let everyone know that one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was <laughs> way better than uh, Cameron Irwin at calling balls in and out yesterday. That's a big point. I mean, look, look, at, look up at the scoreboard. If, if, if it gets away from them a little bit more, that's big trouble. So to have that ball stand is huge for the Mashers, and they are very much still in a position where they can make a run in this men's doubles match. Lucy and Callie Joe, someone just gave them a blanket. Get them some warmth down there on the court. And you can see how far over James is is playing too to help out kind of take up some of that space. Correct. Some of the alleviates some of the pressure on Patrick Wynn. Yeah, it's so nice when you have a, a left side player that can take a lot of court so that you can load. Whether it's forehand or backhand, you don't have to you don't have to work about both sides. Okay, let's yeah, I'll stop talking. Sorry. Sorry. I just I just saw <laughs> Ryan is currently talking to our official. <laughs> See if Cameron Blackwood can get in there and maybe find out exactly what's going on. I like this. I think it's pretty clear that no one can see anything. <laughs> So we're looking at a call here, but they already used a, oh no, the other direction. They so the, used a video challenge. The New Jersey Fives used a, no. So there was. Yes, it was. So there was no challenge. It was just a overruled by a, uh, by a referee. That has to be, there wasn't a challenge. We'll wait on the speculation, because yes. I think we've got our uh, our ears down court side trying to figure out exactly what's going on too, so. Gotcha. <laughs> twice, we'll in, twice in two minutes, I'll stop talking. <laughs> So the question, I believe, was in regards to thinking somebody made a challenge call. However, they did not. And I will confirm that with Cameron Blackwood here in a minute. That's a big forehand. That's exactly what he wanted. Too juicy for DJ, but you, you got to go for that one up the shoulder high. I like to call that the flippy long stockings. That's a that's a Rob Nunnery special right there, but the quick flip, love it. Ooh, flippy, what is it? Flippy long stockings? Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah! You remember flippy long stockings? Oh, yes. Yeah, so there you go. At least you got the reference. Some people just look at me like I'm an idiot, so I mean, I, I appreciate you knowing what I'm talking about. Thank you. One of them, I would say can probably consider the most solid player on court in terms of consistency. shoulder of Patrick Quinn and he drops that shoulder out of the way and finds the New Jersey Fives victorious yet again. So, so the score is now 2-0 two two to in the direction of the Fives. Lee Waters, mother to Anna Lee, and former partner. She's been dealing with an injury herself, an ACL. She's out for this season. Nice little hustle from James Ignatowicz to get over to Cameron Blackwood now. She's down there with Hayden as well. Go ahead. Hayden. 
probably the you didn't have that much experience out there with these other guys, but you looked like a veteran. How did yeah. you prepare mentally for the MLB atmosphere out here? I don't know. I just dreamed about winning, so I was like, I'm ready already. <laughs> so. Sounds like he took it from your playbook there. A little bit of controversy on that call right there. Can you explain what was going on? Yeah, well, there was controversy on two calls. Uh, the first call, we hit a ball that I thought was out, but um, they called it out, rightfully so, and then our owner and Anna Lee, they all thought it was in, and I was like, okay, I guess I'll challenge it, but um, I thought it was probably out, and it was out, so not really any real controversy. And then the second thing that happened was we hit another out ball that they didn't call, and then the ref called it out, and we were like, oh, but they didn't call it. But really, nothing, like we didn't get screwed. I mean, both balls were out, in my opinion. So. Well, there you have it. But how do, you, how do you just come back to make sure you win from that? Because sometimes that can really rattle your team. Yeah, I mean, it could have. I, I think it can rattle you, um, especially if you think that you're in the right. But I knew that we were actually in the wrong. So I was like, OK, I didn't get away with, away with it, you know. <laughs> there you have it. Well, they're now up. The fives are up 2-0. to zero. We're going to head into mixed doubles. Don't go anywhere. At Front with Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From with Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. And I said, Sarah Day, no one's here, right? Are you getting this? You get, you know? So if he wants the end, Water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Championship Court, the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. Meanwhile, you can see all the action taking place here at Bell Bank Park. Of course, the Rocket Pro Team Pickleball Center at Bell Bank Park. So it looks like you've got a good matchup right now on some of the outer courts, but more importantly here on our championship court, it's time to get to mixed doubles. In terms of uh, matchups, I believe we might have Callie Joe Smith, Smith alongside Andre Deescu. The Milwaukee Mashers are the home team, so they have the advantage by responding to the New Jersey Fives mixed doubles team. And I think, I think we'll have James Ignatowicz and Annalie Waters as well, very comfortable with each other in the same practice group down in South Florida. Oh, that's a great point. So I believe that's what we're going to see. And also important to note, uh, with a 2-0 score, if the New Jersey Fives pick up the first mixed doubles here, they would then pick up the match victory. So I don't believe either team has ever played a tournament together. Oh, here we go. We got the groups. So here's a look at your groups for the premier level. Group A, B, and C. You can find 12 total teams, four members on each team. 
that's what's so fun about this 2023 season on the MLP is that it's all about setting up this relegation system for 2024, trying to make this as fair and even as possible because we will have a redraft halfway through uh, this year from season one into season two, where the ownership groups will then switch from premier to challenger level and vice versa. Players will also be redrafted. So you may see some of those challengers coming up. You may see some of those pre premier level players dropping down potentially. But that will be after the first three events in 2023. So it is Annalie Waters and Gabe Zignatowicz versus Deescu and Smith. A little ambitious from Deescu on a low attack attempt. Just rolling over the net. Great hands in the midcourt from Anna Lee to neutralize that point. Let court too much, though. Oh, that nearly gave him a good bounce. Uh, yes, absolutely. Callie Smith, incredibly athletic, moves extremely well, always great at digging balls when she's scrambling in the back of the court. starting to work around the corner. Exactly. Maybe add some pressure. Right, and, and you know, Annalie might have just missed that, or maybe she caught him out of the corner corner of her eye, and uh, that played a factor in that miss. Oh, that is a big backhand from Callie Joe over the top of her head. Take a look at this. Night, night. Skadoosh. Night, night. <laughs> Skadoosh, yes. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, and Andre leaning to the middle. He, he will have to do that in some of these points in mixed doubles, so can the Fives find that perfect balance of attacking Cali and going behind Andre? We shall see. Cali looking to go up the line in the backhand of Dayescu. She is fearless in that regard in terms of anyone that's in front of her. Nice job from James Ignatowicz. Really strong forearms and wrists from James. Gets a lot of whip on that ball. Power and spin, forehand and backhand. And just finding the line is Ignatowicz, like a sniper. That was an inch from both lines, perfectly placed in the corner. Too good from James. Looks like the fives, uh, especially obviously Annalie Waters playing on the right side, they're really looking to take advantage of Andre Deescu leaning too much to the middle. Even the one she missed, that's three or four shots she's gone on up Andre's line. Not something that you see too frequently in the mixed game, but they seem to have something there. And like you said, Annalie fearless, regardless if it's male or female in front of her. And she did volley that ball, but it's a little tough when uh, James is right there. Yeah, I'm not so sure that that wasn't a speed-up attempt. You don't that, think so? I, I, I'm not sure that that was a lob attempt. Maybe, maybe I'm fair. wrong. Maybe no, I'm you're, wrong. you're probably, I would say <laughs> <laughs> the likelihood of that is very slim. <laughs> You've been more right than wrong, let's put it that way. It's tough, there's not a lot of places to go. I mean, you, you have that ball that's an inch or two high, you feel like you should attack it, and maybe against other players you should, but when you got the heavy hands of Annalie and James, it puts doubt in your mind. 
was going to say, so where are you even looking to go right now? They're keeping Ignatovic back and then finding the opportunity. That'll work. I feel like some teams, when James has been on left, he does have that wicked two-handed backhand that everyone has come to know. But it seems like teams at different times have maybe attacked him dinking with that two-handed backhand roll. Big inside out backhand from Anthony. And it's tough because you, you think maybe you could return to James and keep him back, but his drive is so good and Annalise so good at crashing. It's kind of a pick your poison type of situation. There's the one hand flick. Yeah, actually, Callie Smith was in a pretty good position clearing her body, stepping to the right, but the off pace kind of threw off her rhythm out in front of that ball and therefore put it down into the net. Kind of good. At our change event, it is 5 to 11, Nash to 6. So at 11, and they switch ends. Let's take a look out on our grandstand courts ball. where it's, gonna go to the loudest it's getting so a little get spicy out, out there. there. That's Frazier and yes. Fudge in a, out. In a very tight match, I believe it's 19-19. The fans getting rocking. I love to see the energy today. It's going to build all weekend long. Step back out. Kelly Joe. Andre. Up against a little bit of a wall here, trailing by five. Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously almost never at a loss for words, and I'm, I'm just not quite sure what the masher should do right now in terms of the strategic approach. Uh, just, just really tough situation. Good yeah, start, let's Callie let's Joe Smith trying to take over a little bit more. Yeah, just do that a bunch of times, Callie. Let's go. <laughs> Callie Joe, one of the hardest working on tour. fitness, but she also is a full-time mom, uh -huh. full-time pro pickleball player, and she has a job on this side. I mean, this woman is pretty incredible in that regard. And she's got her workout Wednesday. Workout Wednesday, she's got some killer traps, and we, we heard Anna Lee talk about how she spends more time in the gym than on the court. Yeah. That's what a lot of players are going to. Uh, limiting their court time a little bit and being in phenomenal shape. A spot for Manalee after a couple of needed points from the Mashers. Uh, Steven Waters out of Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, watching intently. I like he's always uh, rocking the gig up. <laughs> Nice job catching uh, Anna Lee Waters in the midcourt, looking to drive that up Deescu's line again, unsuccessful this time. Seems like there's been a little bit of a shift too. You saw a missed dink on the backhand side of Ignatovich too, just a few rallies ago. Looks like she's trying to find more space on the backhand side of Ignatovich. And that's also the far end of the court for the Mashers right now. The sun has already moved to where yep. it's not in their eyes. So I'm not sure that there is a good side, bad side necessarily right now. Doesn't take long. She short hopped that ball, and I even thought, ooh, there might be enough on it to speed up. Yes. Uh, yeah, if, if James gets a plain kind of vanilla dink, even if it seems unattackable, he often goes with that with that flip shot, and he instantly, after that miss, said, I need a timeout, and I think that's a wise decision. After the mashers, the last couple minutes have really put the pressure back on tying up this match at 12. And I do feel like, and you got Lucy Kovalova over there, there was a point in that rally where a ball was sent middle between Callie Joe as well as Andre. Mm -hmm. And there was a little hesitation, right? A little movement. But there's also one missed opportunity. I feel like Deescu, you saw Callie Joe kind of work around the corner, and mm -hmm. Deescu didn't fill early enough right. into the middle. And there right. was a shot for him to right. be able to stay aggressive. That's where some of that continuity in terms of playing together really becomes key. Of course. Uh, you you kind of just get a sixth sense when you played with a partner a handful of times. You kind of know. So it's kind of like, 
like Andre looks, oh, she's doing that, let let me. So it's it's just a half second and a half second and this sport is a gosh darn eternity, Cameron, let me tell you. <laughs> Without a doubt. So a timeout taken at 12 apiece. Now back out on the court. That's a good look. Uh, athletic player Ignatowicz, but just, just enough of a middle dink from Callie Smith to make him go to full extension. around the corner, Andre coming in, because James is doing a really nice job just kind of keeping that ball middle. He hasn't sent that back to the DSQ backhand. Yeah. And that is a strong, strong overhead from DSQ. And that was a very slippery uh, setup from Callie Jo Smith. Thank you. Uh, which thinking she was going to go middle, she manipulated her paddle right to his outside shoulder. Phenomenal job by Callie. That's a rarity, overheading and overhead. That's a good spot and a really nice shot from John Vernadovich, and I think he needed that. I think he had had a couple opportunities and maybe laid off because he made a couple mistakes earlier on, so that one will help him. Wildly quick hands there, and then the mystique on the backhand side. The mashers are on their feet. Absolutely, and you see them a little more percentage of balls going to James Ignatowicz, and you don't see that too often in mixed doubles, but this is an opportunity where I think it's correct. He goes to the backhand, but then he went back to finding the middle again. Exactly. So, they, I mean, I really like the adjustment and the strategy from the mashers. They're not just beating their head against the wall. They're they're messing with it, uh, the patterns, and doing exactly what they want in their favor. Yeah, they're problem solving, right? Try yes. one thing and, and then find if it works. Keep rolling with it until it doesn't. That's right. Always the, the general comment, this is chestnut checker, so you got to figure it out in the moment, and it's not always easy. Kudos to them. I mean, it's obvious that Ignatovich has more raw power than Anna Lee, but she just doesn't miss. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, I mean, I would, I would target James and just hope he makes some mistakes. Anna Lee's going to give you nothing. I was going to say, they've completely neutralized her to an extent in the last, say, 10 points. Exactly. And I, I, I even like that from Callie. She had James leaning middle, a little too much side spin, carried that ball wide, but I think she did have an opening. like that, New, New Jersey Fives, tie things up, 17 apiece. Yeah, I made that comment about the sun not being a bigger issue, but we've seen so many not clean first volleys from the far end of the court and haven't seen too many on this near end, so. Well, and to your point, if you look at the court actually right now, where is the sun beam? It's literally right at the eye level yes, at the right, kitchen line right, on that right, far side. Right, it's tough. And and, <laughs> and so the, the sun might not necessarily be in your eyes, but the ball travels. Through it. <laughs> through sh through shade and through sun, and that just makes it difficult to track and to pick up. You know, it's funny, I was watching the uh, Australian Open last night in that beautiful facility. There's the sun is just directly and only on the court in the exterior of the court, yes. and it just yes. is a beautiful thing. Everyone else is like shaded <laughs> and closed. Definitely. I'm like, at least it makes it nice on the players. They're also playing in about 20 degrees hotter. Yeah, right. But, 17 apiece now coming back out. Crunch time. Who's going to step up? I mean, this Usually is, crunch time. I mean, this is MLP. You know, I mean, these these points are such high stakes. Let's look at the Michelob Ultra. Joy Cam. 
They've got a lot of joy in this facility, that's for sure. Some help from the net. That was well done, but still the pressure being applied by the Milwaukee Mashers. Yeah, tough break from James. He had a good look at a forehand, and, and the let court kind of neutralized the point, letting Milwaukee get back into it. six times incredible scramble from the mashers up by two and another shot from Callie Joe Smith make it 20 to 17 the mashers are at the freeze even though they trail by two games Game number three. Yeah, really nice match. Uh, definitely, I like the adjustment at the midway point from the Mashers. Uh, certainly not picking on James, but being a little more even in their ball distribution and hitting a few more shots to him. Uh, certainly didn't break down, but definitely had a few errors late in that match that I think that uh, cost the fives. So, Emily Waters now talking to Lee Waters. And to your point, James Ignatovich having switched. He's one of to, from tennis to pickleball has done an incredible job spending a lot of time in the film room getting himself prepared for these high level matches but it's time now to head to Cameron Blackwood who is with our winners the Milwaukee Mashers from game three. Callie Joe, you guys were down 0-2 this was a must win came out a little bit slower but once you changed in you came alive what was said in that changeover? Well, it's really nice when you have Andre as a partner. He's very positive, kept us going. You're, no, you're never out till you're out. He just said, you know, go for it. Whatever happens, happens, just compete. And that's what we did today. And we did great together. So it was really fun. Looked like you really changed the strategy and start going to James and Nottowich on the other side. What were you seeing? Uh, well, we're, we're trying to move the ball around quite a bit in the beginning and it wasn't working. So we figured we, we want to sing a lot of player. We tried to pick on James and it was working. and. Uh, you know, it kind of kept working, uh, and we, we kept doing it, and luckily it got us a win. There you have it. Mashers on the board, one to two. We're going to head into the next mix. Don't go anywhere. to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Oh my good lord, what a feeling All of this joy I've been stealing We all need someone, someone that can make us believe So call me a man on a mission I'm guilty by my own admission Locked up but I break free No chains could ever take me Can't stop, don't stop 
It's time to get back to this epic start to our second day here on the MLP. This is Mesa by Margaritaville, the Rock and Protein Pickleball Center at Bell Bank Park. That's a look out to the grandstand, but championship court has been phenomenal to this point. The New Jersey Five started off strong with a 2-0 advantage before heading to Mix, now dropping the first. And now they look to push to a dream breaker. Cameron Irwin alongside Adam Stone. And this one, it's going to be interesting. You've got Leah Jansen alongside Hayden Patrick Quinn facing off against Lucy Kovalova and none other than Darian Young, DJ Young. That's right. So let's see in this match if possibly Hayden has the ability, but does he have the length to cover enough court and mix? Much less of an issue for men's. I find it to be an issue for myself as well. I find it kind of in my own area in men's, and when I have to put pressure in the middle, sometimes I have trouble covering behind myself. So we'll see if that happens to Hayden Patrick Quinn. Lucy Kovalova, phenomenal mixed doubles player. Longtime partner with Matt Wright. She has an amazing forehand dink and an incredible two-handed backhand counter. Uh, and DJ Young plays a great bull. Lots of options, lots of offense, and uh, it really keeps you on his toes because you never know what he's going to do. All right, so you've got the expectations now for this one. You got Hayden Patrick playing the, lo the left, Leah Jansen on the right. Let's go. And first point to the New, New Jersey Fives. If the New Jersey Fives pick up the win here, they pick up the match win. straight at Kovalova. Yeah, with the two-handed speed up, and I don't think that that was an obvious offensive opportunity. Great job from Hayden, creating something from almost nothing. Big move from Young. Very nice two-shot combination. Hayden Patrick been almost able to dig it out on the shoe tops, but couldn't come up with it. Reasonable look from DJ, maybe a slight overextension from him, but with that forehand capability, fine with it. That's tough on the backhand side because you get that natural kind of curving off of the court. It makes yep. it more difficult to keep that in. Uh, he definitely had the angle, just couldn't keep it in the blue. the ground or you have the two hand which is, has the lipping ability the curve ability to bring that back to the court yes. opening those hands is Lucy Kovalova for the first two she could manage here's a look at your Margaritaville kitchen cam spot but he created it just three or four points ago so I guess I guess one out of two isn't bad three, five. 500. <laughs> anything above 500 you're feeling pretty good load up on the forehand from DJ <laughs> catching Leia Jansen in the right hip and some great cross board dinking from Kovalova. Well, no, it was remarkable. It's a load up, yes, but it was actually more compact. He just sat there and anticipated it. sexy time of the day. That was so nice from DJ Young. And I think that was a great point by you on the previous point, that DJ gets a little big swing happy sometimes on his counters. If he can keep it compact, he's got the power. 
right hip of Leah Jansen. That's right. I think Leah was expecting that a little more middle. Great try from Lucy Kovalova to catch her on her fourth Six side. Five. Kovalova goes for the exact same play, and DJ Young is there to complement it. You can see how happy Lucy is. When your partner makes a nice poach like that and hits a good shot, no, one, no one's happier than their partner. <laughs> Air from Hayden, and I believe it was 5-2, the fives, and a six-point run from the Mashers. And another for the Mashers. Starting to load up. I think An so. Interesting take. And Lucy's smiling again and a slight head shake. Always animated out there. Time to take a timeout for the New Jersey Fives. Don't need to take or excuse one. me, it's the change of end. Yeah. The score hadn't quite updated yet, I'm yeah. sorry. No, definitely. And I think it was, we, we briefly talked about uh, DJ Young occasionally getting swing happy and too big of a swing, having to time it perfectly with his corners. I think we saw that exact same thing from Hayden Patrick went right there off of the third shot drive. Almost bring that paddle back too far. And when it gets too far back, your timing has to be absolutely perfect, and it's just not easy to accomplish. It's so hard because it's enticing, especially when you feel like you've got such a good read and you've got the time to load up. You're sitting there, you're like, I know, I know this is coming, so it gives you that much more emphasis. It's tough. Definitely, and, and all these players' defense is so good. Sometimes you actually break form and try to do too much. Yeah, that's so, fair. So I, I think it's a combination of things, but everyone out here has enough power in their paddle. Keep it compact, mm -hmm. use their pace against them, and it's just not always too easy to accomplish in the moment. Yeah! It's honestly so remarkable as Lucy Kovalova finds one there. How much these paddles will work for you now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We try and still do so much, but sometimes you just gotta lay it out there. And we'll very nice topspin roll from DJ Young. Hayden Patrick when leaning to the middle and DJ Young using some of that variety nicely there. Accepted beautifully by Young. <laughs> Look how happy Lucy is. She's been smiling the whole time. <laughs> she just, and, and you know, you know DJ Young's feeling it when he does the, the crouch come on. The crouch, the crouch where he does the full clinch and the come on. You know DJ Young's feeling it. When he gets hot, he is definitely one of the bigger momentum players out here. Very impressive start for the Mashers up 14-5. Just clicking on all cylinders right now after a tough uh, a gender doubles in the first two matches. Just looking like champions so far in this mixed double. Looked like it was all New Jersey Fives to get this thing started. So again, if the Milwaukee Mashers pick up game three, here's a look at this last point. We just had to get the double crouch. There it is. <laughs> the crouching tiger. That's yes. what we're going to call it. I like it. Oh, I love it. But if the Milwaukee Mashers pick up the victory here, they move to the Dream Breaker. There we go, there we go. Nice job there. Change of pace. Yes, definitely. And Hayden was, he, he stayed home a little bit more on that time. He got beat to his left side earlier from DJ Young on the same shot. Better job from Hayden. Tom, we've really seen it up high. That was a phenomenal shot to keep that low, to keep that ball in. Incredible. There's the fist. Let's see it. Oh, nope. oh it, was going, it was going up. It was going up. <laughs> that is a beautiful, beautiful 
little shot from Hayden Patrick Gwynn. That might be the slowest winner we see all day. Slowest winner, <laughs> but a winner nonetheless. That's right. We'll give it to you. And, uh, you know, that happens sometimes when you're making moves like DJ was there looking for the Ernie. Right, you want to be able to have that Ernie to apply pressure in so many different and necessary ways. Out of bounds, off the lob. Yeah, I think Hayden might have jumped too early on that one. He was kind of coming down as he was hitting it. Very difficult to control that ball if that's the case when you lose your balance. Who needs stats in pickleball, honestly? Just start doing stats on the finger wag. There it is. What a replay. <laughs> Great job in the booth by Boxcar Productions. Phenomenal catch in the wag. And by the way, I'm totally joking on the stats. <laughs> I would love some stats in pickleball. <laughs> Just being silly, guys. <laughs> Shot from Leia Jansen. Yeah, two or three big two handers from Leia Jansen. Some hard eights in the backdrop. The crab walker himself. Getting the claws ready. First Miss Dink from Lucy. I like the pattern for her in that cross court battle with Leia. Yeah! Yeah! That's a great change in direction there from Lucy, the one hand. Yeah, and I really like the setup ball where she was full extension leaning into the kitchen with the forehand and puts the backhand away. Jansen with tons of experience in singles. Hadrian Patrick can also do just some damage as well. But it's time to get to Cameron Blackwood with Lucy and DJ. DJ, a little bit of a slower start for you guys, but then you went on a 12-0 run. What was clicking? Yeah, I mean, we actually, uh, I was supposed to play with Cali, I think, and then they decided last minute to switch it up, and then me and Lucy didn't practice very much, and then I think after a couple points, we kind of got into a rhythm, and it worked out really well, so. That's all I got for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're wrapping that up for me. And now you're having to switch from a doubles mindset into a singles mindset in the Dream Breaker. Not an event you play on the PPA Tour. How did you prepare? Well, I used to play singles a long time ago, so I will just do my best. You know, we have great, we have four of us. We are still a great athlete. So even though we are not single specialists, I still love we are here to compete. So we're going to do our best. There you guys have it. Masher's taking it into a Dream Breaker. Back up to you, Cam. Well, and I love that. That's a great co point in terms of conversation. Lucy Kovalova now doing some singles, but she's no slouch in terms of what she used to do in 
tennis singles as well. She was a great tennis player. Absolutely. And she really was at the top of the game three or four years ago in singles as well, yeah. a contender uh, uh, for, t for titles. And she's kind of pulled back and focused more on doubles. doubles but I, yeah. I, I promise you, uh, she'll be just fine out there That's smacking what I'm those saying. ground I'm strokes. not worried about that, not by any means. Yes, so. definitely. And I would. I would say, I mean, we have the number one and the number two women's singles players in the world right here on the same team, Annalie yeah. Waters and Leah Jansen. That's and, very fair. And in this in this pool of, uh, of 24 uh, men and women in the Premier League, I would consider James Ignatowicz above average and Hayden Patrick went right around average. So uh, just a phenomenal uh, singles team. We'll see if the Mashers can do some damage here. Callie Joe, though, is a phenomenal singles player as well. DJ Young has been doing more in singles as of recent, trying to get ready for MLP. We even had Andre Deescu uh, signing up for a, a singles tournament for the first time in a couple years to get ready for this event. There's and been I'll a few of those. Yeah, I mean, four points at a time with all of the quality ground strokes that these players have, it, it's not going to be a huge issue. Often on the PPA Tour, when they're grinding it out a full day, it's a battle of attrition, and, and obviously skill is hugely important, but right here in this form, Format, anything can happen, I promise you. Well, now you can look right now out to the grandstand as well, but it's going to be interesting. So as a reminder, the Milwaukee Mashers were the home team, so they had the advantage in terms of responding to mixed doubles. So now the advantage actually lies the opposite direction, the New Jersey Fives who get to respond to the Mashers lineup. Exactly. So right now we're just about to get a note from Cameron Blackwood, who is bringing us the matchup. So how this Dream Breaker will work, four, four rallies each singles player will play against a specific opponent. After those four rallies, you then rotate out. It is still rally scoring until you get to 20, or one team gets to 20 where the freeze comes on. So I've got your matchups for you. It's Andre Deescu versus James Ignatowicz for the first, then DJ Young versus Hayden Patrickwin for the second. Third is Callie Jo Smith versus Anna Lee Waters. Then it's Lucy Kovalova versus Leah Jansen. Now, while we will be Again, a dream breaker here in just a short minute on our championship court, the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. There's also dream breaker taking place out on the grandstand. So they're just about to get underway. So it's the Shock and the Black Bears. There you go. The score is two to zero now. So things are awfully close. Jay Devillier out there now. against Federico Stackstrud. Score is 3-0 for the Black Bears, the BLQK. And make it one more. That was a wicked forehand from Stackstrud. Yeah, I mean, seeing Stackstrud win four points, you know, you don't think much of it, but then you look at his opponent, Jay like, J Devillier, yeah. like, <laughs> well played, Fed. <laughs> So Adam, walk us through these matchups one more time here for Championship Court. What do you think? No, I, I think I think it's probably the right play. Uh, but you know, uh, I actually ha have had a couple conversations about this. Is where does Annalie actually stack up in the men's game in singles? That's I, a good question. I would still lean towards putting Hayden ahead of her, but I'll tell you what, it's probably probably fairly close. So um, yeah, so we have uh, the Andre versus James. James, I believe, actually really had some big results. In, in, in singles uh, six to nine months ago, and I think he's fallen off just a bit, so I think he wants to get back at, at, in the action and prove that he's a top five, possibly top seven singles player, and I definitely think he has the ability to do that. DJ and Hayden, DJ's got some uh, some nice ground strokes, and Hayden, a very quality singles player, maybe not in terms of medals, but he has beat some of the top guys, and he has a lot of uh, things to like in his singles game. Callie and Annalie play each other all the time. Uh, as, <laughs> as fair. Ca uh, Callie Smith, Catherine Parento, Leah Jansen, Annalie always kind of find themselves at the end of these singles yep. draws. So very comfortable with each other. And as Lucy said in her interview, pretty quality singles player a couple years ago. Uh, and she will be matched up against Leah Jansen, who I think right now is the clear cut number two in women's singles. All right, well, we have our matchups here for the Milwaukee Mashers versus the New Jersey Fives. Dream Breakers are a plenty here in the first event, whether it's the challenger level or the premier level. This is your first glimpse 
into the premier level dream breaker. James Ignatowicz versus Andre Deescu. Four points. Lie ahead. over there, James. Three beautiful two-handed backhands from Ignatowicz. So he had success on that last rally going cross-court with three balls. That time he tried to go down the line. Yeah, I think each one was better on that first point. <laughs> Maybe he should have stuck to the same spot. Let's go! It's for two rallies going to point. Little, yeah, a little late getting around on the forehand from Andre. What hustle from Ignatowicz. He thought he was in trouble and then he wasn't. Yeah, great court coverage from James who, yeah, for, for his length and his size has some very good footwork and good movement with his lower body. Now to DJ Young and Patrick Quinn. Drop shot from Patrick Quinn. Yeah, as, you, as you see from DJ Young, he's not necessarily a grip it and rip it. He's more of a manipulating the ball, has all the shots. So I expect to see more of that from DJ. Missed return from Hayden. So two now on the board. Nice shot by Patrick and getting that to the backhand side of DJ Young. Not a bad shot uh, for DJ, his two-handed backhand, but does prefer the forehand. There's a big winner from Hayden Patrick Quinn. So those two go two and two. Not, not a short return, but it did float up a little bit for Hayden, and he knew exactly what to do with it with the inside out forehand. Five by two now. Yeah! That was just a thing of beauty, lots of space to work with. just don't exist. I mean, that's ridiculous. That almost landed in the kitchen. Unbelievable angle on the backhand side from Annalie Waters. And that's just why she had success on that same shot just a point ago. But Callie earns one now. Callie using her length, getting up there to the kitchen line. Yeah, in terms of movement and, and length, and physical presence, Callie Smith, very high on the list. Great shot from Callie Jo Smith. She went two and two. And she is fine. With Annalise, she works hard to, to get over there to hit that inside in forehand. She's, she's playing some mind games right now. She gave, I mean, that's the first point that she played Lucy and she gives her the Lucy with the, with the fist up in the air. Dude, this chick is mentally tough. She's got a degree in psychology. You better watch out. trying to go behind her and not to the open court, a little tricky, and Leia held her ground nicely on that backhand volley just inside the sideline. Leia's got the first two, two more to go. And Lucy here is one, missed return, or excuse me, missed third. Go 
Sovalova. Yeah, that's a huge shot to create that pace, that crispness up the line too. Easier on the cross court ball, huge down the line backhand. So back to the beginning we go. James had the better of Andre in the first round, three to one. like the bailout lob too often, but I think that was a time was for a it. He, he, he was in a very tough spot. He was at least able to get back into neutral court position. And just wide, so Deescu with the second. Nice fancy footwork on the kitchen line from the big man Deescu. I saw that point, it was Gosh, pretty good. Cool. Was that thing beautiful? Oh yeah, it was good stuff. So we're switching, 11-10 for the New Jersey Fives. Hayden Patrick went with the ball on his paddle. He will be serving on the near end of the court. 10-11, change bets. You look at my little sticky note here and it's remarkable just how close these rotations have been. It was two and two for Callie and Anna Lee. Lucy and Leah was two and two. DJ and Hayden was two and two in their first round against each other. Andrea James just switching terms. protecting that line. That was the shortest distance over the net. Yeah, and he was kind of leaning a little bit to his right, DJ Young, and Hayden hit it to the perfect spot. Great kind of half guess from DJ Young. Yeah! That was very slick. Yeah, huge shot. And I'll tell you what, anticipation is the same thing as foot speed, and we saw that with DJ Young. Nothing he can do uh, right there. Just a nice job, especially on the really, really high lob. Sometimes it messes with the overhead. Good composure from Hayden Patrick win. So they go to it too. Trying to find that deep corner. I'm still waiting for Anna Lee to make, I don't want to give her a commentator curse, but I'm waiting for an unforced error. Just so solid, <laughs> so incredible out they there. They don't exist. Yes. She doesn't need that stat line. Yeah. Oh, commentator you did it! You did it, though. I, I apologize, Anna Lee, the Sweet 16 yesterday. That's my bad. She'll she'll pick me up. I got faith in her right here. I get double points for that. That was bad. <laughs> up over there, very intense Callie Smith. I would, the, I would say the most intense uh, girl on tour, pretty close anyway, if she's not. Nice hustle from Callie. She used the video board, ooh, and that ball is called out of bounds. They're gonna challenge that. Yeah, that, that looked good from here. There is Fans are getting some involved. flames right now. Fans not happy. Oh my goodness. 
goodness, I have not seen fans get engaged in this since. Yes, this is, yeah. Okay, we have a gentleman over here to our, to our right who is not happy. I'm guessing he's a Milwaukee Masters fan. I'm thinking so. I'm thinking so. Once again. He's standing right next to Steve Cruz. Yeah, right, I know, I know. And we saw that a time or two from Sealstrom the other day. Looking right down on the ball is difficult. And as Annalie was moving back for that lob, she's looking right down on it. It's not a great angle to make the call. They're going to challenge this. Lucy Kovalova still hit balls. I like this. So during this challenge, you can still use the court. Stay nice and loose and warm. Here's a look at the ball. Yeah, that one's definitely good, just on the inside of the line. Yeah, four points at a time. Like almost out of the blue. Right, yeah. Uh, one, uh, four points at a time. Uh, rhythm is, is tough, so you really you really see the players hopping on the, on the sidelines when they're not in the mix, and then they're obviously going to get their touches in any break in the action, like for a challenge. So uh, trying to stay loose, trying to stay warm, uh, and find that consistent contact point throughout these single points. And again, to be very clear, these lines are really tough to call. You're looking straight down. That is really tough coming in and out of the sun. So the call is overturned. The point goes to Callie Jo Smith as that ball landed inbound. So the Milwaukee Mashers up by two. Callie getting the better of Anna Lee three to one in that last rotation. I think it's just a situation where Annalie just missed it because it's not like that was like a winner. She could have got, she was she there. Was, she was on she, the ball. Right, she could have got that ball back easily. I'm yeah. not sure what she could have done with it. So just one of those situations. So now it's hard too because after that now Annalie has to sit. Yeah, for nine total balls before she gets another shot to be back on the court. Right. I wonder I wonder what they're talking about. Just the score? Just yeah, making I, sure I the score is right. I believe they just want to yeah. make sure the score is right. But you better keep moving right now. If you're getting ready. And that's exactly what Leah Jansen is getting ready to do to face off against Kovalova. Definitely. So, so many times in, in the PPA Tour when they're playing these singles matches, you have a, a rough first game or you, you have a tight game in the second round. And, and, and it's so hard at four points in the time to, to get into a rhythm. That's why the Dream Breaker is so cool. It's an it's a equalizer and some of the top talent in the game without a full day of competition and singles, it's tough to be really locked in. So uh, it kind of brings those edges down and everyone kind of gets clumped up and anything can happen. That was the fourth ball. We've got the score. Yeah, I mean, I think this has been three or four minutes, and that's that's an extended break, and that's that really is it's different than one minute. When you start leaking over to three or four minutes, it's going to affect the players not only physically but mentally. Speaking of players, there's a look at one of your Mad Drops, the Los Angeles Mad Drops, Catherine Parento. Yeah, she's getting locked and loaded. Her, her teammates are Irina Tereschenko, Thomas Wilson, and Julian Arnold. I believe they're facing oh, off against the hard eights. You like what you're seeing, ladies and gentlemen? What about that dream breaker? Everybody know. Okay, I think we got it situated now at 15 serving 13. Correct. AB's got us. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's so tough. The service pressure has to be there in the game of singles. You've been sitting for a minute, you miss your serve. That's a point to the New Jersey Fives. Very nice, and I like Lucy. I like Lucy coming in. Leia Jansen so tough from the back of the court. I like her trying to sneak in, but a very nice drop from Leia. Very nice point. A rare kind of. Ding 
dink and dunk cat and mouse point from the ladies. Drew Brees is now in the house. Zubin Meta and Drew Brees, owners of the Mad Drops Pickleball Club. 13 Pro Bowl, 13 time Pro Bowler. Super Bowl champion Drew Brees. I like to I like to call that the no big deal. Just like just like Larry Fitzgerald. What was it, 11 time Pro Bowler? Yeah, whatever, Larry. 11 times, whatever. <laughs> Incredible athletes. Just like out here today. Big forehand. Dayescu's letting this crowd know. Yeah, huge forehand from Andre Dayescu, about three or four inches inside the baseline. Nothing James can do. Too much power from the big Romanian. I think it's out. I'm praying it's yeah. out. I hope it's out. The, the, the fives ladies on the back, I mean, they have a perfect look at it. They instantly put their finger up. So this, what's going to happen now is another another video challenge from the Milwaukee Masters. As a reminder, if you win oh. your challenge, oh my goodness, so close. You maintain your challenge. So because the Milwaukee Masters won their first challenge, they do have the availability to now call this challenge here. So James Nadovic calling this ball out of bounds. Here's your look at it. Oh my goodness, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's so tough. I think it catches. Yeah, I think it catches. So this has been a good time having this conversation again. There is, if this is not tennis. The ball does not compress. Correct. So Correct. even though you might be thinking that ball squishes down, right. that's not the case. It it's doesn't. Rule of thirds, right? Exactly. So it's got to be right directly underneath the center of that ball. Exactly. And another situation is the call on the court is out. So if, if it's not definitive video proof, you can't overrule the call on the court. So that could definitely play into this factor and this uh, uh, judgment from Bob Swilshelm checking out the, uh, the video replay right now. And just as an update with your grandstand coverage as well, the Black Bear is picking up the Dream Breaker 21 to 18. Okay, it uh, looks like we're gonna have a ruling shortly. That was the Black Bears over the shock. Yeah, that one was tight throughout in the, in the Dream Breaker as well. I don't think everyone had a big lead. Oh. So the call stands. The ball is out of bounds. So the New Jersey Fives take the point. Man, that was close. Look at it later. Glad that they label it as close call. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's a, it's a po uh, appropriate, very appropriate. <laughs> Good job, boxcar. It took him about 30 shots to find a sliver of success. James Ignatowicz. That thing was a beauty. Yeah, great rip up the line, going back and forth and forth across cross court line. Great rips from James. Child, this is, I mean, your octave just went up three, <laughs> three levels. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am a, I am a pickleball guy through and through, and this is as good as it gets, Cameron. It is match point for the Milwaukee Mashers. Additional point on the board. Now the score is frozen both directions. Big forehand from Patrick Quinn. He finds another. And another. Hayden Patrick. 
Patrick Quinn, the last pick in the draft, has knotted things up at 20 apiece. 20 all. And look who is back on the court. Annalie Waters and Callie Joe Smith. Just like that, the New Jersey Fives have a shot at match point, 21 to 20. down to that gal's paddle. I will say though, I'm looking right now at the MVP of this Dream Breaker and it's that man right there, Hayden Patrick Quinn. Yeah, played big. That was clutch. Played big when he needed to against DJ Young and a couple huge forehands and calm, cool and collected from Hayden Patrick Quinn. Congratulations to the fives. That was remarkable. But you have to go hats off to the Milwaukee Mashers. They go down 0-2, then pick up both mixed in really gritty fashion. And then everyone's been talking about the singles for the New Jersey Fives. Just take a look at that scoreboard right now. 22 to 20. The Milwaukee Mashers are a team that you need to watch out for. No question about it. I mean, this is Major League Pickleball. Woo! Good morning, everybody. All right, well, someone else that's having a good morning. You got the New Jersey Fives standing courtside with Cameron Blackwood. Annalie, you guys got to choose second, and I heard you in there. You're picking out the lineup. How confident were you in the lineup, especially to the very end? Yeah, well, we have a really good singles team all around. Um, so, you know, we were confident in putting anybody against anybody, but talk to the players. Everybody went against who they wanted to go against, and, you know, Hayden came out clutch in the end. I finished it out, but the whole team really played a big part today. And Hayden, you guys were up 2-0. They battle back, take you to Dream Breaker. You guys are, spirits a little low, but you came back and fought. How special is this team? I mean, it, it's great. I love the Dream Breakers. I love the energy. It just feels good to get the dub. And Leia, how much confidence does this give you moving into the rest of the week and knowing you can fight till the end and come out on top? Yeah, I think uh, we all kind of came out a little cold and nervy today. So now we know even when we're down, we can do it and we can just swing away now. And James, what's the plan to prepare for the next match? Um, well, I, I actually played mixed with Anna Lee and lost. I was freaking out. I was like, oh, I can't lose. Like, if I lose, this is going to look so bad. And naturally what happens in those situations is you end up losing. So next time I'm just going to be like, whatever, you know, make dinks and just let her play, I guess. But thankfully I got saved in the Dream Breaker. I didn't, I didn't really do much. But There you have it. Fives took it to the Masters and came out on top. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more MLP. MLP Mesa is brought to you by Margaritaville. Escape to your personal paradise. Stay, play, live, and dine in Margaritaville. Pickleball United, the official court of Major League Pickleball. HSS, Hospital for Special Surgery, is proud to be the official hospital of Major League Pickleball. Circle, your water, your way. Frameth Pickleball, where Major League Pickleball players and fans get their gear. Michelob Ultra. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. You better get yourself ready, cause I'm about to do my thing. Oh, hey, hey. I'm sitting by the van, now I'm dancing on the half lights. Oh, hey, hey. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the upside. Upside, upside. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the upside. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go.
go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. Six carbs and 95 calories. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant based ingredients and that are third party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com.
Welcome back to Major League Pickleball. This is Mesa, the first event in season number one. This is day two by Margaritaville. Now it's time to head back to the challenger level. Yesterday was all challenger level all day long, and we saw some pretty incredible pickleball. Cameron Irwin alongside Adam Stone. It's time to get into the quarterfinal action, though, for the challenger level. And next up are the Atlanta Bouncers as well as the Orlando Squeeze. So give me a little rundown on these two teams. Well, we saw uh, we saw both of them on championship court yesterday. Everyone played the role beautifully, uh, obviously to advance to this quarterfinal matchup. But I would say my two picks to click are Todd Fote and Hunter Johnson. I like it. Well, there's a look now at your playoffs in terms of how the challenger level is going to shape up. So the Chicago Slice as well as the Bay Area Breakers, they were your top two seats coming out of all three groups at just yesterday. So they get a bye now into the semifinals. So the quarterfinals you're seeing now is the Atlanta Bouncers versus the Orlando Squeeze. And the other quarterfinal that will be taking place on the grandstand simultaneously are the Utah Black Diamonds versus the Brooklyn Aces, who, by the way, got in by 1% on their point differential win percentage, which is wild. 1%? 1%. 1% over the AZ drive. They were waiting at the end of their match, which they lost in the Dream Breaker 1921 late last night, waiting on the court to try and find out when the math would be completed. And it was 1% difference. I think the point differential ended up being around 10 or so total points something at least that's what I've been told or it's been rumored um, but 1% was was the magical number 1% is 1% it's 1% higher <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this early matchup here with the women's doubles obviously going out first I would say that Trifunovic formerly Christine McGrath Brooke Buckner and Bobby Oshiro played a little more solid yesterday and Rachel Redker had some lapses of focus and also some moments of brilliance yes. so we'll see which Rachel Rachel Retger shows up today. I think that's going to be a big factor in this opening match. So the opening match, like you just mentioned, it's Bobby Oshiro and Rachel Retger versus Christine McGrath, or formerly McGrath, now Trifunovich, versus Brooke Buckner. Point to Trifunovich and Buckner. We saw Retger tap in her chest saying, my bad, getting the backhand in the middle of Bobby Oshiro's forehand. Woo! Big drive from Brooke Bruckner, saw several of those yesterday. And Retger is kind of hitting the reset right now, went all the way back to the boards outside the court. Gave Riola Paddle a little tap. Just got to get a little more settled. Yes. Find the middle. Yep, and like I said, flashes are brilliant. We saw it all there, uh, kind of a microcosm right there in those first couple points. Well, and what makes oh. that shot so tough is you got to protect the line if you're line to line with her. Exactly. So it's a it's a big deal for Trifunovic to come over and help in that situation. And same thing. She's going cross court, cross body. Exactly, and that was the key there, is to get it to the body. Because Trifunovic has a pretty solid two-handed backhand counter, but she was, Retger was able to go right at the body and jammed up Trifunovic. Nice power from Bobby Oshira. Oh, we got a late out call. I was blocked by the referee. Uh, no, she's checking with her, her. Okay, Hunter Johnson confirming that that ball was out, so no challenge for the squeeze. Three, two. There we go, Christine. Yeah. Missed time there. Yeah, uh, and Reger was on it. She 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 read the ball early off the paddle of Trifunovic just. Slight mistake into the tape. Nice setup and close by Redker. 
there. And a phenomenal job. She's hit one to the middle, one into the body of Trifunovic, and then goes line to Buck Buckner's backhand. Great job of spreading the ball around from Rachel Rutger. Exchange from the ladies. Three or four powerful shots, ending with a forehand up the middle for Recker. Yeah! Buckner coming in close. Yeah, big power from Brooke Buckner. We haven't said Oshiro's name much. It's because she hasn't seen the ball much. That's right. Uh, I mean, you're exactly right, Cameron. They do seem to have a game plan, uh, the Atlanta bouncers, of targeting Rachel Recker early in this match. Great angle. Yeah, she, she was coming in hot to the middle, and uh, great ball from Reger putting it behind her. Always a little awkward when that happens. Nice combination, three or four balls, and yes, uh, pretty pretty reasonable power with not a whole lot of backswing. Well done. So good. I like that, just off her paddle. Yeah, very slippery from Trifonovic, who we've seen uh, also yesterday as well, taking a lot of those middle and at the cross-court player. And to catch uh, Bobby Oshiro on the left side of her body, that was a very deceptive attack. Eight, six. Definitely awkward sometimes when you're deeper in the court to let those balls go out. Good decision by her. Definitely. I think uh, Trifonovic was thinking that ball was going to come up a little bit more than it did. Didn't have a great angle to be aggressive. Yeah! Some nice defense from Buckner, but again, just continuing the onslaught as Recker. Yeah, I mean, she, she did what she could for sure, Brooke Buckner, but definitely did not let up on the gas, Rachel Recker. So often you watch in the return, Here we go. as much Here we as you go. kind of at times take it for granted, you're going, that sets you up for so much yeah, success. Wow. If you hit that ball within the last six inches, even foot of the court, you put yourself in such a phenomenal position. There's a great one from Wrecker. You just keep them back. There's no way to get in off that third. Oh, 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 oh. The third is good. You still, you have both you and your partner kind of staying and hesitating because you're going, that's a long third to have to make. I think that's an important part of it. You're not necessarily getting an error. You reap the rewards later in the you point do. with court positioning, and that's not very tangible to see, but a real factor. 
Yeah. A shot for Funovic. We'll take the lead 11 10 on the turn. Tight match here. Discussing things. We also uh, helping out with the bouncers. We have uh, Julio Rivera as the team coach. You can see him in that white hat and white hoodie, kind of helping out the squad. We also have, I believe, that is Sarah Hansberry over there couple, giving a couple tips to Bobby Oshiro. So everybody getting in the mix, letting everyone know that they're there to support them, giving them some nice tips uh, of something. Those, those outside eyes, we talk about it all the time, Cameron. You are in the moment. It's tough to see. As talented as these players are at picking up on things and recognizing patterns, outside eyes can really help the situation. I have to say every other professional sport as a coach for a Yes, correct, <laughs> correct, correct. <laughs> no doubt say, about you it. Look around the world. What sport does it? I think it was okay. Unfortunately, her opponent hit a perfect shot, kind of low and slow, but I think that the aggressive move to her right was a good play in the long run. Yourself, but you also open up some other areas. But right now, Roshiro takes some of that pressure off Rutger. Definitely. Nice one-hander uh, from Trefunovic as well. Don't see that too frequently from her going to one hand with the speed up. Found the perfect spot in the back corner of the court. Yeah, so sometimes the let courts help you and sometimes they hurt you. It kind of kind of was a free reset uh, for the bouncers. Yeah. Ooh, sliding to open up that backhanded record. Yeah, and a nice job going middle. I think Buckner was rightfully so kind of leaning toward her left side, thinking she was going to go cross court. Great spot from Rachel. Callan Dawson doing jumping jacks in the corner. <laughs> man's, man's ready. Stay ready so you don't get ready. Yep. Great job. That ball looked like it just took a little bit of a skid there. She's not much not able to lift that ball. And it's the left foot. She gets so grooved in on that forehand dink, she almost occasionally is like, oh, they caught me on the left foot, and we saw a couple errors out of her yesterday from that spot. Well, to your point, she just started jumping around, moving her feet a little bit more. I think she knows it, too. Got to keep those feet moving. Overcooked from Buckner, but definitely her ball in the middle. middle. <laughs> I like her sliding over and taking that forehand. Just a little too extended on that one. shots, but those were some good aggressive dinks and, and, and shots just off the kitchen line. Created an error from Recker. Get up to that 
to mind too. I feel like there might be some opportunities because I'm looking at the side of Trifanovic and Buckner going, you know, it seems like they're hitting pretty good thirds, but it's taking them an extra second to get up there. Charging it on a bad third, obviously a poor decision, but if you hit a good one and kind of hang out, I think that's a mistake as well. Yeah, or is it at a comfortability level in the transition zone too, right? Until you feel like you can really get up there, you're, they're just sticking back? Versus just charging? Yes, no, that, that definitely could be it, and, and that's exactly right. Sometimes you kind of incrementally move forward, yeah. but they're just hanging out at the baseline, so maybe that could be some uh, you know, discomfort in that transition zone. It's just a know. different style. Right, it's, definitely. It's just to everyone, everyone has different skill sets, there's no question. No. See, there's the crash from Buckner, oh. which works beautifully. Yeah, Reger pulling the paddle back, thinking that was going to stay long, and it does not. Nice control from Brooke Buckner to keep that just inside the baseline. kind of go back and forth between drops and low hard drives from the back of the court. And Rettner, great job not trying to keep her back going with the drop volley. say that's an old tennis move, the pre-come on. Yeah, you know, you just kind of, you throw it out there, see what happens. Obviously, it's 
Big play from Wrecker and Oshiro those last couple minutes. Rhymes with both. <laughs> that's what, that's what he told me. He was like, yeah, I'm Todd Fote, it rhymes with both. I was like, thank you, sir. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so definitely what I saw yesterday, Callum Dawson, the Lob Doctor, absolutely rock steady over there. And I will get back to our analysis right after we send it down to Cameron Black. Bobby, you're probably one of the calmest players on tour. But when you're in such a tight match like that, no one can really pull away. How do you stay mentally focused to come out with the win? Um, I think we, we came in with a game plan. We wanted to execute that game plan. It's just being able to take our time between points, play one point at a time, and, and just, you know, focus on the present. And Rachel, talk to me a little bit about that strategy. You guys were keeping them at the baseline heavily. How were you able to do that? I mean, I think our game plan from the start was, you know, play smart but stay really aggressive. And if they're going to stay back, you want to keep them back. I don't want to bring them in. They're a good team at the kitchen line. So we were just trying to do our best to stay aggressive. There you have it. Squeezes up one to zero. We're going to head into men's doubles right when we return. Don't go anywhere. Six carbs and 95 calories. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. You better get yourself ready, cause I'm about to do my thing. Oh, hey, hey. I've seen it from the van, now I'm dancing on the half lights. Oh, hey, hey. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the upside, upside, upside. to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Grandstand in action as well. It's the Brooklyn Aces versus, I believe, the Utah Black Diamonds. Yes, that's correct. So I'm looking at the score from out there. It looks like the Utah Black Diamonds picked up the women's doubles match. Esquivel and McMillan over Gaten Leach and Carr, 21 to 18. They should be ashamed of themselves picking on those pregnant ladies, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking, of course. Uh, so now getting ready out on the grandstand. You've got Rob Nunnery and Greg Dow versus Rob Cassidy and Spencer Smith. Correct. And I would, I think this is an intriguing matchup here. I saw some really great things as the dominant player on the court from Hunter Johnson and Todd Fote yesterday. And I believe that Fote has a rock by his side and Callan Dawson. So my, so I, what I would say is Ben Newell is a, has a little more variance to his game. So he is my wild card for this match. If Ben Newell plays well, they're going to be in a good spot. If he's a little dicey with some of his decisions and errors, then I lean towards the squeeze. I like that, calling him a rock. 
like rock solid. <laughs> he yeah, moves I mean, much better than a rock. Let's put it that way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and here uh, we we have the rock on the left, and, the and, lob and the, uh, yes, and the more explosive player on the right. So, uh, you know. Definitely not shocking by any means, but we'll we'll have to monitor that moving forward. So first point to the Atlanta bouncers. Hunter Johnson now serving former ATP Pro. Yeah, and it was a nice slide from Foat. He cleared his body nicely and had a good look at the counter, but pushed it long. That's a big forehand. So much power and spin. You see Todd Foat kind of having his paddle around his midsection, and he stabs at it. It's at his feet. It's so tough to come up with that ball. Yeah, no, awkward spot, too. It kind of came off the paddle of Ben Duel, a little funky, so I get the issue there. That's a great shot from Callan Dawson, which you're almost starting to see between Fote and Dawson, kind of the communication in the middle because of the styles of play. You mentioned the aggressive play of Fote. Callan Dawson rock steady. That is unreal. I still want to know what magic Callan Dawson just put on that ball for that drop. That thing was spinning a direction I don't think it's impossible. Yeah, I think, I mean, absolutely. That, that was a drive from Callan Dawson. You know, cleared the like one inch with side spin moving away from Hunter. I don't know how he came up with the ball. I think it was. I, maybe somewhere, it was a hybrid somewhere hybrid. in between. We'll give him the hybrid. <laughs> yes, but you're right about this communication in the middle for the squeeze. I think this is more of a 50-50 type situation left and right here, and that could create some issues. And what I mean by 50-50 is when you have two right-handed players and not two forehands in the middle, which makes more sense to be 50-50, I'm talking about the percentage of court they cover. Good explanation. was going to let that go the whole time, but just in case, good partner communication, very important on those third shot drives. Really nice job with the two-handed counter and then being absolutely ready for the next ball, extending that right arm out, unleashing a forehand up the middle. Great shot from Fote. Hunter Johnson definitely put his hand flat. The signal for catching the line. Great shot from Folk. Perfect time for the lob, too, because Newell was going for an Ernie, but unfortunately for Dawson. Was that the first? I believe it was, yes. Okay. Yeah. That was Bindua looking for a Burt alert. He came all the way across the court, and after a phenomenal drop from Hunter Johnson, I can't really blame him. That was off his back foot. 
Yeah, definitely didn't have his balance there. And to go over the high part of the net, up the line, high degree of difficulty from Hunter Johnson. That was a nasty serve. Practically handcuffed Ben Newell just at the baseline. And you got rock steady Callan Dawson just tossing one in. Nice pressure from Ben Newell, leaning into the kitchen, deciding to go cross court right into the body of Todd Folk. out for him. He was going with the side spin forehand around the post attempt. <laughs> he was fully off the court. Uh, unbelievable attempt, even though he couldn't come up with it. I think his teammates on the sideline are still getting the kick out of that one. Yeah, definitely. Like Ocho, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you saw Hunter Johnson's reaction, too. He was just, oh, my goodness, if only. Ready to go. Let's yeah, really, and really kind of synced up here with the Grandstand Court Championship Court, the two quarter finals of the Challenger bracket. And I will say, too, I'm looking through our, our Mesa document here. There is a bonus uh, for making the quarter final. There's also that bonus continues to grow both at the premiere, obviously, as well as the Challenger level for these athletes. So you make the semi, that increases again. You make the final, that increases. If you win, well, that definitely increases. See if that continues for for them now that they've switched sides. Three points, not a whole lot in this format, so anything can happen. Big with this rally scoring. You're kidding me? We've seen swings of what eight points already today. It's a good start. For the second half of this match, I think. I think Cameron Black with 12-0 run. Cam was down there doing the math. I mean, that's wild. 12-0 run. If you get into double digits in a run in this format against these opponents, incredible. Johnson knew he left his dink a little higher than he wanted to, so he was crashing middle to look for the speed up. Great decision by Callan Dawson going behind him soft. Definitely, his thought was so far off the court. You know, tough for him crashing back to the middle. Nice shot from Ben Newell. Uh, I like the decision once he got pulled out wide from Foat, but just couldn't get back. He's biting his fist. He was on it. Yeah, love the pressure. It's uh, it's a good play with the drive and the crash. You know, it doesn't work out every time, but I like the movement from Hunter Johnson. So the ball is hitting most of the exterior of the court to their backhands and then the reverse, finding the ball primarily in the middle with two backhands on the side of Dawson and Folk. Nice work from Folk. And we see the fancy footwork of Newell. And it hasn't got him in trouble yet. He has, he does not like that backhand dink and he's running around it. It's very hard to find it though because he's so fleet of foot. Tough 
miss on the drop from Fote. 14-12. job of letting that ball sail long, even though it wasn't by much. Yeah, got to make that one Fode upset with himself, but I like the decision. I mean, the drive was definitely the play there, especially with Callan Dawson poaching. situation for Ben, but great punch from, from Fote. What I mean by punch is just a quick little short burst of energy right from the chest, not much of a swing at all. Yeah, a couple loose thirds from the, from the squeeze. Uh, really the difference right now. what would have happened as I think Ben Newell was in a reasonable position along with Hunter Johnson. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the tape got in the way and made it very easy put away for Ben. That's dangerous too. You're getting out wide going middle against the two forehands in the middle. Nice drive from Hunter Johnson. Great backhand up the line. Catching float on his forehand side. Hunter Johnson, one of the best drives in the game. We've seen it not only so far in this match, but uh, yesterday as well. Well, and it's so interesting too. You look at the different styles of drives. You got Callan Dawson now driving a little bit more we've seen than we've seen even in the last year or so on two different tours wherever he's playing. But it's interesting because his is so flat because he's not necessarily getting that wrist action on, whereas you got Hunter Johnson who's shaping the ball wildly, but both unique and work in different ways. Exactly, and I think one of what I've noticed from Hunter Johnson's opponents is that they're not particularly reading it well right off the paddle. So they're they're leaning one way and they're just a late, late getting their paddle right where they need to. So Hunter Johnson is doing something, whether it's his footwork, his setup, or, or the manipulation of his paddle that is throwing his opponents off. So look for it on the next Johnson drive. See if you can pick it up. Ooh, beautiful one. Ooh. knows it's going out. He tries to pull his paddle back, but he's kind of sliding into the ball a little bit, so it makes it very tough. All of a sudden, a commanding lead for the bouncers. Speed up from Callen, a great counter from Newell. I mean, the hands on the court are elite right now. Love to see those quick exchanges. 15, Sometimes those high bouncers just give you something to diff different to look at. 16, this one try to get so greedy with them. said the previous point these guys are so good at repeating their mechanics and getting in a rhythm even if your serve is good if it's the exact same every time uh, they can they can yeah. they, they can really get in a rhythm and handle it nicely to change the eye level uh, really helps a lot come on from Ben Newell yeah, 
nice aggressive ding from Ben Newell, who has really been stepping around to his right and hitting some very good forehands. Frozen. I think Hunter Johnson had a two-handed forehand block. Uh, you don't you don't see that too often <laughs> as a two-handed forehand. Yeah. Man, that was a glorious save from Newell, but couldn't come up with the one behind his back. Exactly. I mean, his his, his movement and athleticism is just so raw. That one get was ridiculous. Just too good from Callan Dawson on the next ball. drop from Callan Dawson. Almost high enough to bait Hunter into thinking that he can easily take it out of the air. He makes the mistake in the net. Great shot, Callan. 20 all. And another. So all of a sudden, it was a game point for the bouncers. Now it's the Orlando Squeeze who are already up 1-0. Coming in hot, Todd Fote. Fantastic punch moving forward and able to get the backhand inside out over to the right side of Ben Newell. Not an easy shot to execute. Well done, Todd Fote. So 21 to 20, and this is a good point for the Atlanta bouncers to take a timeout. So is it a matter of just trying to change the rhythm or no, it must be like this late in a match, I'm probably not going to, as a coach of one of these teams, I'm probably not going to get anything too specific. Now, maybe it's something a little bit general, or maybe, hey, let's let's play a few more balls here or something like that. But if you get too technical in this big of a spot, it kind of is an overthinking situation. So you put yourself in a box. Exactly. Earlier on in the match or pre-match, you can get a little more specific. But right now, I think just a good, solid, general strategy and pumping them up is the best option. I like that. Yeah. Great piece of advice. Probably other coaches out there. Time in, 21 20. Done, Callan Dawson. It even hits the back, the baseline. Come on, Callan, that's just mean. And look how casual he is, just letting it go out on the next ball. Just no big deal. Another day at the office for Callan Dawson. The pick, you, pickleball United lob of the day. I mean, seriously, that was amazing. Look at him, so casual. He's trying to play it cool. Like, oh, no big deal, guys. Hey, Whatever. Hey, no if, if you're cool, you're cool, Cameron. Yeah, Callan Dawson's definitely got the cool factor. Let's find out if Cam can pull it out of him. Kellen, you guys had a slower start in the beginning. You're almost playing from behind the entire match. Looked like they were going to take it away from you guys. How are you able to regroup there in the end? I mean, it was, uh, I mean, they were kind of speeding up, hitting a lot of hard third shot drives. That's kind of not our style. We like to slow it down, get to the kitchen line. So we knew the points we were losing weren't playing our style. So once we kind of established at the kitchen line, we felt good. And it looked at the end, you guys started to pressure Hunter a little bit more. Talk to us about that strategy at the end. Yeah, Callan's backhand dink is the best in the game, so I just wanted to get him in that exchange. Um, just sit on my backhand counter hard, and it worked out. There you have it, Squeeze. They're going up two to zero. We're on to mix. Don't go anywhere. With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to Pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of Pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. 
The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game. Because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. And I said, Saturday, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get, yeah. So if he wants the end, water does it in doesn't have to be boring. Thing? Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Welcome back to Major League Pickleball by Margaritaville. This is a shot not only to our championship court, the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court, but also out to the grandstand where the other quarterfinal is taking place for the challenger level. They're getting ready for mixed as well. Looks like they have knotted things up and won a piece out on the grandstand with Nunnery and Dow taking the victory over Smith and Cassidy, 21 to 18. So won a piece out there. Meanwhile, as we get set on championship court, it is 2-0 in the direction of the Orlando Squeeze. So right now they're looking to find out exactly what their mixed teams are going to be. We saw Callan Dawson close out that men's doubles game with probably the most perfect lob and the perfect timing. The doctor. The lob doctor. Exactly right. And we have uh, the bouncers as the home team, so I believe they will be reacting to the mixed. That is the most frequent choice of these teams out here. It's home. I'm waiting till somebody creates like a gif or a meme or some sort of photo of Callan Dawson, like full doctor's scope oh, yeah, with no, like I, I, I a like paddle this. instead of a stethoscope or something. <laughs> I like this idea a lot. So, you know it's going to happen. Somebody's hey, going to do it. There's a lot of new there's a lot of new memes out there and a lot of people <laughs> doing them in the pickleball world. So there's there's something perfect for you guys. That's softball for you out there. Okay? Softball. Softball. Looks like Oshiro is getting warmed up with Dawson, while Johnson is getting warmed up alongside Trifonovich. Meanwhile, out on the grandstand, it looks like Smith and Esquivel together with Gate and Leach with Dow, which is a change up from what they did just an evening ago. They had Gate and Leach with Nunnery. Yeah, they were they were talking a little bit about possibly switching up. There wasn't necessarily a clear cut partnership that was, you know, obvious. So I think a mixing and matching a little bit is fine. And I will have to say Spencer Smith playing with Michelle Esquivel, pretty reasonable choice. I know how difficult it is to play with your significant other sometimes, as Michelle Esquivel uh, and Rob Cassidy are on the, are on the same team. It's 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 not easy sometimes. So uh, you kind of just take that factor out of the situation. Probably a good choice. Should be. I was gonna say it should be a little easier for you. She's usually just putting you on her back. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's for sure. That's for sure. I, I get this question a lot from some of the players I I coach and teach from the mid levels it is it's it's tough sometimes and it's a uh, you know a good way to put a little rift between you two so it's uh, <laughs> th there's not a perfect science to, to playing pickleball with your significant other <laughs> Well, we're about to get underway. We got Johnson and Trifunovich, Oshiro and Dawson. I'm liking this vibe in, on championship court right now. 
<laughs> this is my kind of music right here. Yeah, DJ's on point, doing his thing. I feel like I'm at the club. <laughs> Been a, it's been a solid decade since I've been at the <laughs> yeah, club, same. you know, and that's that's okay. That's okay with me. I had my time in the sun. It's all right. <laughs> I can't even tell you the last time. Easy, Retger. She likes it too. Apparently, she needs to get in the dance off. All right. So the Atlanta Bouncers versus the Orlando Squeeze. Quarterfinal action for the Challenger level. I want to talk about being rock steady, Dawson and Oshiro together. Yeah. Trying her best to get a paddle on it. She drops to a knee. Yeah, it came off a little funky from Trifonovich's paddle, but yeah, you're exactly right. With Oshiro and Dawson, they're not going to give you much. You're going to have to earn your points. Great placement there from Dawson, the extended dink to the left side. Yeah, definitely Dawson's favorite speed up. He kind of almost turns his back to his opponent and then whips through with that forehand. Nice deep return. Talked about that earlier. Really sets up the point nice. Sometimes you get an error like we just saw. pressure from Callan. Yeah, catching Trifunovic several feet off the kitchen line. Always tough when your opponents are right on the kitchen and you are not. The odds are not in your favor. Nice drive, Oshiro. Hunter Johnson shaking his head. Can't understand how can't he did. See. Yeah. <laughs> I they, think he's yeah. getting a glare off of a bleacher somewhere. Back foot drive from Dawson. Not the easiest convert, he puts it in the net. Yep, backdrop's a real thing. Cl nice clean backdrop, really helps the, the eyes and the vision. Yeah. Yeah, they talk about it all the time in baseball, the batter's eye. Cer yeah. Certain stadiums, easier to see the ball come out of the pitcher's hand. I think I believe it's the same thing with pickleball. Hopefully he's okay right there. Yeah. Looking for the Burt. Yeah, it was a little little awkward, but yeah, I think he had a slight smile on his face, so I think he's okay. Four, four. Oh, it's still wildly athletic. Yeah, he can move, there's no question. Parents are great athletes, great tennis players and pickleball players, so it makes oh, sense. Oh, Jen somewhere in here. Saw her walk in. Dawson. <laughs> ball back into the court. I mean, how many times do you have to win a point? I thought it was over three or four times. Great hands from Shrifunovic, and then of course Hunter Johnson with the last blow just inside the sideline. That's a great drop too. Forced Oshiro to take that ball out of the air. Yeah, it's tough on those. Do you let it bounce or do you take it out of the air? Sometimes you make the wrong decision, unfortunately. Yeah. Nice put away after a couple incredibly nice forehand rolls from Bobby Oshiro. That's how it works. Couple setups from the ladies and the put away from the guys. That's the blueprint. made that decision just a half a second too slow. He, it's like he saw it, he thought about it, and he was like, no, okay, yeah, let's do it. No, you're exactly right. That's for sure what happened, just a little bit of a late break from Callan, paid the price. Nice block there from Dawson. Yeah. Great shot from Trifonovic. Yeah, she's ready for it that time. He's caught her a couple times early in the match. She was very, very smart to load forehand and let it fly on that counterattack. Nice job. Yeah, it seems like people start off trying to take shots at that forehand side. 
Just making the adjustment now. Nice spin from Oshiro. Hunter Johnson coming back to the middle of the court, a little off balance on that backhand drop attempt, but really good spin from Oshiro. Making that ball dance a little bit. Johnson catching the right hip of Oshiro, kind of handcuffing her. And a missed return gets them to the change of ends. Atlanta bouncers up, not only 2-0, but also here 11-6 in game number three. So if the bouncers, or excuse me, they're down 0-2. Right, a couple missed opportunities from Alan and Oshiro, uh, but you know, not, not playing poorly, but I've been very impressed with Hunter Johnson's mixed play, and I would probably say that's one of Trifonovich's, uh, probably her best event, because she's really good in her area. Doesn't necessarily cover a ton of court, but she's rock solid with those backhand counters and the forehand dinks, so she has a, a good mover and a good strong partner over on the left side. I think it plays into her strengths nicely. Plays a role well. Absolutely. <laughs> we got two Johnsons and a Grant Bond over there. Nice camera work, fellas. That was one of the most ladies. excited faces I've ever seen on JW. <laughs> he does it. He Just does put it. him on the jumbo drop. Apparently, that's all it takes. <laughs> Trifonovich was the first to change the pattern there. Yeah, it was it was a pretty pretty solid, you know, 2018 mixed cross court women's dink battle <laughs> Just there for out. yeah Just for, for, for out. a while. <laughs> Nice job, Callan Dawson's third shot floating up, and Hunter Johnson catching Oshiro in the transition zone nicely. look like like uh, Hunter made a gesture that he clipped his leg when he was coming through on that drop. Hey, that's happened before. Yes, not a good strategy though, Hunter. You better clean, you better clean that up. <laughs> lob in the lob, doctor. <laughs> Phenomenal athleticism because he had a little hiccup when he was running back for that yeah. lob. I'm not sure, not sure what he thought, but a fantastic wow. get from Callan. Here's a look at it. By the way, this was a phenomenal lob from Trifunovic. I mean, that thing was perfectly placed. It was remarkable that Dawson got his hand on it. Score is 13-9 now. We had a whiff from Trifonovich on the initial lob. Just watch this. This is wild. You're getting the replay now on the right side of your screen. Real time is on the left. I mean, we're seeing lobs left and right now. You better be ready to move backwards. That's all I'm going to say. And hello, Callan Dawson. I mean, he, he read that from the beginning. It's almost at <laughs> from the baseline. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost as the ball left his paddle. He, he made a beeline for that corner. 
phenomenal read and anticipation from Callan Dawson. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's tough to dig out of that hole, especially with Johnson continuing the sustained pressure. Yeah, he knew it right when he hit it, it didn't have enough life, just catching the tape. Really nice topspin volley from Bobby Oshiro to put it in the you know back six inches of the court. Definitely a rare miss, but Oshiro really getting low and taking a lot of those uh, forehand dinks out of the air. Very nice job. Big put away from Johnson. It's interesting when you watch the paddle angle of Trifunovic as opposed to Oshiro and how far one drops the paddle face down mm -hmm. to then roll those balls versus how Trifunovic actually kind of cuffs around the side of the ball and is brushing up a little bit more. And, and that's, that's kind of how I do it as well. Like Trifunovic? Yes, so okay. so everyone everyone's so talented, but just the little tweaks and the little differences yeah. in technique is, is super cool. I come around the ball as well, kind of hook it. So uh, there's lots of ways to get it done out there, and that's why pickleball is a great sport. Great eye, a little communication from Dawson, letting her know that's sailing long, and it does. 14, 16. It's an eight or nine out of 10 situation. Love the move and the read, like you said, from Callan Dawson, just overcooked it. It's been about every two ball, she'll go cross court and then send one down the line. So Dawson's all over it. Tough, and that's, a, that's unfortunately a slight downfall you don't see too often of yelling out. Trifunovic already in her swing, tries to pull back mid swing. And I do think it was gonna sail long, but that's a tough one for the bouncers. over, sitting at 18-15, the waning moments of this first mixed doubles match. Bouncers need this. Who's going to step up? Oh, Rock solid strategy from Bobby Oshiro, <laughs> trying to keep him back, clipping the tape just over, no shot. Uh, only you could figure out how to do that every time. 16-18. <laughs> from the squeeze. Oshiro really extending in the kitchen. I know she doesn't have the largest wingspan out there, but I really like her balance at the kitchen line and her ability to reach in at full extension and control the ball. And another ball just long. Yeah, and I, I'm okay with it. It clipped the tape. I think that that was the correct decision from Oshiro to attack Trifunovic, who was several feet off the kitchen line. She got up too. I love it. It's like a little pocket rocket. She got the power. She's got the power. She's got the. I mean, that's good stuff. I love it. Great two hander from Hunter Johnson. I mean, Oshira, it's a bundle of energy. I talked about the short players. I love them. When she gets was, up like that, she's she's, it was a, amazing. she's a foot off the ground. She's letting it fly with a big overhead. Do your thing, Oshiro. It's currently game point for the bouncers. Thank you. Thank you. 
Goodness, Oshiro had a couple really tough things in the middle of that. Yeah, I think it was, uh, we'll just label that decision questionable. Trifunovic was very much on that, but hey, it she worked out. Like she just wanted to get out of that. Yeah, <laughs> but it worked out, and uh, we're at 18 serving 20. Orlando Squeeze need to make something happen. 18, 20. Another, don't forget what we just saw in men's doubles and what Callan Dawson was able to accomplish. Side folk, 1920. Yeah. Much needed side out for Trifonovich and Johnson. Absolutely. Just uh, not quite sure what happened there. Just missed it from Oshiro catching the tape and it was very much needed for the bouncers. That was a great drop to get them to the kitchen line. Just a bummer off the paddle of Trifunovic. Yeah, I'm not sure if she was questioning whether to take a step back and bounce it or take it out of the air. She chose to take it out of the air. Might have thrown off her rhythm a little bit. Looking for the tie now. Knew that was popping up, but a little miscommunication here. Oshiro didn't quite get out of the way. Oh, and that you won't see Callan Dawson show him very much emotion, and he was he was sad with himself for not coming up with that one. And perfectly timed. You knew it was coming. Johnson's beautiful forehand drive, the inside out. Ooh, that thing is beautiful. 21 to 19. So the Atlanta bouncers pick up a much needed game. Now the score is two to one for Orlando. Squeeze still on top, which means we will have a second mixed doubles matchup. Rachel Retker is getting pumped and ready to go. Meanwhile, getting ready to go is also Cameron Blackwood alongside Hunter Johnson and Christine Trufunovic. Take it away. Hunter, you were talking to me before the match saying how strong the bouncers mixed doubles teams are. Why? I think we just have good team chemistry. We go in with a good mindset, a good strategy. Um, yeah, hopefully we can keep it going for this next one and then go to another Dream Breaker. Let's do it. This was a must win for you guys. You were down 0-2. When you're getting pressured like that on your side, how are you able to stay so steady and make sure you set the ball up for Hunter? Um, i just trying to stay in a good state of mind and um, just play the ball um, and set Hunter up. <laughs> we did just that. There you have it. They came in at one. It is one to two now heading into the next mix. Don't go anywhere. What are you gonna do next? I'll say I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-port public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust.
Six carbs and 95 calories. Quarterfinal action continues for the challenger level here at the MLP Mesa event. The first event of season number one in 2023. There are three total. You can see right now, Greg Dow and Sierra Gaten Leach are trailing by just a few over to Cassidy and McMillan. That's Rob Cassidy and Olivia McMillan. That's the other quarterfinal going on. They are tied up at one apiece in terms of team score. However, looks like they're about ready to potentially head. Maybe a little discussion out there whether that ball was in or out of bounds. Oh Between yeah. Cassidy and Dow. Definite Ooh. controversy over there. It's getting a little heated. Oh, okay. Okay, Rob's giving the th Rob Nunnery's giving the thumbs up to Cassidy as if Cassidy is giving it to them. I am unsure. Wow. Interesting development on grandstand court. Here's a look. Oh, that's it. Oh, that ball is looking pretty yeah. into me, but I'm not yeah. I'm, that's a, on the blue. Yeah, that's it. Am I wrong? No, that's in. So they do have challenge capabilities on Grandstand Court. Is that correct? I'm not positive. I've not uh, been out there. Yes, I believe so. Okay. Excellent. Okay, and so good. the question is, do they have one that remains? That's also a good question. Huh. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Bouncers needing this matchup to extend the match to a dream breaker. So it's Folk and Rutger versus Newell and Buckner. Yeah, great job by Hunter Johnson and Trefunovich to pull that one out, keep their team in this match. Wrecker coming in strong. Yep, she will do that. Catching Ben Newell kind of high up above his shoulder in an awkward spot. Great speed up from Rachel. Ladies going head to head or line to line because Ben Newell, the lefty, is playing the right side. Yeah, I like that dynamic just to mix it up a little bit. So when that happens, where are some of the first areas to look for? I know multiple times throughout the weekend we've talked about the, the duo of Buckner and Newell together because Buckner has such a deadly two-handed backhand. Where are you looking to go against them? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting situation. You you kind of, some people struggle with the down the line dink more than the cross court. So it just kind of creates this dynamic. It's not a standard situation. So you kind of have to figure out where you're going to go. Oh, nice ATP from Retger on the full stretch. So yeah, it's, it's kind of some tinkering a little bit. And Versus kind dinkering. Dinkering and tinkering, <laughs> and, and, and really a lot of it comes down to how aggressive the guy is coming over. There we go! Nice smack from Ben Newell. Heavy forehand. Todd Fote in the perfect position, but nothing can he, do, he can do with that kind of power off the paddle of Ben Newell. stepping in there. Yeah, big forehand from Brooke Buckner, who was a couple feet off of the kitchen line, obviously hit it clean and crisp uh, to have that kind of result a couple feet off the line. So good! What a touch from Buckner. How did she get that over? Exactly. That was an incredible first volley after the combination we talked about, two-handed drive from Buckner and the crash from Newell. Man, what a point there. Yay! There it is again. You gotta watch out for the two-hander backhand drive. Ben Newell's too athletic. Brooke Buckner's drive's too good with the two-hander. I think they need to mix up their return spots a little bit more. Six, five. And they do. 
something out of it. Exactly. I mean, Ben Newell, he creates a lot of chaos. So keeping him in the back of the court is always a good situation, especially if he has a partner with a quality drive. shot I'm starting to get the scouting report <laughs> it feels like just after two days Ricker loves that speed up when she's pushed wide yeah, she's got some really nice speed ups when they're clicking I think we have a 21-7 for Cassidy and McMillan. Okay. And the boat just got a football there. There's a look out to the grandstand, and I think you're correct. So they have moved on. So it is 2-1 Utah with the advantage. Meanwhile, 8-7 here on the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. spin on that ball from an awkward position. She almost left it pretty casually thinking it was gonna sail wide. Wow. Oh. Yeah, nice tough break. Phenomenal return from Fote and great break for the bouncers to catch that off the, the let tape and hitting Rachel Retger in the left shoulder. I'm trying to stay away from that Brooke Buckner backhand. Mm -hmm. She's even hitting well beyond the baseline. She's not scared to do it three feet beyond. Yeah. Yeah. And there it's paying dividends as well. That's right, it was funny. Buckner yelled go to Ben Newell as if he wasn't going to get there. The man with the magic feet. Great job by the bouncers taking this 11-7 lead. I didn't know it's even magic. They are. They are. Twinkle toes. <laughs> All right. Make sure to go 11 7 now. Get this to the change of it. Because Mother Johnson having a little conversation right now with Here. Newell. Meanwhile, both Retro stepping back out onto the board. Absolutely. A great start to this match. The bouncers who obviously need it being down 2 1 to the squeeze, trying to force this dream breaker. As a reminder, the winner of this will face the Bay Area Breakers. Meanwhile, the quarterfinal out on the grandstand will face the Chicago Slice. That is the winner of that match will face the Chicago Slice in the semifinals. Kind of got stuck between blocking it and and really releasing on that two-hander for Retger. Nice drive from Newell. Oh, I thought those magical feet were gonna pay off. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, Callum's the lob doctor from the kitchen line. I think Ben Newell's the lob doctor from the back of the court. He's always throwing stuff up. That's a great shot from Folk, finding that right hip. I mean, that was an incredible shot. Uh, Book, Brooke Buckner not even in a terrible position there, but to catch that at the hip off of that slice from Ben Newell. Nice job, Todd. No! Here we go, here we go. I like the idea, but just a little too extended. Yeah, definitely. She got a paddle on it in a reasonable position. Definitely not an easy shot, but I like the look from Buckner. Slice return long. One point game. One out and one perfectly placed from each bouncer. They get the ball back with a two point lead. Of course, 
pushes that just wide for 14-11. Right now the bouncers are looking pretty solid. From the sideline. Take a look at this one. Yeah, and awesome job by Buckner. Todd Fote tapping his paddle, letting Buckner know well played after two really good shots by him. Hunter Johnson said it in the uh, post game interview, the last mix. They feel really good about their mixed doubles. Right now it's proving true as they dropped the first two and then found the mixed doubles. In the first round. It's a couple for Ben Newell now. Got to get it dialed in. On the return, can't give away those freebies. Play incredible points and then give one right back. Yeah, very nice shot, and I like her not being scared to go to the backhand of Ben Newell. Forehand, a little less, uh, you know, a little more dicey situation. Backhand, a good spot. Oh my goodness, airborne was Ben Newell. Exactly. Most players with maybe a little less athleticism would have gone with a backhand, backhand. Ernie there. He goes with the forehand oh, Ernie. Yeah, impressive stuff from Ben. It's tough getting backed off the line. Just a little late on that move. For sure. Could have maybe cut it off with a uh, out of the air dink, but still very tough spot and a nice shot from Fote. Right there, reaching in, making the adjustment. Yeah. Not enough on that one. Yeah, that, that, I think that one is a little too low. She's had some success with some low shots, but I think that was clearly an inch or two lower than some of the ones she had success with. So prefer a dink there, but not, can't always make the right decision. After a couple of nice points played by the bouncers. The bouncers now looking to force this to a dream breaker. It's been all about the dream breaker, honestly. I expect nothing less. No. We had four of five, at least I'm pretty sure four of five yesterday here. Uh, talking Stick Resort Championship Court. We've already had one of one for the day. We might as well go two and two. Yeah, and it was a doozy as well. So, uh, yeah, looking like. The odds are in the favor of getting uh, two for two in Dream Breakers here on the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court today. Well, you're looking at Grandstand, or you just saw Grandstand. And Smith versus Carr and Nunnery with the Black Diamonds up by one. 18 Nice hands from Ben Newell, and that is one of the downsides of going with the cross-court attack, giving your opponent a little bit more time. Great hands by Ben. And Buckner, again, just lights out with these drives. Look at this. Wow, look just, at that. Don't, don't go there. It's the danger zone. Just come with a warning label. That was, that was wild stuff. We've seen mostly middle and cross court from her. That BB right up the line. Incredible shot from Brooke Buckner. Twinkle Toes gets it 
done. My goodness. I love his slides, too. Great footwork from Ben Newell. I'm not so sure about the last decision, but hey, he, he caught Todd Fote in the right shoulder. Well done, bouncers, to force the dream breaker. No, he just said, I'm done with this point. This is, this is going to hit the, the, the back fence or my opponent. And uh, unfortunate for them, it was the latter. <laughs> oh, you got to love that. Great finish to the second mix. They're getting high fives from Cameron Blackwood. It's Ben Newell as well as Brooke Buckner, our victors. Let's hear what they have to say. Ben, you're heading into your fourth dream breaker. You guys had three yesterday, successful three. Now, what's the winning formula heading into one? Uh, I think you just named it. It's our dream breaker. So we like to get down and then fire it up at the end and take it. And talk to me about the different dynamic it is when you're playing straight up against the women because he has the left hand there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just trust Ben in the middle. You know, it's nice to have a lefty forehand in the middle, and I trust him all, all the way, and we just play. There you guys have it. Headed into a dream breaker right now. Don't go anywhere. Cam, back up to you. Awesome. All right. Well, Cameron Blackwood's got some work to do because she's got to go figure out the lineups <laughs> to find out how this is going to play out for our singles. Uh, cannot wait to see how this one might shape up. What are you thinking? How, how might these lineups look? Let's see here. So, uh, yeah, that's incredible stat that the <laughs> the bouncers played with three for three in Dream Breakers yesterday. And we, we, we saw the standard uh, uh, kind of chalky lineup for them, which is Hunter Johnson, Ben Newell, Brooke Buckner, and then Trifunovich. So that's what I expect to see again. We see, uh, we see the squeeze over there kind of consulting, kind of figuring out what they're going to do. And I would imagine that they will go with uh, Todd Fote as their number one. Callan Dawson. And then I'm kind of a toss up between the two ladies. I'm not exactly sure. So we'll just have to check that out. But on paper, definitely not just because they went 3-0 and yesterday. I would lean towards the Atlanta bouncers uh, as my favorite for this matchup. Well, we'll see how this is going to shape up at this point. You can still see grandstand right now. Escavel and Smith up by two. Again, they just need one more game for the Utah Black Diamonds to then head to the semifinals. So this is a win or go home for Carr and Nunnery. Pretty good point over there. The score is currently eight to five out on grandstand. Callan Dawson going with the jumping jacks one more time. It's his go-to. <laughs> Got to stay loose. Again, this is quarterfinal action. Looking for the semifinals for the challenger level. I believe we head back over to the other side. We head to the premier level at the conclusion of this match. I believe next up we will have the ATX Pickleballers versus the Las Vegas Night Owls. Yeah, that should be a great matchup. Yeah, we got a little time here, so I'll, I'll list them off. We got the ATX Pickleballers, J.W. Johnson, Gabriel Tardio, and the Kawamoto sisters, Jade and Jackie. We also have for the Las Vegas Night Owls, Kyle Yates, OG Goat, Deckel Barr, Lauren Stratman, and Vivian David. They're one of my dark horse teams. Yes. The Night Owls. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a quality, very balanced roster. A lot of them have time on court together, together. and yeah, definitely. Oh, look at their ages, 26, 27, 28, and 29. Looky there. <laughs> we hope you're having as much fun watching Major League Pickleball as we are. Stands are definitely getting filled out on this Friday. We've got two more full days of coverage as well, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday, we'll get to find out who our victors are for event number one here at Mesa. We'll have the challenger final as well as the premier final on Sunday. We'll also have each of the semifinals for the premier level on Sunday. So Saturday, if you win in the semifinals at the challenger level, you actually get a break on Saturday because they've been in action since yesterday.
Cameron Blackwood's walking Here up to comes. our bird's nest, and her jaw is currently on the floor, which means this is going to be a very interesting lineup. She's got that magical post-it note. She does have the magical post-it note. She's dying. Oh, my God. Oh, my <laughs> Lanta. <laughs> what in the world? Redger, the sacrificial lamb against, uh, against Hunter Johnson. I mean, honestly, though, I mean, I'm not sure. We, we got to go through this. Yes, yeah, so, okay, you go. You go. Okay, Sorry. Okay, okay. I was just excited. But my bad. I know, I know. So we have Hunter Johnson versus Rachel Redger. Now go. Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, obviously, that's the situation there. They're, they're, they're trying to, you know, maybe squeeze out one or two points in the whole thing, knowing that Hunter Johnson has an edge over all of their uh, opponents. So. Which then means it's Brooke Buckner versus Todd Fote. Uh huh. That's going to be a good one, too. Then you have Newell versus Dawson. Okay. And then Trifunovich versus Oshiro. Okay. So two interesting ones and two kind of more what we were expecting. And those are the lead-offs, too. Yeah, right. I know. I know. So this is, this is exciting. I, I like this part of it and this dynamic. And that comes into play when you're reacting to mit, to, to singles. You can kind of, So know. the squeeze had got to react, correct? Yes, yes, the yes. The squeeze reacted yeah, to so, this okay. lineup. The bouncers were the home team, so they reacted and mixed. Yes. And the bouncers reacted, so they actually threw Rachel. I believe the, the squeeze posted yes. first. Right, wow. Oh, wait, so, posted first? Yeah. So the bouncers are the home team, which means, uh, I mean. I, the bouncers are the home team, which means you respond and mixed. Right. So that would mean. The hounds, the, the, the yes. The squeeze are, right. have the so, advantage, so they respond here. So they were responding. So Hunter, Brooke, Ben, and, and Trifunovich picked first correct Rachel Todd Callen and Bobby picked second exactly so there they said go. instead of wasting probably their best player uh Fote and singles they just threw Rachel to the wolves unfortunately for her or wolf a wolf exactly one, one wolf yeah but you never know we've seen crazy things happen in these dream breakers we saw Lee Whitwell take down Deckel Barr and MLP one we've seen some interesting stuff we had one yesterday where we had some men versus women matchups so uh we'll see Apparently, uh, some folks out here in Mesa know how to Dougie. <laughs> These women, <laughs> I don't know what they're feeding them out here, but they got some moves. Yeah, it definitely, the crowds always build throughout the weekend, not just because we're getting in the latter stages of the tournament, because, you know, that, that Thursday morning at 8 a.m. and, uh, you know, all that stuff. So, uh, here we go. This is exciting. Here we go, Hunter versus Rachel. Oh, come on, you don't want to win a boy that way. A little fortunate there from Hunter <laughs> Johnson. We'll see, because you kind of, when you come forward, which almost all the guys do, you kind of give the ladies a target. So we'll see exactly what kind of strategy he plays with. Oh, I thought she was going to come in and close that out. It was a really nice two-handed backhand by her, but a good stab from Hunter to kind of neutralize. We'll see if he continues to always come forward or possibly stay back for a shot or two before picking his spot. Yeah. It was a perfect lob from Rutger to get him back to the baseline, but Hunter goes 3-0 and so far. No, I think it was the right choice from her to follow that in as well. So I like that he was able to get it at her feet. Uh, so not the best situation for Redger, but I like that decision. So all four the direction of Hunter Johnson. So now it is Vogt and Buckner. And that's where some damage could be done. Buckner from the baseline. I mean, she's letting it fly. I mean, the crispness, I mean, low over the net, controlled. She can go to all the spots with both wings, forehand and backhand. Very impressed with her ground strokes. Oh. What? Seriously? Easy game, Brooke Buckner, no big deal. Just pass here, pass there against a very quality opponent in Todd Fote. Oh, she nearly had another. She certainly did, about three inches wide. Fote looking for the split. Oh, 
Holy, they split right there. Well, slightly fortunate, a little floating volley from Foat early in that point. He did catch the, the baseline, though, so nice job by him salvaging a split after uh, Brooke Buckner took those first two points. He moves well, he really does. Kind of decides and then really goes for it with his footwork. Great shot, Callan. Perfect serve. Yeah! Yeah! Fully to the line. Yeah, that, that was a, a little half guess from Callan. Really great use of his legs. He gets down low for this one, whips through. Great shot from Ben Newell. I do have to say, Dawson's returns look pretty solid. Both of mm -hmm. A few of those going rather deep into the court. I just don't know what these people are doing lobbing the lob doctor. You can't do that, Cameron. Four, eight. He's getting a taste of his own medicine. And Oshiro just tosses that one back in the court. I see what you did there. <laughs> nice job, Oshira. Controlled, which pretty much describes her game. Maybe nothing incredibly spectacular, but man, she is a rock solid player. job going in line with the backhand like you said often when she's on the run like that she likes to take it cross but great ball from Trifonovic Extra there, three. And getting fired up too, I like it. I like it, three to one for that rotation. So we go back to the top. Let's see if Riker can find maybe one, maybe two would be pretty outstanding. I think that'd be a pretty good result against one of the best singles players in the game. I'm just saying, yeah. one would be great. One little dribbler on the very first point for Hunter Johnson. He was, he's pretty pretty fortunate on that one. He also demolished the ball in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, he did hit that overhead pretty hard. Bye bye ball. much of a presence up at that kitchen line from Hunter Johnson. Yeah, I think he's doing a nice job. It's kind of a special situation, actually. So you, you can make some poor decisions out there. So I think, yeah. I think he's not just patty caking the ball, but he's being very safe and, and, and kind of giving himself some margin for error with his shots as well. So I think it's a good strategy for Hunter Johnson in this particular matchup. HSS welcomes all players are the squeeze. Reminder, they were up too well and then dropped both the mixed mat or mixed games. So they found themselves now into this dream breaker. I would say you don't want to face off against the Atlanta bouncer in a dream breaker. They have a rather good winning record there. Oh, that was just filthy from Hunter Johnson. I'm 
I'm surprised he even went for it, to be honest. It was, it was obviously there, but a weird little return from uh, Rachel Recker made that an awkward shot. And a missed return there, so Johnson, four of four. 13, seven. She's unreal. Both wings, too. It doesn't matter where you put it right now for Buckner. He's going to let it fly. Interesting situation. I think anyone can call a timeout. what it takes to beat Brooke Buckner in a point, apparently. <laughs> but yes, Retger called, looked at the referee, called a timeout, and then there was a little uh, issue with the squeeze, whether Todd Vote to actually not. wanted to, correct. Ball just wide, so again, Buckner and Vote going two and two. Yeah, I'm not sure it's the, I mean, Fote obviously moves very well, so maybe actually staying back, not giving Buckner a target, and, and kind of working his way forward if he gets an opportunity could be a better strategy. Don't let her find those passing shots, huh? Be yeah, because right now, if you're giving her a target and she's not on the full stretch or uncomfortable in any way, shape, or form, she's letting it fly. She's got a laser pointer right now. Complete control. Must have caught the line with the right toe, I believe. Tough break for the squeeze. 16, 10. to the camera at the end too, it was perfect. <laughs> from Ben Newell, not giving anything away too early, and then pulling that ball across his body, cross court. Phenomenal shot and control. Often when you wait, sometimes it throws off your rhythm, but he stayed in complete control, very composed, nice shot, Ben. Yeah, very soft stuff. I think the drop volley, you don't want to bring them in on a bad ball, but at the same time, drop volley can be pretty effective in singles. Oh, and she had the look. Well, she absolutely had that. There's no question at all. Do not believe Trifonovich could have caught up to that ball if it went over. Yeah. Good hustle from Trifonovich, but better placement from Oshiro. Definitely. Gotta make a move now, because you got Hunter Johnson coming back at the top of the order. but an even better stab to get that ball back for Oshiro. Yeah, make him play one more ball. Trifonovich had a great look at that cross-court forehand as well. But caught the net, so here we go. Retger versus Johnson. Make it 19-14. Bouncers just two away from the semifinal. Make it 
one. It's match point, the Atlanta bouncers. Bouncers. So they're making their way over. Happy faces without a doubt. All right, Cameron, let's hear the good word. Hunter, you are now 4-0 and oh in Dream Breakers here at MLP. What is so special about this team? That's got to be a record, right, I think? Uh, yeah, geez, we're just so positive, and we know that every time we're down 2-0, we can just come back every single time, and we are literal veterans right now in Dream Breakers. So. We're trying not to do that the rest of the day. We'll, we'll try to fight our hardest, but yeah, if we go do it again, we're gonna win it. And tell me what the strategy was. You had to go up against Todd, so we had a lot of mixed singles out there. How was that? Yeah, um, I just tried to play how I normally play. Um, pick my spots and see what happens. Christine, how much motivation does this give you into the rest of this weekend and the match later today? Um, well, we're hungry and the job's not done. <laughs> so, ready to play again. <laughs> And Ben, you are all over this court, scraping your knee all over the place. Just how important is MLP to you? Uh, I think you can see it in my fight. I'm going after every ball, and Callan's an athlete, so it's awkward playing him, and I just wanted to scrap for these guys and see if I can pull out a couple points. There you guys have it. The bouncers going 4-0 and in Dream Breakers, taking the win over the Orlando Squeeze. We're going to send it right back up to you, Cam. All right. MLP Mesa is brought to you by Margaritaville. Escape to your personal paradise. Stay, play, live, and dine in Margaritaville. Pickleball United, the official court of Major League Pickleball. HSS, Hospital for Special Surgery, is proud to be the official hospital of Major League Pickleball. Circle, your water, your way. Frameth Pickleball, where Major League Pickleball players and fans get their gear. Michelob Ultra, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. <sighs> Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-port public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. And I said, Sarah Day, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get, you know? So if he wants the end boy, Water doesn't, doesn't it have to be boring. Anything? Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Ultra. Two 
2.6 carbs and 95 calories. to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball.
Welcome back to Major League Pickleball. This is Mesa by Margaritaville, the first event of the year. Cameron Irwin alongside Adam Stone. It's time to get back to the premier level. So let's take a look and see exactly how the standings shape out to this point as it's their first day of action. You've got groups A, B, and C, and their first matches having been played. Any, I'm trying to look, any wild ones out there? We got a chance to see the New Jersey Fives here on the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. That was wild. Their victory over the Milwaukee Mashers went to a dream breaker. Florida Smash also 1-0, as well as the LA Mad Drops. Uh, Seattle Pioneers, where Ben Johns exists, also picking up their first match. And the Las Vegas Night Owls, who we are about to see out on the court right now, also having picked up their first. They're going to face off against Against the ATX Pickleballers. So let's get you introduced to some of these competitors. So starting off, let's go with Miss Lauren Stratman and Vivian David, the two ladies playing alongside Kyle Yates as well as Deckel Barr. Uh, correct. So this is one of those situations as we had in the first match uh, in the Premier League today is that it is a very high pick in JW Johnson. So a little bit more discrepancy between the levels of play for the ATX Pickleballers and the Las Vegas Night Owls very balanced throughout the roster. So definitely something that I want to be uh, uh, noticing in this matchup as the person who was drafted late, just like Hayden Patrick Quinn, this one is Gabriel Tardio. Both of those players, 17. Let's see if Mr. Gabe Tardio can step up big in this match. So those are two of the names on the ATX Pickleballers. The other two that you're watching warm up right now getting ready for women's doubles are Jade and Jackie Kawamoto. Now this is a dynamic sister duo, obviously sharing that same last name, both out of Indianapolis and or excuse me, one out of Indianapolis, but both out of Indiana. Uh, and they actually live together. So I'm a little confused as to where the uh, two different names <laughs> yeah. hometowns came from. Great question, but not Jade exactly and sure. Jackie, one is left-handed, one is right-handed. So Jade is the lefty. She is not wearing the visor, whereas Jackie is wearing the visor right now. That's how you're gonna be able to kind of spot the difference between the two. Exactly, I've seen them play about 30 times. So I definitely knew that we needed to let the viewers at home know who've seen a little less of the Kawamotos, which one is which. Similar with the Johnson brothers. Exactly. It's, it's, it's the same kind of deal. <laughs> oh, man. But, yes, I, I believe that this Kawamoto duo, I would say that they lack a little bit of firepower. But, man, they are scrappy, and they are so connected on the court. They know exactly what the other player is going to do, which is a huge advantage. So let's take a look at the head-to-head -head between these two teams in terms of their win probability. It actually is going the direction. That one surprises me a little bit uh, in terms of the discrepancy, 40% to 60% for the Kawamotos. You mentioned maybe they're a little bit more reserved in their style. I actually got a chance to catch up with both Jackie and Jade uh, just this past week, and they said they definitely have been working on the aggressive element of their game, looking to speed up the ball more, trying to utilize that as that's been so much the conversation in 2023 already. Oh, definitely. And I'll tell you right now, their defense and their consistency is going nowhere. So I think that's a great decision by them to kind of figure out a few offensive shots or a few tricks that they can use uh, to catch their opponents off guard because their defense is rock solid. Well, speaking of rock solid defense, that's also at the hand of Vivian David, one of the best in that regard. She's also been wildly dynamic just in the start of 2023. Her ability to move around the court and find beautiful shots has been on full display already. Yeah, definitely. I would say that she is in the conversation for the best right-sided female in the game of pickleball. Her two-handed backhand is electric, and she can create some offense on that offensive side, which is a great recipe for a, a quality right-sided player. And Lauren Stratman, just one of the ultimate veter veterans in the game, brings so much dynamic play in her own right. Nice job by Vivian David, always keeping her balance, but always leaning that upper body into the kitchen. Hitting that ball as close to her opponents as possible. and not necessarily the net trickler, but I did like the speed up. Yeah, definitely. She uh, kept Jade a little uncomfortable, couldn't get a full counter attack on that one. So nice combination from Stratman, even though she was fortunate. 
of the left hand. Two to one for the Las Vegas Night Owls. Stratman and David, and it's interesting. You just saw two speed ups at the hand of the Kawamoto's. Exactly. Hey, you said they're working on it. They obviously are. Didn't work in their favor that time, but I like to see the aggression. Nice high there. Interesting dynamic here, too. The Night Owls actually traded up with the Seattle Pioneers to get Lauren Stratman, one of the last left sided established players in the draft. from Stratman really fitting together nicely with David on the right and Stratman on the left so interesting to see some of those draft dynamics and team construction so important. wouldn't say it was the best law, but not terrible. So great power from Jade Kawamoto, and not only the power, the placement down at the feet of her opponents. And this from Lauren Stratman, which by the way, just became a free agent in terms of the paddle market. And if anyone's curious, currently we're rocking a carbon paddle though. I'll uh -huh. give her that much. I'm sure someone is curious, I would imagine. I would imagine. <laughs> I talked to her and Julian actually on their drive uh, this past week, moving from Tennessee all the way out to uh, Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. Vivian coming in strong. Defense to offense, phenomenal job by the Night Owls. And she's not scared to come into the middle like that. She'll take over. No, no, no she is not. Just like that, I think that's one of the things I love watching her do. Just incredible poachability. I mean, she's an athlete. She moves so well. Her center of gravity is so low. Just seems to always be in control of what she's doing. Hook that ball back over. Oh, I like Stratman. it. I mean, they're, they're moving forward. They're putting pressure on. I understand she caught the tape there, but that's what I want to see out of them. and. The Night Owls off to a not large, but a nice quick start. Yeah. Wow, phenomenal angle from Jackie Kawamoto, kind of catching the outside of the ball. Nothing Stratman can do with that pinpoint placement from Jackie. She, she kind of got neutralized with her initial offense, but she didn't just patty cake it back over with a plain vanilla dink. She went for more, and she's rewarded. That ball just came off the paddle of David, just a little funky. Yeah, I don't think she was intending to hit a drop <laughs> volley there. Some things work out. <laughs> Yeah, just missed. I think that they they called it uh, partner communication to let it know it went out, but I, I don't think that they were terribly terribly confident while that was traveling through the air. <laughs> Stratman looking around asking if they should challenge it. Deciding not to. Deckelbar has the eagle eye over there on the sideline. He didn't react whatsoever, so pretty clear indication that that ball was long. Thing 
things she does so well, dropping her center of gravity, finding the scorpion over the top of her head. Scorpion, that's lots of head-to-head -head practice at Dreamland Dripping Springs with Deckel Bar. They work on those shots a lot, and it shows right there. Again, from David, creating at just about any opportunity. Well, the last, they, they, they did, uh, the, the third MLP last year, they did kind of a player, what's your pro tip, and hers was staying low. And she certainly does that out on the court. Phenomenal shot from Vivian David. She just wrapped her whole paddle around her head. Exactly. Let's, <laughs> let, let, let's not to mention the incredible dig <laughs> by Jackie Kawamoto on the sideline. Just high level stuff. Not a lot of freebies or gifts out there from the ladies. Everyone is earning their points. Without a doubt, now both Kawamoto's a mention from Indiana. Originally out of Hawaii, though. They try, so they try to go back at least once a year. They both also work at the NCAA. NCAA, very cool. I found that out a few months ago. I thought that was a nice fun fact. Two different departments, though. Uh, together, I mean, they're together all the time. They got to stay a little separate, you know? <laughs> it was funny when I asked them what they like to do when they're not playing pickleball. Most people say, is there anything else? But these two actually had an answer. They just like playing other sports. They, uh, <laughs> they nice. just go and play other intramural sports. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. Cross, cross training. <laughs> Nice mid-pace attack from Jade. Catching Stratman a few feet off the kitchen line in an awkward spot. Probably should have gone with the block there instead of that uh, counter attack with power. Nice control from Vivian David on the top spin roll. Definitely not a full attack, but putting pressure in a different way. Love to see it. <laughs> Funny reaction from Vivian David, who definitely got what she wanted. Tape had other ideas. A little indecision there from David. And, and kind of a not, a, not your typical shot from Jade Kawamoto on her back foot driving it. I think she caught the owls off, off guard with that one. Tough We've break. Seen quite a few yes, of those yes. right now. Lots of uh, let cords. <laughs> nice hands from Jackie Kawamoto. Vivian David taps the paddle, letting Jackie know that was just too good. starting to play a little bit further off the kitchen line there, both about a foot and a half behind. Definitely, and that's that's their MO. They like to play that, but there has been a court positioning uh, discrepancy between the two teams throughout this match. Doesn't matter who, everyone's getting a look. Nice 
it away to the middle of the court from Jade Kawamoto. And we're all tied up, Cam. full-time jobs uh -huh. I'm like I, mean, I wish yeah. I were that talented no definitely <laughs> pr pr I mean we mentioned it as well the challenger league a, f a few more big boy and big girl jobs out there but the premier league most of the players are, are full-time pickleball so that's definitely a factor uh, you know just not able to get as much court time in uh, if, if you have a you know uh, some kids you're married or if you have a job uh, a lot of these guys are in their you know uh, guys and gals are in their early and mid 20s uh, have freedom to really just focus on their games and that's a big factor Cam. it is especially with the growth of this sport. Everyone training about four or five days a week now. They're in the gym. They have coaches, trainers, just about everything you could possibly imagine. Right. Sport and now. they kind of have a variety of pickleball meccas. You got a nice crew, nice crew down in the in South Florida. You have, as you mentioned, Austin, Texas as well. And then, of course, uh, not only here in, in Arizona, but in Southern California as well, and not to mention the PNW. So, uh, I mean, there's lots of spots around the country where players are getting together. Five years ago, you couldn't find good practice locally, and now you can. Well, and that's what's funny. They said, well, there's, there's such a little handful of people that we can practice with. One, the conditions, you got to fight that off in Indiana. But then they also say, we don't like drilling all that much. <laughs> <laughs> they said they go and drill for a little while, and then they get tired of it, and they're like, let's find some games. Stratman with the two-shot combination. Jackie Kawamoto in perfect position to block, but just slightly overwhelmed by the pace of Stratman. Definitely, and she, point. she had a gap there. Neither player was going to touch that ball. It sails three inches long, though, but I think she had an opportunity. Jackie just missing that ding, working with that two-handed backhand. She keeps it relatively close to her body. Definitely. She's dinking. Definitely. And Jade kind of looking over, should we take a timeout? They decide not to. from David was a thing of beauty. Yes, just left a little too high from Jackie. Incredible midcourt play from both Kawamoto's during that point, but Vivian David sticking with it, finding that forehand in the middle. Great play by the Owls, who have gone on a four-point run here, down by two, and uh, all of a sudden they have the two-point lead. So David and Stratman coming up clutch here at the near end of game number one. They've got to find a few more points. We talked about the amount of pressure picking up the first game can really add to the opposing team in this MLP format. Gives yourself a little bit of break. You see J.W. Johnson and Gabriel Tardio down there. They'll be next up. Oh, you got classic Florida boy Kyle Yates using the hand warmers even though it's not that cold. <laughs> Kyle. Yeah, Deckel Bar bouncing around. I like to see that. The big man on his toes is dangerous, so the fellow's getting ready. But we got some more play here in women's doubles. Let's see if the ATX Pickleballers can get back in this thing down by two. shot from the Kawamoto's. Yeah, Jackie has a really nice little quick trigger on that forehand and creates topspin with it. 
Missed one long up the middle earlier, not that time. period that goes and happens between each and every contact. Absolutely. If you if you just listen, sometimes it almost sounds like a, an NBA game. <laughs> Screeching, small <laughs> steps, adjustment steps. Real athletes out here. Incredible footwork. It's 18 all. She had the angle, even though it was an incredibly difficult shot. I'm not sure she fully committed to her decision, and unfortunately, she puts that ball long. Vegas Night Owls. Very, very tough to attack Vivian David. It's 19 all. Played a 20 win, one must win by two. She was a little too far off the line to try that. Has worked for her a couple times, but I think she paid the price that time. Game point for the ATX Pickleballers. to be able to take the first game for the ATX Pickleballers, 21 to 19. Yeah, scrappiness, make another ball. It paid off there, and I tell you what, that was a nice end to the match. I'm not really sure the Owls did anything wrong. You just have to tip your cap to the Kawamotos. Made a lot of balls and also had the well-timed aggression. Uh, very nice job to start off for the ATX Pickleballers. Now, without a doubt, coming up next, you've got Kyle Yates and Deckel Barr. They've got some experience, I think a decent experience, not only on the court, but probably together as well. Decent. Tardio and J.W. Johnson. Yeah, exactly. I've probably played Kyle Yates 50 times and played with Deckel Barr about 90 times. So I've been on the court with a lot of those guys. And man, do they have experience. They know exactly what patterns they want to get into. It's going to be a very exciting match. But for now, let's send it down to the third member of our crew, Cameron Blackwood, with the winners of women's doubles. Jackie, great win there. A lot of players just practiced with their teammates this week, but how nice is it to live and train with your partner, and how much does chemistry play a role? I mean, it's everything in MLP style, so I don't think any female team is as familiar with each other as me and Jade, so I think that is a huge advantage for us. You guys had a great match there. It was tight all the way to the end, but how were you able to neutralize the power and then come out with the win? Yeah, I think we needed to tell each other to trust each other, stay up on the line, even if you hit a, you know, a bad shot or two, just trust each other because we don't want to keep backing off and playing defense. We want to stay confident in our shots. There you have it. ATX Pickleballers go up 1-0. to zero. We'll be right back with men's doubles. Don't go anywhere. It's all up to me, nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. Oh. 
Chew. 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. The ProXR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. ProXR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. ProXR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. A good look at the mountains here in Mesa, but more importantly, we're focused in on the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court, where we are in the midst of a premier level matchup between the Las Vegas Night Owls and the ATX Pickleballers. It's time to get to men's doubles action. J.W. Johnson and Gabriel Tardio versus Kyle Yates and Deckelbar. Cameron Irwin with luckily my partner, Adam Stone. I've got a pretty good one, I guess, oh, to get well, me through MLP. Me as well. So a uh, <laughs> very intriguing matchup here, Cameron. We have, now I'm not sure they play too much, if at all, in tournament play, but J.W. Johnson and Gabriel Tardio, incredibly comfortable with each other, play almost every day down in South Florida. Tardio actually often travels with the Johnsons to tournaments. Uh, uh, Julie, Georgia, and of course JW, his partner. So also Deckel Barr, Kyle Yates, very comfortable with each other, played multiple times together in tournament play. I don't think communication is going to be an issue for either team, but the wild card is definitely the young buck, Gabriel Tardio, the ripe age of 17. Can he handle this pressure? He has the, he has the ability to do so. Can't wait for this one. All right, let's take a look at the head-to-head. -head. You see the winning percentage or the probability there, 52% on the side of Johnson Tardio. That's a big testament to the hands and skill of J.W. Johnson. Absolutely. I do think he's carrying that Team Duper a little bit as J.W. Johnson, obviously one of the stars of this sport of pickleball. Feeling you're going to see a lot of balls the direction he'll get singled out. Tardio at least. Oh, but you like that and you already see the equation right there. Uh, absolutely. One to Tardio, one to the backside of J Dub. Right, had abs absolutely had what he wanted to there. J.W. Johnson. Yeah, that's not the spot. I would say on that right side of the body, the only person that could possibly uh, have as much hand speed and power is uh, Riley Newman with that pancake. So uh, got to pick your spots going to the forehand of J.W. has a lot of tricky stuff. You got to give some credit to Gabe Tardio, uh, able to hit that two-hander past Deckelbar. Oh, yeah. yeah. Way to get out of the way. No, it caught him. It oh, it did him. get yeah, him? Yeah, it caught him. Just right off the chest. He was trying to ole and get out of the way, just couldn't do it, uh, especially with how close Deckelbar was to him on that Ernie. Another nice 
nice Ernie from Deckel Bar. You see some nice patience from Gabe Tardio. He's never really played a tournament with a partner of this caliber. I expect him to, to work on his patience and pick his spots, and he's done that so far. And a little bit of a body back there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Deckel hit hard. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to get out of the way. <laughs> nice move. Very nice job by Yates. I got all kinds of stuff for Deckel. Big D's my guy. I definitely. You just made me snort live. Oh, no, that's, that's good. Never that's never happened in my broadcasting career. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's embarrassing. Late. I'll, I'll, I'll label him fortunate on that one. He got away with it's it. Fair. And like I said, Yates has, he can go to all the spots. He's got some really slippery attacks, but uh, I think seven, eight, nine times out of 10, JW is going to win that battle. Yeah, nice pressure there from the ATX pickleballers. Pickleball attempting to reset with that two handed backhand, could not do it. Five, six now. Two-handed backhand. Yeah, definitely. And he's, you know, he's got a little less court to cover uh, than he's normally used to with J.W. Johnson as his partner. And bye-bye ball. Yeah, that's that, that's tough luck. It's really the first time Tardio's really pulled the trigger early in this match, and unfortunately for him, it clipped the tape. Drive from Deckel Bar. I told you he hits it hard. Yeah, he does. Let serve. Classic Deckel Bar serve up on the toes. A different look. Yeah, really slicing that, that dink and threw his hands up. Can't believe he missed it. Shot right at Deckel, or excuse me, at J.W. Johnson. Yeah, Deckel looking really good out there. And I'll tell you what, one thing that occasionally happens to Deckel is he gets a little flat footed. When he is on his toes, he has just electric athleticism and a lot of power in his paddle. So uh, absolutely uh, a better player when he's on his toes. And we've seen that so far in this match. Bar, just 29 years old, playing alongside Kyle Yates, just 27. Yeah, Deckel Bar also kind of got into the sport uh, through the Johns brothers, traveled the ATP circuit with Colin Johns. I believe both players got to around 350 to 400 in the world in singles. A couple abdominal injuries forced Deckel Bar to switch over uh, to pickleball from tennis, and he's had some great success in the sport so far. That's your young box on the other side of the net as well, 21 years old. 17, J.W. Johnson, 21. the storm of two fantastic counterattacks from J.W. Johnson. Speeds up one more. Yes. And Cardio missing a dink here. 
So the Night Owls continue the trek. Yeah, showing some real emotion out there. Not thrilled with a couple of those soft airs as Gabe Tardio is going to have to clean it up. One way to do it, backside, beautiful shot. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I respect the move from Deckel, but just perfectly placed from Gabe Tardio. Maybe that can get him going. Ball out of bounds, a back-to-back -back points for the ATX Pickleballers. J-Dubs really starting to move now. Yes, and I think that that's necessary. I, have to. I believe if there is one knock on the game of J.W. Johnson, it's occasionally kind of hanging out on his side and not getting too involved. Whether the storm of two or three deckel bar punches, great hands from Gabe. like he was forced into it for, yeah. for some situation. It was kind of odd how it all played out. Big swing on a big swing. Yes, exactly right. Not sure if he was thinking maybe it was going to go out. But either way, error for Gabe. There you go, Joe W. Nice little crab walk, nice lateral movement along the kitchen line, getting that forehand involved. That's exactly what it's going to take. Let's see if we can get more of the same from the pickleballers. Interesting. Night Owls try to find the backside now. say big man big target <laughs> fair but I do love the patience each one of those contacts just low enough to not allow the speed up until finally somebody took a shot Side of yeah, J Dub. I, mean, I would say nine out of ten. That's where you need to go. Maybe occasionally keep him honest to the forehand, but the spot is the backhand. And it's a miracle J W Johnson got a paddle on that ball, but nonetheless, it's punished by Kyle Yates. Yeah, nice job by Kyle Yates, staying patient these last few points right out of the gates. He was a little too aggressive. Now he's settling into this match. Seven pickleballers need to make a move now. Yeah, nice 
nice shot by Kyle Yates. I also want to make sure to mention Yates is hitting those slices, slice after slice off of a slice. That's not easily done. You're having to reverse the speed of, or the spin of the ball too. Yeah, definitely. And that's that's just his preferred way to go and yeah. uh, doing a great job of it so far. Just kind of allows him to sit back and play ball after ball. Yeah, definitely. On that previous point too, Yates has kind of gone either J.W. Johnson's forehand or backhand that previous time he went at the body. Great decision mixing up his spots from Kyle. Yates decides to go at Tardio this time. Bar on the move. Exactly. His athleticism allows him to react to the ball. A lot of players have to start their Ernie before the ball is even struck. Deckel can wait, pick his spot, and then go. title. <laughs> we got a timeout here from the ATX Pickleballers and a good time to use it as they are facing a five point deficit. Las Vegas Night Owls hitting that magic number of 20. Also important to remember the ATX Pickleballers picked up game one. So if the Night Owls walk away with the men's doubles, they'll be tied at one apiece. Come down to mixed doubles. Also a match happening out on the grandstand. You got Ben Johns out there with Tyler Loom versus Tyson McGuffin and Rafa Hewitt. So it's the Pioneers versus the Hustlers. <laughs> and I love this. That was a shot from our championship coverage uh, here in the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court because if you stand at the top of the bleachers on one side, you can watch both matches at once here and over the top. Yeah. Big drive from Deckel. Just sums up the match, I think. Great aggression uh, from the Las Vegas Night Owls. All tied up at one camp. 21 to 15, and again, there's a look at that shot. So they're all watching the outer court as well, but they might want to turn and face this way because we're about to get into mixed doubles. We'll be interested to see what the matchups are in terms of partnerships. Blackwood's down there. J.W. Johnson's going to take a second here, but they've got Deckel Bar and Kyla Gates now heading over to Cameron. Get it tight. All right, Cam, take it away. Deckel, I was just talking before. I don't think you hit one drop in that entire match. You had a lot of firepower. What was the strategy going into this match against them? It's true, yeah. We wanted to play fast, play our game. Uh, it was working when we were driving, so kept doing it. Uh, glad we can get this win. And talk to me about your cross-court dink with Gabe. What were you looking for, the speed up and the Ernie with that goal? I was just trying to be patient. I know if I stayed in it long enough, eventually you'd go down the line and let big man jump the kitchen and, and put it away. So just stay patient, not do anything silly. There you have it. It's tied up one to one now, heading into mixed doubles. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. It's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you going to do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can 
go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. Six carbs and 95 calories. Walking, welcome back to the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. Next up is mixed doubles. It looks like they're starting to figure out exactly what their matchups are going to be. And there are three women currently on the court, so that can't <laughs> be it. So we're still awaiting to find out. But it appears as if we've got Jackie Kawamoto with J.W. Johnson for the ATX Pickleballers. Still waiting to find out exactly who the matchups will be. For the Las Vegas Night Owl, score is tied at one apiece. And this, of course, is just the opening groupings for the premier level. We've got group A, B, and C. Their second round match is happening now, so it's a bit of a round robin format to get started before heading into tomorrow's action, which will show more of that seeding moving on. You'll have two coming out of each group. The top two seeds getting a bye into the semifinals, whereas the rest of the group will face off in the quarterfinals. Yeah, right, those, those remaining four of the six will play for two spots in the semis, along with the two seeded teams. And I would I would definitely imagine that Vivian David is gonna play with Deckel Barr. They have a lot of experience together, some success out there. Uh, you know, but crazier things have happened, but I think that makes a lot of sense for the Night Owls. There you go, you see Deckel Barr walking onto the court now. Well, and you also have to remember, we've got to get at least both of these mixed as the score is one apiece. So it's going to come down to either these mixed doubles matches. It won't come down to this final one or the dream breaker in the fifth. That would be three for three for us today, Cameron. <laughs> you know it's going to happen, right? Unbelievable, yes. And I would say, let us let me take a quick look-see. Um, Relatively close, maybe on paper. I know I'm getting ahead of myself here. I would take the ATX Pickleballers slightly, but it's very, very closely contested if it does go to a Dream Breaker. JW Johnson, Jackie Kawamoto chatting a little strategy, pre-match strategy. So what is it when you're facing Deckel and Vivian? It's very difficult because Vivian uh, the thing is, is Vivian has some really nice speed ups at the guy in mix, probably one of the better girls to do it uh, out on tour. But the issue is it's, you know, it's JW Johnson. So one of her favorite spots to go is at the right shoulder of the man in front of her, but I'm not sure that's gonna be an option against JW. I would really interested to see how patient she is in this match. shot immediately from Jackie Kawamoto. Yeah, I think nice might be an understatement. Okay. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Phenomenal. For, How's yeah. that? You like that one? Right, but yes, that's okay. much better. Well, I'll work on my adjectives. <laughs> shuffle stutter step from J.W. Johnson. And uh, we didn't see that too frequently in men's, but we have to see it here in mixed doubles. I think you meant phenomenal stutter step. <laughs> And Deckel. Yeah, definitely. And occasionally I will say, let's let's watch this point real fast. Quick turnaround. Oh, 
was interesting. <laughs> there was so much stuff on that ball coming off the net. Yeah, and what I was going to say, Cameron, is if a big man, you can't do it too often, but if a big man is playing properly and has his momentum forward to reach into the kitchen, lobbing him actually can be a good option. trying to give that a little extra hop to get it over. Yeah, and that was incredible hand speed from J.W. Johnson, but Bar there with the response. There's still percentages very much in his favor. Uh, quite a few Ernie's in that men's doubles match. Unable to come up with that one, though. That's it. And like I said, if Vivian David is going to speed up, that is the spot. Because JW is leaking middle even more so than in men's doubles. You got to go behind him. Let's see the Johnson family. Just phenomenal lateral movement from Vivian David. What an outrageous play right there coming in. Deckel bar covering the line. Yeah, definitely full commit from Deckel and the two-hander with a lot of power. Jackie can't come up with it. Scooping that was David. She even almost put her hand, her left hand, all the way underneath that paddle face. <laughs> There's a yeah. different grip under there. I mean, one of the lowest getters in the game. Unbelievable center of gravity from Vivian. Jackie trying to go behind a deckle with a soft shot. Not the worst decision. No, but you got to feel that much more pressure at how Definitely. low you have to keep that ball so you can't. Exactly. Pre you. Pressure comes in a lot of forms. Court positioning, just the threat of an Ernie, just in the back of these players' minds. Uh, so a lot of ways to get it done out there. Drop from Jackie Kawamoto. Deckel Bar couldn't come up with the short hop. Cassandra Gurky on the screen, checking out the action. <laughs> Vivian Davis, slight little head nod going, huh? Ah, yeah. I guess it worked. Exactly, and the thing is, Vivian almost goes exclusively hard cross court with that two handed backhand, but it's so good. It's so good and so powerful, hard to control a response. That third getting well away from her. She popped that up pretty high. Yeah, definitely. And I'm glad J.W. <laughs> Johnson made that move to the middle. It was probably a situation where he could have let Jackie have that ball. I'm glad he took control. I think there was a little bit of a joke after that one. <laughs> Vivian saying high enough? But that's the spot for the lob. Nice shot right there that forced Vivian to have to come all the way around. I know it was just long, but like yeah, the no, idea. I, I don't hate the decision at all. Yeah, 
a little too ambitious yeah. there from Vivian. She took a second to uh, collect herself and, and uh, you know, get back to that solid, consistent play and picking her spots a little more carefully. Deckel trying to catch J-Dub off guard, but that's going to be hard to do. Yeah, one, one of his better shots actually is in the middle of the court, uh, that inside-out forehand at his opponent, the left side player of, of his the, the opposing team. Yeah. And unfortunately, that time, just too much hand speed from J.W. Johnson. So 11-9 now at the change of ends. Ooh, I, would, I would consider J.W. Johnson to have the most power in all of pickleball for the length of his swing. It's so short. He's so strong in the lower portions of his arms with his wrists and his forearms. Just really incredible how much paddle head speed J.W. Johnson gets without much of a backswing at all. So the joy cam on full display here on championship court. I'm also happy to report that uh, it does appear like J.W. Johnson is wearing socks today. Uh, what? Now say that again? I said I am happy to report that I believe J.W. Johnson is wearing socks today. What, was he not wearing socks Apparently yesterday? He doesn't wear socks that often when he plays pickleball. Oh, my. It's a rumor on the street. Oh, wow. According to actually more like the rumor on Instagram, which he posted. <laughs> Fair enough. job there from Vivian David kind of catching the right hit of J hip of JW and the previous attack from Vivian was much lower than that I like that decision much better There's some wrist action from JW on back-to-back -back shots. Yes, nice job from JW. Just kind of freezing Deckel Bar and putting that right over his ba high backhand left shoulder. Phenomenal shot and to keep it in the court with the top spin from JW. shot from Vivian. Yeah, the rare one-handed counter from Vivian David there. Very well done. make him play one more ball does Vivian David. I mean, I would say JW is one of the better players in the game of controlling that kitchen line when his opponents are back deep. Phenomenal scramble from Vivian David. Great spot from Jackie Kawamoto. The big man Deckel was coming in really hot. She kind of froze him like JW Johnson did a couple points ago. Great play from Jackie. We'll just label that a loose air from JW. Happens to the best of us. Yeah, it looked actually like she's a little frustrated there. Put his paddle behind his back. Not one to show that much emotion, but. Oh my goodness, Jackie Kawamoto. I mean, mixed results, but a big point of emphasis for Kawamoto going behind Deckel Bard. Not only soft, but with power shots. Well played there. Well disguised. Tossing out her hand saying sorry. I think she didn't necessarily move her left foot like she would have wanted to <laughs> to give JW a little more space. There you go. That's the movement she was looking for. Yeah, and that was the initial shot from JW Johnson, kind of protecting Jackie as she was transitioning forward. Very glad that JW made that decision to step over to his right. Well done, JW. from J.W. Johnson. Yeah, I mean, that's just too good. I mean, Vivian did nothing wrong. Just a, you know, a world-class two-shot combination from J.W. When you got the 
flick, you don't need the feet. Yeah, I, I tell you what, unbelievable right there. Kind of catching Deckel in a slight scorpion mode. So good from JW. Face. She was like, really? That's <laughs> right there. She's like, come on, man. Yeah, I was thinking Vivian might just let that go with Deckel behind her in the backcourt, but she just got that two-hander out in the middle and poked it, and JW was not prepared. That's what I'm talking about. Vivian Davis been patrolling the midcourt and the center. Feels like much more aggressively this year. It's a nice shot by Jackie. Yeah, Deckel kind of tapping his chest, letting Vivian know that he probably pulled that trigger too early, putting uh, kind of hanging Vivian out to dry. Nice hands from uh, Kawamoto. Way to fly in, J.W. Johnson. Yeah, that was that was very smooth. The man's never in a hurry, I'll tell you that. But he'll be in a rush when he needs to be. He was right there. They're in a bit of a rush right now as they are up 19 to 16, looking to find the advantage heading into the second mixed doubles competition. Yeah, I'm not even really exactly sure what's happened. I, I, I don't see something totally specific. Maybe JW being a little more aggressive, but just, just the ATX pickleballers playing a little cleaner these last five minutes or so. Let's look at Corinne Carr and Steve Kuhn. Oh, nice. <laughs> See Gabe Tardio, the, the the young the young buck over there, giving some encouragement to his teammates. You like to see that. Yeah, let's see what Deckel and Vivian. Nice high five there from Deckel and Vivian. They know it's crunch time right now. Really big couple points coming out of the timeout, obviously. JW Johnson will serve. the left shoulder of Vivian David, but that was well patrolled. Yeah, she can't help but chuckle at that one. Good reach again, J.W. Johnson. Yeah, and it's interesting to see Deckel going to a lot of drops and mix. You might think it was the opposite as he was driving almost every ball in men's doubles. Game point, ATX Pickleballers. Great stick from Vivian David, who I think uh, I think the ATX Pickleballers liked what they had in that situation, but Vivian David able to neutralize the drive of Jackie. ATX getting the ball back now. Double freeze at 2018. I love the move from JW. I know he overextended maybe slightly, and a great job from the big man who is backing up and able to let that ball go out. Yeah. Nice 
nice job from J.W. Johnson earlier in that point of handling that big two-handed backhand from Vivian David. Oh, and he missed the flick. That rarely happens. No, I, I love it. I, I mean, I know that he overextended on that forehand and just missed that backhand, but he's had three really quality shots on his paddle these last couple minutes. Keep going, JW. There's the drive you were looking for. But Jackie's done a nice job, to her credit, fending him off. Absolutely. Yeah, so maybe... Uh, yeah, maybe Deckel knew that from a previous oh, no. encounter, or, or who knows what happened, but she really is handling the drives nicely. Who wants it, Cameron? Back and forth here We've these been last in couple minutes. For a minute now. I mean, who wants it? Somebody's got to take it. Let's see. It's just low enough. 19 to 20. And another Vivian David comes crashing in with that wicked two-handed backhand. Huge combination from Deckel and Vivian. And there's a freeze frame for you. <laughs> 20 all. off of one of those and I think uh, he wish he had it the ball that popped up it was incredibly awkward I'm not sure if he stepped wrong or just the clipping of the tape threw off his rhythm but you're exactly right that was kind that was an interesting point and another side out for the night owls huge from Deckel and Vivian and early in that point it was unbelievable Jackie stayed back and yet Deckel drove at JW Johnson who was already at the kitchen line and sure enough 20 shots later after a big scramble huge point from the Night Owls and all of a sudden the uh, tide has turned as the Las Vegas Night Owls will face a game point opportunity and a shot to get their team up by one in the match score. Yeah, big, that last point, just big court coverage from Deckel Barr. He went, he went out wide, he covered a couple in the middle. Uh, just incredibly good shots too from the ATX pickleballers. It's not like they let him off the hook. Just well played from Deckel and Vivian. What's wild to me is watching in the middle of those defensive rallies, how Vivian David literally is on the ground, it looks like, and yet she can still pop up and play the next ball. The hip mobility is a uh, flesh right there. To be young. <laughs> like, is, she, is she a former hurdler once? Like, uh, no, just, I believe it's just tennis, but I don't know. I'll, ch geez. I'll check on the background. <laughs> Julian Arnold sitting courtside as well. I think that it has a lot to do with how comfortable they are together because J.W. Johnson's counterattack was very good, but Deckel Baller's paddle was in the perfect position after that Vivian David speed up. Great, great combination for the Night Owls. Deckel Bar well prepared. Great execution from the Night Owls after the timeout. Vivian David is 
pumped right now. They now lead two to one. So they are just one mixed doubles game away from victory. Yeah, very exciting match. It was wild at the end. It was almost like it was a regular tournament with side out play. But we have Cameron Blackwood down with our victorious team, Vivian David and Deckel Bar. You guys now go up two to one. Vivian, I just want to talk about how low you get on the court. Can you just talk to us about why that is so important? I just feel like it's, I mentally engage more when I'm low. I see speed ups, it's easier for me to counter, um, to reset the ball. Just like in general, I think it gets my mind engaged, so it works for me. <laughs> it does very much so. When you go from rally scoring, it's 18-20, now you're at your freeze, and you go back to traditional pickleball scoring, what changes in the strategy? Uh, we don't change the tra strategy too much. We just know we, we're in it for sure. Uh, they need to score on the reserve, which is harder. It's harder to pass us, so we're just in it every point and uh, try to get the win. Glad we could. We have it. Night Owls are up two to one. We're going to come right back with the next mixed cool. doubles. Don't go anywhere. Six carbs and 95 calories. supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Welcome back to Major League Pickleball Mesa. This one is turning out to be a very good one between the ATX Pickleballers and the Las Vegas Night Owls. The Night Owls just picked up the first mix, so it is now two to one in terms of total team score. They also have had a phenomenal first round as well. They picked up a win already on the day. The Pickleballers are looking to find this one heading to a dream breaker. They need this second mixed doubles matchup. It's Gabe Tardio and Jade Kawamoto versus Kyle Yates and Lauren Stratman. going to be the equation here. Which way do you think this is headed? Uh, I would say on paper I would lean towards the veterans and Kyle Yates and Lauren Stratman, but it's a very tight matchup and there's a lot of firepower from Gabe Tardio. We'll have to see how that manifests. 
He has some tricky speed ups. If Stratman can handle the pressure from Gabe Tardio, I really like the Night Owls in this matchup. If Tardio can catch her and uh, have some success attacking her, who knows? Two one. Come on, come on. Yeah, low attack from Lauren Stratman, but definitely one of her favorite ones. I've played her many times, and she's caught me on that right shoulder when I'm heads up with her. So we'll see if she continues to go for that shot. Obviously, earliest in, in this second mixed doubles match, we have Jade Kawamoto handling the firepower of Kyle Yates very nicely. Nice job there. Gabe Tardio leaning a little bit to the middle, and Lauren Trapman being pulled out wide had a window up the line, and she was able to convert. from Lauren Stratman. I'm fine with her attacking Gabe Tardio, but the two balls, uh, uh, the first one and this last one, a little too low for my liking. read that well. She stepped over to her right to hit a forehand pretty early, almost as Kyle Yates was uh, striking the ball, but just sailed it an inch long. Yeah, just long. Third shot lob from Kyle Yates, successful. Gabe Tardio took an awkward swing on that overhead and missed. Nice big two-hander from Gabe Tardio. Kyle Yates leaning a little bit uh, to his right-hand side, rightfully so, but Tardio getting it to his back shoulder nicely. Missed there. Yeah, just kind of kind of looked down like, not quite sure what happened there. <laughs> it even happens at the pro level, guys. The old uh, mixed doubles pump fake. Uh, Yates kind of stepped over like he was going to take it, couldn't quite get there, threw off the rhythm of Lauren Stratman. Happens quite frequently. Tardio. Oh, absolutely. Tardio was in a great position. You just got to tip your hat to Kyle Yates in that situation, able to hit a phenomenal backhand to end that point. Tardio was in complete control. Wow. Great adjustment off the net tape from Tardio. A very awkward spot for most players. He handled it with ease. but somehow managed to climb their way out. Exactly, and right there, Tardio was very uh, ready for that Lauren Stratman speed up, but Kyle Yates right there in the middle. Beautiful. 
beautiful reach in from Lauren Stratman as she gives the fist pump, bowling that ball, lobbing it all the way to the back corner. Oh, very nice shot selection and disguise from Lauren Stratman. I didn't see it company coming, and obviously the ATX pickleballers did not as well. Big overhead from Jay Kawamoto. Solid power, but placement right at the feet of Lauren Stratman was the key to that successful shot. Nice job by Jade, handling that speed up from Kyle Yates. Not sure that didn't bounce twice. Yeah, it doesn't, not sure, it obviously doesn't matter, but yes, that is the double bounce call of the referee, she was unsure. Looked from here, bad vantage point from us, but looked here to be a double bounce. collision with players is Tardio. He used every foot of the court, <laughs> did Yates and Stratman. And that's a couple times with a third shot lob from Kyle Yates and Gabe Tardio not releasing on the overhead, just kind of poking it back in play. I think he needs to let loose on that one. Very casual dink from Tardio, yeah, but it works. Yeah, definitely. And I think Kyle was kind of crashing to the middle, thinking Tardio was going to speed up. But yes, he was very casual with it. But he found a good spot at the left foot of Kyle Yates. 11 to 10, just a one point game at the change event. Shocker. Shamran, another close one. Can't believe it. So, you know we're going to Dreambreaker. Oh, of course. And it's, it's really incredible to see how tight the talent level has, has become in this sport. Three or four years ago, big discrepancies between the, you know, the middle of the pack and the top players and, and vice versa. And right now, the edges are razor thin. Just so much talent out here. Well, and I think what makes it so fun now is having the challenger level as well as the premier level and to see what's going to ch take shape as this continues on into season two. Will you start to see some different names go in and out of both levels? Definitely. Th uh, things change very quickly in this sport, not just from a tournament perspective, but from a talent perspective as well. Yeah, good sustained power from Tardio. Knew he wasn't going to finish early in that point and kept the pressure on. Just enough of a change up from Stratman. Yeah, I think, if she, low enough. I think if she hit that at 100% power, Gabe would have had trouble. it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Enough. That was challenging enough. Yeah, three or four really nice adjustments off the let cord from Tardio in this match. But yes, Kyle Yates just missed it by an inch or two. Yeah, Tardio almost, almost two there. <laughs> Questionable drop shot uh, from Kyle Yates as Tardio was already in the midcourt, but couldn't come up with the dink.
There's the spot from Lauren Stratman. Tardio actually has handled three or four of those in a row, but not this time. Great shot by Lauren Stratman, jamming up Gabe Tardio on his right side of his body. right now in terms of wins and losses. We saw the Milwaukee Mashers put the New Jersey Fives into a nervous position, but now they've lost two matches already, the Milwaukee Mashers, so they're 0-2 in Group A. Group B, there are wins for the Mad Drops and the Florida Smash. Slippery fish yesterday? Yeah, yeah, something like that. I think that's a perfect description, Cameron. Thank you. And Tardio, he enjoys that shot as well. So pretty funny that it comes into play in this match. in a bad situation, but he dug out of it. Kawamoto ripping that backhand or forehand inside out wide. Nice job of Jade Kawamoto. Kind of has that inside out spin on her forehand. It kind of travels away uh, from Lauren Stratman's forehand and cause an error in that situation. shoulder waggle there, kind of trying to create some deception and unfortunately pushing the dink wide, 16 apiece. So 17-16 now, pickleballers with a one-point advantage. Yeah, kept that stroke nice and short. Plenty of power on the counterattack from Tardio, well done. going that was a great move though partner yeah it, she missed it it was all it all almost kind of happened in slow motion her getting around the corner and the slow shot good look but couldn't convert great cover from Stratman Fired up too, let's go. He's walking the kitchen right now. <laughs> Love to see the emotion from the 17 year old from South Florida. Very nice play from Gabe Tardio with two big time counter attacks. 
Yeah, and it came timely too. He needs this. So did the rest of the ATX pickleballers as they are down by one right now to the Las Vegas Night Owls. So they're going to take a timeout for the pickleballers. Each of our matches thus far have gone to a dream breaker on this Saturday. I will say yesterday, what, four of the five on our Talking Stick Resort Championship Court also went to a dream breaker. Exactly right. I mean, it's what the fans want. Oh, well, it's what everyone wants, let's be clear. <laughs> I mean, it's the dream breaker. It's the registered trademark. I mean, this is this is it's major a trademark. This is this is Major League Pickleball. It's perfect. Looks like the Seattle Pioneers took down the New York Hustlers 3-1 on our grandstand court. going to that two-hander for the speed up and Jade Kawamoto right there with the counter. Yeah. Side out, yep. and not even just a side out, it's actually a point with Rally scoring. 17-20, they get one more additional before they hit side out scoring. That's right. Placement over power, very nice angle from Kyle Yates. Right now, the placement of the ball is questionable. No one can find it in the stance. <laughs> oh, there we go. We got it back. Still a little work to do for the Night Owls. pushing Stratman off the kitchen line. Don't hate the decision from Stratman going behind Tardio, but just a little too far back to convert the dink. Incredibly quick feet from Jade Kawamoto, but again, Kyle Yates adding a little bit more pressure. They get the 18th point, so they are now at a freeze inside out scoring. Again, sm smart, smart decision by the ATX pickleballers to to regain their footing and their mo momentum with the timeout. Nice, nice run from the Night Owls, getting up to 19, and they have the serve. So 19 to 20. I'm looking around. I see the Chicago Slice have been warming up. They're next up on Championship Court as they will be playing in their semifinal for the Challenger level against the Utah Black Diamond. That's coming up next on this stream. <laughs> oh, we got the people in stilts out. People in stilts. It's, a, it's, it's, it's not a party until they show up. You got us up in the corner, too. <laughs> in the background. <laughs> they keep us off camera. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we got a face for radio. <laughs> All right, let's see if the Night Owls can find one more. giving it the body English, trying to get it over. But two, two dink errors from her has tied this thing up. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Great power on that ball from Tardio. 
Yeah, very nice job and handling that initial speed up from Lauren Stratman as well. So well played point from Gabe. And another side out for the Night Owls. Yeah, we Score remains 20-20. Yeah, we saw Jackie Kawamoto try that on Deckel Bar a couple times. Sister tried as well, couldn't come up with it. Tardio. Great job, Lauren Stratman. Oh, they fend off a match point again. The Las Vegas Night Owls are up two to one. So if they take this mixed doubles, they have won the match. Again, it's choosing her times very well. Yeah, and a little fortunate with that. Well, we'll never know if Tardio was going to be ready for fair. that counter attack. Very but, fair. But, but you're, you're right. I think the second half of the match, she has been picking her spots better. <laughs> we saw that a couple of times yesterday as well. <laughs> ATX pickleballers need one. And a missed return. Yeah, just long. Everyone was kind of waiting. So it is now 21-21. After all that, you're like, on a return? <laughs> shot already at game point. Now they're going to get another one. Nice forward pressure from Gabe Tardio, catching Lauren Stratman off balance. interesting you see and you wait to find out who exactly is going to change the pattern and sometimes it's been strapping in the last few where she's had mm -hmm. some success jay took a shot there yeah. and another side out so atx pickleballers up 22 to 21. that's right tell them jackie get out there Pump, <laughs> pumping up the sister and gabe tardio Say enough is enough. Not so fast yet again. Yates and Stratman are hanging on so tough. Yeah, great movement to the middle of the court from Kyle Yates. Great mover, nice footwork from him, and a nice combination. seen that we had the foot on the baseline on the serve yesterday we have tardio throwing up his paddle unbelievable that, that was not the, the replay you were looking for right there but my goodness we'll get that dialed up for you and there it is the atx pickleballers force a 
dream breaker 23 to 21 they had so many different looks at it and the las vegas night owls they also had a few match points at their hand as well so my goodness 23 21 i mean dream breaker the stands are getting filled because they know what's soon to come if you're sitting at home start putting those bets on the line who do you think is going to be taking home this singles competition I said slight edge to ATX pickleballers on paper, I believe, but anything can happen as we've seen. Let's let's send it down to Cameron Blackwood, who's gonna interview our winners of our second mixed match. I gotta go to game first. You threw your paddle in the middle of that point thinking it was over, and you ended up winning that point. How important is it to stay in the point just in case now moving forward? Yeah, very, very important. Yeah, my, my bad, Jack. Jane. <laughs> Jason, my bad. Well, at least he knows who his partner is. Speaking of your sister, I would like to know what Jackie was telling you in those last moments. Uh, she was just telling us to keep our feet moving, keep moving the ball, because sometimes when you're nervous, you you know lock up a little bit. So she was just saying, stay loose, keep moving. There you have it. We are headed into a dream breaker. Do not go anywhere. Cam, back up to you. Great job, I love that. The, the conversation is, well, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that next time. I mean, fair point, but I mean, you get style points, why not? Yeah, definitely. To tell you what, I would like to know the exact ruling on that if that's not a hindrance. Obviously, it doesn't matter now. Is that but a it's, distraction? But it's it's reasonable to think that's a hindrance. Obviously, didn't mean anything. Don't start tossing anything. that stuff hey, out hey, there, Adam. Come just, on now. Just saying that that's a possibility. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a possibility. But man, a couple of things that I have not seen in my six years of pickleball, and that's one of them right there. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, well, the Dream Breaker is coming up here in just a second. We are going to leave you on this beautiful view of our championship court as we take a second just to regather.
All right, it's time to get ready for our Dream Breaker. The rosters and rotation have been set in terms of order, so we're going to give it to you right now. It is going to be Kyle Yates versus Gabe Attardio. Next up will be Deckel Barr versus J.W. Johnson. Then the third will be Vivian David versus Jade Kawamoto, closing out with Lauren Stratman versus Jackie Kawamoto. All right, you're looking at this lineup. Which way is it faring? Actually, you know what? I said that I leaned a little bit towards the ATX pickleballers. I'm going to take that back. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the. Night, I'm going to go with the <laughs> night owls. We have four people on the court that don't always play singles, but they're all very, very competent. All right, so you have it here. So again, if you're new to the Dream Breaker, we played a 21 points rally scoring as the first is now underway. I'm switching back after that point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's allowed. So Kyle Yates right now versus Tardio. Nice shot by Yates. Yeah, great movement from Kyle. Kind of had a mini pancake neutralizing the offense of Tardio and then able to show his athleticism with an Ernie to finish. from Tardio, really nice forehand roll cross court. Even with Kyle's court coverage and good footwork, couldn't come up with that one. Nice ball from Tardio, a little pep in his step, taking a 3-1 lead are the ATX Pickleballers with J.W. Johnson now facing off against Deckelbar. Yeah, very nice job of Deckel carving the outside of the ball, forcing it to move away from J.W. Johnson. Great volley. Yeah, good leave. It's got to be hard to face off against Barr in singles with how big that serve is. Yeah, the big serve and the, the length at the kitchen line. Definitely a formidable singles player. Johnson in his own right, one of the best singles players in the world. Picked up multiple titles. Absolutely. So it was two and two. Next up, it's Vivian David. Yeah, definitely give an edge here to Vivian David. Not large at all, but she is a very good mover, especially laterally. This is Jade Kalamoto. Interesting sneak in there from Vivian. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yeah, you got to pick, pick your come up or stay back. Or don't get stuck in the middle. And back to back for Jade. Oh, I gave her the commentator curse. That's clear. Pick it up here, Viv. on Vivian David, so even though Jade couldn't quite get there, she still ends up with the point. Oh yeah, tough. Vivian in complete control there, but had a toe on the line. That's a tough break for the Night Owls. A3 in favor of ATX Pickleballers. One heck of a shot. From Jade Kawamoto, that thing was phenomenal. Look at this angle. Yeah, an incredible return, really, from Vivian David. But the issue with hitting such a good return, you give the angle back to your opponent. And Jay knew exactly what to do with that cross court backhand. Great shot. So Lauren Stratman and Jackie Kawamoto. A loose error for, error for Stratman. Has some very, very good ground strokes. identical, but the opposite direction. You stop that, Jackie Kawamoto. That's absolutely ridiculous. That landed in the kitchen. Unbelievable play from Jackie. I, I mean, 
the degree of difficulty is off the charts with that angle. <laughs> it's unreal. So it is 11 to 3, which means it's time for a change of ends, and they will have a second to collect themselves. The Night Owls right now, though, Lord Stratman saying, I'm not, I'm not taking a break right now. Getting back on the court, got to find some flow. I told you, it was for sure ATX Pickleballers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, what was that you said? No, I haven't been going back and forth at all. <laughs> True to her baseline, going a little more tennis there. Yeah. She said, I'm not giving you those angles anymore. Yeah, very, enough. very nice. Great location for Lauren Stratman just within the last six inches of the court. That's exactly right. Two tough, kind of jammed up forehands from Jackie Kawamoto. You got to tip your cap to Lauren Stratman with some big shots to create that. Back to the top of the order. Cardio again up at the kitchen line. Yeah, really controlling the kitchen line nicely. Not doing too much with his volleys, but definitely putting them in good spots and good depth in the court. How? He just traveled over 25 feet to hit this shot. Look at this run. My gosh. And to go up the line on the run, unbelievable. Gabe Tardio. Yeah. Kyle says, all right, I'll give you an angle to look at. Yeah, I mean, so, some of the shot making in this Dream Breaker is ridiculous right now. Sharp angles. The situation was incredibly dire for Gabe Tardio, but he somehow wiggled his way out of it. Phenomenal play from Gabe. Gabe just went three and one, three and one versus Yates. A return error from Deckel Bar. too plain on that first volley. I don't think Deckel was in a tough situation. He's got to put a little more stick on that first volley, especially when your opponent is J.W. Johnson. Not enough lift on that. Yeah. Trying to drop that paddle face down just enough. pointing yeah. wide of the court. And, and you know, often when you have that inside out forehand, it's tailing away. So it uh, makes it harder uh, for that, that player to volley the ball, but also carries wide sometimes. And that's what we saw there. at this point. That's Jade right there with a beautiful shot. And another, she's unstoppable right now. Vivian David has yet to find a point against her. I mean, what, what do you do? Just hit to the, to the middle of the court? You give them anything, they're creating these incredible angles. Decided so far dream breaker that we have seen. It is match point for the ATX pickleballers. And that ball is out of bounds. Jade Kawamoto just goes eight, gets eight points against Vivian David in this Dream Breaker, 21 to seven. The ATX Pickleballers find their first win here in 2023. Wow, unbelievable.
I've been left speechless a couple times today. I mean, the shot making, like I said, just off the charts. Wild job by the ATX Pickleballers. It's time for them to get their victory interview underway. Our crowd has been phenomenal. Check this out. Look at how many people are out here on the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. We've got semifinal action coming up next for the challenger, but it's time to head to our winners. Cam, take it away. Right now, I have to turn to the sisters right now because these are the only two on this team that do not play singles on the tour and just showed a clinic on angles. How was the mind shift from doubles into singles and you don't even play it? Uh, you just gotta, you know, just risk it. You just gotta go for it. Close your eyes and swing. I don't know, that's all I got. Close your eyes and swing. A strategy for you, was it different? Yeah, I thought I was gonna go up a lot more, but I ended up staying back and just trying to trust my angles because I, I can hit them or I can't, but luckily today I hit them. There you have it, you're one and one. You have one more match today. What's the game plan right now after the court? <laughs> Jugamos muy bien. Gracias. Get some food? Sí. Do you want to help him with the Spanish a little bit? Uh, what do you want me to say? How about what you think about this team right now? Eh, la verdad que jugamos increíble. Yeah, jugamos muy bien. Eh, en el men's doubles empezamos un poco nerviosos, sobre todo yo. Pero al final pudimos sacar el mixto y el singles. Las Kawamoto rompiendo todos los... Los, eh, tre con tremendos ángulos es imposible que nos ganen. There you have it. <laughs> well said by them. ATX took the win here in the Dream Breaker. You guys don't want to go anywhere. More pickleball to come here at MLP. MLP Mesa is brought to you by Aura Organic. Fuel your lifestyle with Aura, the cleanest, most powerful plant based supplements. Knock around sunglasses, quality shades that won't break the bank. Pro XR Performance, innovation you can handle. Skechers, experience comfort on the court with Skechers Pickleball. Margaritaville, escape to your personal paradise. Stay, play, live, and dine in Margaritaville. Michelob Ultra, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Oh my good lord, what a feeling All of this joy I've been stealing We all need someone, someone that can make us believe So call me a man on a mission I'm guilty by my own admission I don't wanna break free, no change could ever take me Can't stop, don't stop, don't stop now Oh, you just saw.
Welcome back to Championship Court. We are here for the Challenger League semifinal matchup number one. The Chicago Slice taking on the Utah Black Diamonds. Dominic Catalano alongside me, Chad Edwards. We are ready to go. Olivia McMillan and Utah to serve. Emily Ackerman and Susanna Barr for the slice, taking on Olivia McMillan and Michelle Esquivel for the Utah Black Diamonds. And that's going to go wide right there from Esquivel. And good start off the tape there for Susanna Barr, Chad. Yeah, we saw. McMillan and Esquivel much more aggressive in the quarterfinal. But we're seeing a couple of early errors here. Barr and Ackerman capitalizing, jumping out 4-0. That's a heat check at 4-0 right there for Ackerman. Game 
plan for Utah here to try and go to Ackerman a little more than Barr and make the young floor or young California native beat them. It's a good ball from Esquivel right there. Barr a little overextended, catching that one late. Splitting the middle there, good roll. Each catching McMillan and Esquivel both coming forward. Oh, referee have not completely finished calling the score. So we've got a fault on Bar. This has happened a few times this weekend for numerous teams. Not used to how the referees are calling the score here. 4-5 lead for the slice. Like it may have been a little deep, but too close to call there. McMillan now. looking to the sideline to see. Six, four. Sorry, my odd disappeared on me right there. I don't know, usually have one anyway, but pulling McMillan out wide. That's ambitious for yeah. Bob. Yeah, a little overzealous there, I think. It was a good drop. Work your way through transition, play that. Aggressive dinking here early from Ackerman. I'm liking it. You're dinking with a purpose. Eight, five. Mm, almost. Oh, we may have a challenge here. Ackerman almost certain that that ball was on the line. I was about to say, good pick up from Bar. Esquivel caught way over on McMillan's side of the court. So no challenge here. Coach Ray J. Murphy on sideline saying, no, nah, we're not gonna challenge that one. Attack there from Ackerman, but a little too big of a backswing. Seven, oh no, McMillan. Yeah, that ball's going way out off the paddle of Susanna Barr. But McMillan saves her and slice go back up by two. Stretched. Yeah, that's a good spot there from Ackerman. And you're seeing it, like you were saying, she's dinking with a purpose. She's dropping that paddle head under, really rolling those dinks. And then that disguises that, that top spin speed up that she just hit right there. Switch ends at 11. What a spot. 
I that's seriously. top spin with aggressive side spin. Yes, it is inside out top spin. I thought she was going middle the whole time. Well, I mean, the, the paddle angle said yes. Cutting across the ball said no. And that's why Esquivel pinched toward the middle there. So the slice up 11 9 at the end change. You know, a good job, I think, an answer from Utah because they get down 4 0 right, real quick. Now back within two, a good answer, Chad. Yeah, it's a good answer. And I was, you know, I was going to say for McMillan and Esquivel, you know, I like their aggression. One thing that McMillan has to be careful of is going out too wide to Ackerman because then it gives her that sharp angle to pull McMillan back out wide. So potentially a little bit more left foot and then Esquivel can look to close that middle and kind of keep the timing off of, for Ackerman and, and Barr. We'll come back in play after this end change. 11-9 lead for Chicago. Sitting all over that. Yeah. Utah Black Diamond owner, Connor Pardo. With the twins. I think, I think McMillan got away with one right there. 100%. Hitting off of the back foot, elevated ball. Six six guy hits, right? Or woman? <laughs> she, how does she something you angle? can't hit, Dom? I can't. Big serve there now from Barr, and the slice extend their lead back to four. shoulder of Esquivel, not yeah. allowing her to get a good overhead. Ackerman says, you know, my bad right there, but it was actually a good setup. It was. Yeah, I, I loved it. It's a perfect setup. Bar with unforced error on that one. So, but they are back to a four point lead here. 15-14. 15-11. 15-11, that would be. It would only be a one. Carry the one. Yes, we're doing math. We're good. Sitting on that two-hander. I think Esquivel has to try to go cross-body right hip there because Ackerman is teeing off on those two-hander backhands. Nice coach there from Michelle Esquivel. Coming over, reading that ball. Close up here of that forehand. Spot from McMillan. Getting outside the ball. Wrist already cocked and just rolling that to the backhand side of Susanna Barr. A little too much reach there from Barr. And Utah right back in this now, down by two. Black diamond side there from McMillan. I like that though, backhand punch there. Trying to go behind Susanna Barr. Trading off unforced errors. Little tight here for these ladies in the quarterfinal, uh, the semifinal matchup, I should say. Good 
spot there from Esquivel. Ackerman teed off again on that two-handed backhand. Esquivel ready for it, going on the right shoulder, and Ackerman not able to come back cross body. Sailing long off the pedal of Esquivel, but nonetheless, they were 17 17. It seems like Esquivel's timed up Ackerman a little bit now. 17, 17. And that angle again. But you know what, though? That is kind of the mechanics of Susanna Barr, right? She has this unorthodox movement, so that overhead comes naturally to her with that angle. Yep. Good work from both Barr and Ackerman, working their way through the transition area to gain the advantage there. And now back out to a two-point lead is Chicago. the reset, getting them back into the point, dropping it in the kitchen from the baseline, and then the setup with that top spin roll again on the forehand. Ackerman's been the difference for Chicago Slice right now. Yes, she had a couple of uh, jammed up moments there where, where Esquivel kind of figured her out a little bit, but now she's made her adjustment. I'm liking Emily Ackerman right now, Chad. This is the first time we've seen them. We haven't had a call for them. I like the way she's playing. She has both the aggressive side of the game, and she has and proven to go cross court with Olivia McMillan right there on the forehand dink side. I'm really liking the upside to Emily Ackerman. Do you agree? No, absolutely. And and with that forehand roll, that's kind of the transition of the way the game's going now. It used to be that open face backhand slice cross court. Now the heavy rolls are coming into it. It, it disguises so many shots from that position. Game point here for Chicago. Yeah. A, little, a little tight there for Susanna Bach. A little hesitant right there on what she wanted to do with that, but we are all frozen now at 20 or 18-20. So side out scoring the remainder of the way. from Esquivel right there. She caught it late, left it too high. Bob just sitting there ready for it. It's almost like she needed to reset that one instead. Game point number two for Chicago. Yeah, Esquivel made the adjustment there. Again, she went crossbody on Ackerman. That right hip. It's a good setup there from Ackerman to pulling McMillan out wide, forcing her to hit on the run, and then Barr can step in and really put that ball away. Point number three for Chicago. There it is, Chicago taking the ever so important women's doubles matchup. 21-18, she had a good match. Very good match there for Emily Ackerman and Susanna Barr to start things off. Yeah, and like we always talk about, this women's doubles point, very, very important going into the men's doubles. They can now play a little bit looser, a little freer, try to put their team up 2-0. So fantastic start there from Ackerman and Barr. And we will kick it down courtside and Cameron Blackwood is with Susanna Barr and Emily Ackerman. Emily, you're the only lady on this court that has not been here on the MLP stage yet. How did you prepare mentally and physically? Um, 
Um, I mean, I just came out of college tennis, so I feel like I, the team environment is really where I thrive. So I've just been super excited to play MLP, and I finally got my chance to do it. So just take it when I have it. And I know you don't like to give away your secrets, but I would like you to talk about the communication because you, you are out there talking more than a lot of players up there. Sure. I mean, I just think it's really important. I come from a volleyball background where we talk the whole point long, encouraging, calling balls. And honestly, like, I went through a little slump midway, and I just talked to Emily, like, pick me up, go for those balls, and, and we pulled it out. There you have it. We have the slice up one to zero. We're heading into men's doubles. You don't want to go anywhere. hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. See grandstand court back there. It's the other semifinal of the Challenger League. It is Atlanta taking on Bay Area. Winner of that plays the winner of this on Sunday for the championship of the Challenger League. Chicago slice up 1-0 as the women came out on top 21-18. Rob Cassidy in Utah to serve the start. Forehand swing and he off wasn't the edge. Gonna, he wasn't going to get cheated on the swing. No, he got cheated off the ball placement. That's so big from Connor Garnett. You guys are going to be in a, for a treat here with this two-hander. He hits it hard and accurate. Connor Garnett, Ryler to Hart for Chicago. And it is from Go Oop, go ahead. Spencer Smith and Rob Cassidy, and you're saying good leave there from Garnett. Good one. That's DeHart hits such a heavy forehand. Yeah, Garnett and DeHart both coming in with the Three, game plan of driving those thirds. Ooh, what's the right move? You see a little shake and bake there. Garnett catching that two-handed just a little late. City just a little tentative that doesn't want to leave a ball up, that's for sure. Oh. 
Oh, good hands there from Spencer Smith. Stab save from Smith. Let's take another look at it here. Good move by Garnett, but Smith just able to get a paddle on it. A little overly aggressive there from DeHart. DeHart, one of your sleepers that you mentioned yesterday when we were going into this challenger fleet. Yep. See that elbow never even came back behind the body. He's just right there punching that down. Five, four. And you talk about that, Chad. It's not easy for a tennis player to do that mm -hmm. and come from tennis at a high level that DeHart has and be that compact. Catching the tape right there and sailing a little long. But you did call that too, Chad, that DeHart and Garnett are going to come in guns blazing, and they have so far. Tough ball there from Smith. Got that drive elevated. Again, DeHart just punching that ball down. attack there from Cassidy. Garnett's made a little bit of a splash on the singles side of things on the APP and PPA tours. Smith outside of the left foot of Connor Garnett, and we are all square at seven. Rob Cassidy right there. If you attack him into the body, he's going to get everything back. Good adjustment there. And he's on his back foot. He knows he just gave the, yeah, I'm not going to do that shot anymore. <laughs> he knew he was on his back foot trying to hit a drive, and that's not his game. Still, even though Cassidy makes a mistake right there, he's on it. Yeah. That's not the spot you want to go over and over again to Rob Cassidy. Good punch volley there from Cassidy, and that's a way to beat those heavy swingers is get that ball down. Good move there from DeHart. That's what DeHart is, he's kind of picking up in his game, is the movement on the court, jumping up the sideline there, rolling that backhand. Good spot there from Cassidy catching Garnett on the transition. from Cassidy will change ends here with Chicago up 11-10. It's as close as it can get, Chad, here. And seeing that Chicago came out hot and heavy, firing on all cylinders, and now it seems like Utah's kind of leveled the playing field here, slowed it down. Yeah. Is that the answer for Utah to try and slow down Garnett, the heart in Chicago? And, and that's, that's exactly what you keyed in on right there, is they're kind of neutralizing Garnett and the hot power. They're not trying to over hit, they're just getting that ball down. I mentioned this, those players that like to rip those balls and really go hard, if you're keeping it down, now all of a sudden they're trying to pick it up from the knees, that ball's staying chest high, now you can get on top of it and keep it down. If you float a ball and leave it short, they're gonna make you pay for it. 
As the players change ends, it's a one point lead for Chicago. It'll be Garnett serving as we come back into play here. Chicago with a 1 0 lead already as the women took care of business. Sir Chad. That's a good ball there from Garnett. Just a little, little block angle. Oh, that's a good move from DeHaat, but he hesitated for a second. Can't have those here. Three points. All square now at 12. Yeah, that's not the speed up Rob Cassidy wants to give right there. I mean, you just see his body language. As soon as he hits it, he knows that that's not the shot. 13, wow. Good spot from Cassidy. The Hots ball, not sure what he was trying to do with that one, whether he's trying to roll a drop, but catches it late. Cassidy going down the backhand side of Garnett. That's great defense down the line from Rob Cassidy reading Garnett trying to flip behind him. Utah takes a lead now. They're first. Yeah. Oh, Cassidy's on flat on his back. Wow. What a play from Rob Cassidy here. Wants to speed up at him. Let's see. Oh, that's that's a massive kitchen violation. Wow, that totally got missed. He was way in the kitchen on that volley. And now it's a timeout from Chicago as Utah takes a three-point lead. That's a huge miss and a huge turn of events, Chad. They got away with one yes. right there. Wow. And that's, I mean, in, in all fairness, it's, it's tough for the referees, That's but that's their job right there, looking at the kitchen line. I mean, Cassidy's completely, he's a foot in from his chin in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But as for the slice, they have to, you've got your teammates on the side, you've got your, your coach, that's something that they've got to be looking for as well. Right, they have a coach, the two women players on the team, and their ownership is right behind the bench too. Someone needs to point that out, see that right away. No one does. Goes unnoticed. And it is a three-point lead here for the Utah Black Diamonds as they have taken control. Good reach in and spot from Spencer Smith. Right shoulder of DeHart. Oh, wow. You cannot have these mistakes late, too. And Garnett, another return to serve error, and it's a five point lead for Utah. You. The get and then the put away from Garnett. Both feet off the ground on this two-hander. Oh, and again, just loading up on that two-handed backhand right into the body of Spencer Smith. Watch the replay here. He jumps right into this front foot and then has the 
presence to get over. The call from DeHart was out. Okay, so Chad, here's my issue. Is that DeHart calls it out. Okay? Yep. He has a clear around the post. And he finished it. Yep. It would have been very tough for Spencer Smith to defend that. Now, if this ball is in, then it's negated. It's negated. <laughs> so a challenge here from Utah now, call from Ryler DeHart. This could be a huge swing in this second game on the men's double side. Utah looking to even the score at one apiece. Not seen the replay just yet. It's a video challenge. Chad, what's been the difference here for Utah to get back in this though? Because they were down and out and took a lead late. You know what they we, we talked about neutralizing the, the power of Slice. They've been able to counterattack as well. And they've, they've chosen their spots of counterattack as far as going crossbody or behind DeHart and Garnett. It's really thrown off the timing of the Chicago Slice guys. We'll see if they have an answer here after we get the ruling on the video challenge. Seems to be a little closer than anyone expected. They're really taking a look at this here. Bob Swisshelm, our lead referee for this matchup here on championship court. Semifinals going on here and on grandstand court. It looks like we're all square at one apiece on the grandstand between the Bay Area Breakers and the Atlanta Bouncers. We're at 1-0 Chicago lead here as the Chicago women took down the Utah Black Diamonds women by a score of 21 to 18. Looks like we have our ruling coming into Bob Swissom here. We'll get that answer for you. And Take a look. It's, Ooh. it's uh, well, I mean, it's I right. It's, it's, that, it's, it's that right, frame. right behind the net. So we'll get the can, ruling here. You can see underneath and see the tip of the ball right on the line. The ball was in, and like I said, Chet, the heart had a clean around the post winner. For the most part, I'd say nine times out of ten he would have got that. But unfortunately, goes the way of the Black Diamonds for Chicago, unfortunately. Fortunately for Utah, goes their way. And they are in a commanding spot here to even this up at 19-15. Good challenge for Utah. almost overspoke saying that's a good spot there from Garnett, which it was into the left shoulder of Cassidy. Got it off the hand, popped it up. Not sure what the discussion was right there between. I think they were thinking the if it hit Garnett's above his wrist on the block. Cassidy was the one that blocked it though. Oh, good spot there from Cassidy. Just froze to Hart and Garnett. So the Black Diamonds frozen now at 20. Side out scoring for them. Oh, and a big win here. An answer for Utah. 21-16 as we are all square now at one game apiece through gender doubles. Next up, we'll have mixed doubles. But what was the difference here for Utah is it was all Chicago early, Chad, but it's not about how you start, it's how you finish. No, and it was a fantastic job by the Utah Black Diamonds, Spencer Smith and Rob Cassidy to recognize the game plan of Chicago Slice. Firstly, to neutralize the power, and then secondly, to take advantage of the counterattack. 
All right, and we're going to send it courtside with Cameron Blackwood is with Rob Cassidy and Spencer Smith. Spencer, there's a lot of power coming from the other side of the court, but how were you able to neutralize that, especially in the end and come out with the win? Sorry, what did you say that I didn't quite hear? I said there was a lot of power coming from the other side of the court. How were you able to neutralize that? Gotcha, yeah, just they both have crazy good drives. Just keep the volleys out in front and do the best you can. Short and sweet. <clears throat> And it's a different dynamic. You guys had two forehands in the middle, also against two forehands in the middle. How does it change the strategy? I just want to thank my grandmother, Carol Gardner, for always believing me, in me and uh, steering me right. And all the supporters of this game across the country and my students on the East Coast and the West Coast, thank you guys. There you have it. Black Diamonds take the win in this one. We're headed right into mixed doubles. You don't want to go anywhere. Oh my good Lord. And I said, Saturday, no one's here. Right? Are you getting this? You get, yeah. So if he wants the end boy, Water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Anything. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. The ProXR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. ProXR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. ProXR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. All right, we got double vision here as we got our players on championship court finishing their warm-ups, getting set. And then we have grandstand court with the Bay Area Breakers out to a 5-1 lead in the first mixed doubles matchup over the Atlanta Bouncers. Winner of that match gets the winner of this match on Sunday, championship Sunday for the Challenger League. But here on at championship court, it is the Chicago Slice and Utah Black Diamonds all knotted at one. Chicago Slice have Susanna Barr and Connor Garnett taking on Michelle Esquivel and Spencer Smith for the Utah Black Diamonds. We're just about to get underway. Michelle Esquivel to serve. Oh, it's in. Ooh. Oh, it's in again. <laughs> he didn't put anything on it. Oh, that's, that's wide. Garnett needed to do something with that ball that just popped up off of the paddle of Esquivel. Missed opportunity right there for Garnett in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, Esquivel timing him up nicely now. Garnett. Telegraphed that one though. No hiding it. Escavel trying to drive that one off the back foot. Tough to do. Good deep return there. Oh, 
Yeah, and you see the difference. So Garnett takes a quick step back and then steps into the ball, uses the momentum to add the power and follows behind it for the selfie. And Susanna Barr getting fired up right now. Good job by her. Can that ball down in the kitchen? Yeah. And a nice ball from Spencer Smith right there. He controlled that point from the get go. All tied now at three early. First mixed doubles matchup. Good finish from Esquivel, Chad. Yeah, good finish from Esquivel, but you know what? It's Spencer Smith that's doing a fantastic job of staying composed. Good spot there from Barr, right at the left foot of Esquivel. Yeah, and that left foot ball there, like you just talked about, is probably one of the most underrated shots in pickleball. Very difficult to pick up if you don't open the hip. Uh, Chicago with a little confusion in the middle on who's gonna take that third. Yeah, good spot there from Garnett. Little quick step back, lock and load. I'd like to see Esquivel just stay on the backhand with that and sit on it yeah, instead just of take trying to get to the forehand. Slide to the right a little bit. Yeah. Well, he tried it again. That time the ball stayed down a little bit more on him. Harder for him to get under and pick it up. I'm okay with the drive from Smith there, but I think the timing was just off. Late getting into position. Nice step in from Garnett in the middle right there. That's a good finish. Yeah, good footwork, good loading of the paddle position. Good finish there from Spencer Smith. Is, he's playing this role nicely with Esquivel right now, almost as setup, but when he needs to, you know, kind of going for it a little bit. Good ball from Garnett. Yeah, and that's part of the, the composure I was talking about with Spencer Smith. He's very capable of being aggressive, but he's not overhitting. Oh, Garnett wants that one back. He set himself up well. Too, got too, too big. Yeah, too big on the on the backswing there on the forehand, catching that ball late. A little float serve from Esquivel and change of pace. How about the defense from Garnett? Wow, what a dig there on the backhand, Chad. Kid looking good right now. Still like the aggressive play right there from Spencer Smith, though. That took a really tough dig from Garnett to get out of that. Nobody here wants to pull away as they just continue to trade points. And we're all tied at nine. Nice reach in there from Smith, recognizing the bar was off balance. Quick flick into the body. 
Uh, popping that one up for the overhead put away. Jammed up is Susanna Barr right there. We'll change ends. Great job and answer here from Utah to take an 11-9 lead here over Chicago. Looking good here in the first mixed doubles matchup. What's been that difference here, Chad, for Utah? I mean, this is a completely different team than we just called in the quarterfinal. They've cleaned a lot of their errors up. And I think part of it is that composure. They're not, they're, they're applying pressure, but they're not going for too much. They're not trying to force the issue. They're not pushing those spots too hard. They're setting themselves up more and forcing that, that pop up. All right, so it looks like we are just about set and ready to go here. So 11-9 lead here for Utah as Spencer Smith serving. Good spot there from Garnett. And Slice trying to even this up. Nice set up from Smith there. Again, moving the ball around, keeping Garnett off balance. Now that ball's just deep. A little long on the return, and Utah taking a 13-10 lead. Oh, wow. What an angle was, there from Garnett. I was just about to say Garnett is now starting to push the pressure, and then he kind of jams himself up on the backhand roll there, but it comes out perfectly. Tough when you get that ball off the tape. You're expecting it fast and you slow it up. Good job by Barr flipping that down the middle. 12, 13. Yeah. Oh, it goes. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was going to say. There's no, there's no way that it didn't hit Garnett on that one. Tried to get out of the way, couldn't, and it's back to a two point lead here for Utah. Mm. Timing a little off, body positioning a little off. Leaning back, coming up, a little outcome everything. a little off. She'll fix that. Yeah. Yeah. Got away with one there as well. You saw that wrist flick. Popping that ball up, Esquivel catching that ball on the way down. You got to drop that paddle head underneath and that ball floats. 14, 14. All tied here, 14 apiece. No. Just getting too big there is Garnett. If he keeps that paddle out in front and just punches that down the middle, that's a clean winner. in a little rut right now. And they're still tied. So that's the best thing about it is she's in this rut, they're still tied. She swings her way out of it, they're fine. Build, build on that. Oh, that was an incredible.
incredible point for Michelle Esquivel just to stay in that. She had some great gets. But in the end, Garnett a little too much, and Chicago back out to a one-point lead. Let's see Garnett falling back off that ball as well. Trading leads right now. Off the tape, no good for Barr, and Utah now back in front by one. Not sure what Garnett wanted to do with that one. He, That's the high part of the net. He hesitated though. He was going to rip it. Then he looked down to see if that ball was definitely out. And then he's like, oh, I gotta do something and just dumped it into the net. Too much from Garnett. He can't force the issue. Trying to make up for that last ball in one point. Can't do it. Yes, it shows some incredible athleticism, but I used to be able to jump that high. <laughs> it's a little scissor <laughs> kick. <laughs> So 17 19 Garnett serving for Chicago. Utah in control here. Freeze if they get to 18, but it is game point here for Utah. Yeah. Game two, the Utah Black Diamonds, 21-17. Esquivel and Smith take down Barr and Garnett. Difference maker here, Chad, for Utah. I mean, like I said, we saw them what, two hours ago, and they were a little shaky. They got through one. But he, they've cleaned it up, they're staying composed, they're putting pressure on and not trying to force the issue. Whereas for the Slice, they're coming in as the undefeated team and they're feeling that pressure and trying to force the issue. Well, and Cameron Blackwood is courtside with Michelle Esquivel and Spencer Smith. Spencer, I'd like to know why this team out first? Why this team out first, uh, me and Michelle felt confident. Uh, we felt like we were both playing well, so we just decided to go for it. It's worked uh, out well. Yeah. <laughs> you got a little bit of a rut right there in the middle, missing some of those thirds. How were you able to regroup and get that fire back and take the win? Uh, try to get your energy up, try to move your feet. Um, we played a lot yesterday and a lot today, and it's been a roller coaster, so it's just digging as deep as you can and, and uh, fighting really hard. There you have it, Black Diamond's up two to one. We have our next mix coming up. You don't want to go anywhere. to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. 
these supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Oh my good lord, what a feeling All of this joy I've been stealing We all need someone, someone that can make us believe Make us believe So call me a man on a mission I'm guilty by my own admission Locked up but I break free No chains could ever take me Can't stop, don't stop, don't stop now Utah Black Diamond out to a 2-1 lead after Chicago Slice took the first game in women's doubles. But Utah has answered by taking both men's in the first mixed doubles matchup. So now here's the scenario. If the Chicago Slice want to move on to Championship Sunday, they need to win this and force the Dream Breaker, which they have not played a Dream Breaker yet. And if Utah Black Diamonds win this mixed doubles matchup, it's all over and they have punched their ticket to Championship Sunday. Chad, you got Emily Ackerman and Ryler DeHart taking on Olivia McMillan and Rob Cassidy. What are your thoughts on this matchup here? Yeah, I think for the Chicago Slice, you know, the hot has to try and have that controlled aggression that we we discuss so often with these aggressive guys. You know, the hot does have that big drive, but I think he just needs to use it, step inside the court, drop it. I'll be looking for Ackerman to really use that cross court forehand roll dink that we saw in women's doubles. For the Black Diamonds, I think Cassidy has to try to stay on his feet. He can't try to do too much right. because he gets into trouble when he tries to be overly aggressive and moves too much. McMillan, very capable of holding her own and covering the court. So be looking for Cassidy to kind of choose his spots to, to jump in there. All right, Rob Cassidy to serve for Utah. And we're underway here, the second mixed doubles matchup. Mistake there from Ackerman. It was tentative. Now, the one thing with this is the hot being the lefty, it takes away Ackerman's forehand roll because she's playing on that left hand side now. see a steady diet of Olivia McMillan getting a lot of balls here from Ackerman and DeHart. Ball flowing off the paddle of McMillan, standing a little too tall. Paddle face open up. Good control there from DeHaat. Yes, he got big in the middle, but he didn't try to go too big with his swings. Controlled it till that final ball popped up. That's out. And that's part of what we were talking about where Cassidy trying to do too much. He got caught out of position, almost fell into the kitchen. Trying to will that one over with the body. Ackerman getting caught leaning too far to the middle. And Cassidy with a nice drive down the line. Good from Olivia McMillan right there, Chad. Controlled reach in. Nice roll. Taking that ball out of the air, cutting down on the reaction time. 
She had the opening. That's there. She's going to want to see Riley DeHart be a little more aggressive here, but the answer has been made a 4 0 run here for Utah to take a one point lead. Oh, just wide from Cassidy. A little bit of hesitation. Hart hit one more ball. Six, five. Ball's just deep. I don't know if you were watching Olivia McMillan at the beginning of that point. But she was going left, right, left, right with Cassidy jumping with, him with heads eye formation, shadow drill. Great work by our team with Boxcar Productions. Good spot from McMillan. Yeah, McMillan catching to heart, leaning middle, and Utah now out to a three-point lead. Watch it. Oh, body up. Cassidy's just said, yep, I'm beat. He just takes it right off the chest there. Hey, if he was a baseball catcher, that's a solid control of that ball right there. I mean, trying to brush up the back of that ball. Doesn't go anywhere. She just kind of brushes over the top of that a little more and gets it right at the heart. That's not a bad shot. No. That Ackerman can't dial it in right now. Yeah, he's long on a few up at the kitchen and from the baseline. I'm sorry, trying to shake it out right there. Relax the shoulders. Awkward body from Rob Cassidy there. Knew it as soon as he hit it that it wasn't going over the net. Good coverage from Ackerman off the DeHot goes for the poach. So I like the poach and the movement there from Riley DeHart. He's going to have to do that the second half of this game to get them back in it. Good work in the middle by Ackerman to keep them in that point, Jed. Yeah, absolutely. Yo, the coverage from both Ackerman and DeHaat there. there for McMillan, and that's a three-point run here on the end change for Chicago. And Chad, what's the difference there? I think, in my opinion, it's a little more active rather to Hart. No, absolutely. To Hart choosing to get big there in the middle. And even if he's not hitting that ball, but he's putting the pressure on with movement, it's throwing off the timing for Cassidy and McMillan, and also making them second guess the ball positioning or the shot making that they're going to do. And we know that any time that you second guess yourself, you kind of tighten up a little bit. You know, you may leave that ball flat float or miss it in the net. And we've seen a few of those balls floating from both Cassidy and McMillan. And then on the flip side of that, if DeHart's getting aggressive, McMillan's got to see that flip behind him like she did once or twice already and been successful with it. She's just got to recognize and punch that right down the line and she'll be successful. That will neutralize DeHart on the flip side for the Utah Black Diamonds. But as we come back in, it's an 11-10 lead for Chicago, trying to win this and force the dream breaker. Yeah, 
Good move there from DeHaan. You saw him kind of jab stepping towards the middle. Cassidy tried to keep him honest, but DeHaan held, recognized that he was going to go back to Ackerman, stepped over, put, put that ball away with authority. Good reach in from McMillan. Adding a little more top spin. tried it and that's where I want to see Ackerman go to so the right foot of McMillan. McMillan is eating her up when she's rolling that forehand dink. Every time that Chicago seems to get a run here, Utah has the answer to stop it. Now, if I'm Utah, I want McMillan to get into that cross court battle on the forehand side. Oh, just misses it wide. Uh, I'm not a fan of it right now, especially this tight of a game. Now you're 13 13, unless you're sure of it. It's a tough ball. I don't know if she had any other option there, though. there from Cassidy. Getting that ball down to the feet of Ackerman. And McMillan setting up again. Heads up in the stands. That was close. And then McMillan took a... Well, it was close if Cassidy and McMillan almost collided there because Cassidy was coming in, coming in hot cross court, trying to get that. Sorry. McMillan going to take a yeah, second. He's going to grab another, grab another paddle, I think. May have uh, broken the handle on the on the paddle from that one. Yeah. Great effort from both McMillan and Cassidy to stay in that point. Chicago gets the point though. We're all tied at 14. 14, 14. Good reach in from DeHart to start that. Reaches in, goes into the body of McMillan. And then the big forehand attack again. Oh, she timed that one up. So she's attempted it a couple of times, didn't Got quite it. get through it. She hit the top of the net cord. That one, she stays through the stroke a little longer and gets that late dive. He does not go over for Ackerman. Big point there for Utah to get back within one. He misses, he misses a sitter. He misses a sitter there on such a good ball from Ackerman. I don't know if he felt the presence of Ackerman coming behind him there, but he kind of stood up. That's great cross court there from McMillan on the switch with her and Cassidy. And now Utah back up top. 17-16. There it was. There's the sneaky backside catching. Rowler to Hart sitting in the middle trying to poach. And a timeout from Chicago. Utah takes a two-point lead, 18-16. For you guys at home, let's take a look at the knock around KO of the game here so far. This mixed up matchup. 
Harley to Hart, baby. Knock around, knock down of the game. The big forehand. You watch Cassidy McMillan almost collide there on, on the baseline. But the only thing that matters right now, it's an 18-16 lead for Utah. They are on serve here. Chicago desperately needs this match. If they don't get it, that's all she wrote. Chicago is done. But if they do get this matchup, we will go to the Dream Breaker. Rob Cassidy to serve. It's up by two. Had it, there was hesitation from McMillan coming forward, and then Cassidy had the hesitation going and getting that ball. A bailout, a bailout from Ackerman trying to lob that up and over. I don't like that spot there for the lob. Off balance, hard to do. Pulling McMillan in and wide. Cassidy had to come over and cover middle. Attempt there from Ackerman, but fantastic pressure from Cassidy. We are all frozen here. 2018 game and match point for Utah. You got it. Oh, McMillan's down again. She's sliding all over the court. You know, we talked about it before. We're out in the desert. Got a little dust blowing around. And DeHart just going at it, but it's Ackerman with the angle. Oh no, she was she was flat-footed. Yeah, you can't have that right there. And now it is again game and match point for the Utah Black Diamonds. And the Black Diamonds are moving on to Championship Sunday. They make it through the quarterfinals against the Brooklyn Aces, and they take down the Chicago Slice three to one after Chicago went up one hole in women's doubles, Chad. And we've seen it before in this format, right? So Chicago Slice, the undefeated team, they had the bye this morning. Utah having the play, but in the end, it's to their benefit. They they worked out some kinks in the in the game this morning, the match this morning. And came into this one really, really clean. The composure, the power, they had it all in this one. We'll be looking to see. We're, we're going into a dream breaker back here behind us on grandstand. I mean, after that one, you'd almost say, hey, the Utah Black Diamonds are the favorites going into tomorrow. All right, we'll see as Cameron Blackwood is sideline with the Utah Black Diamonds. Take it away, Cam. I'm gonna start with Olivia here. How much cardio do you have to do to play with Rob? You did sideline sprints behind him at least three times. <laughs> yeah, um, I kind of know what to expect with Rob sometimes, and I know he's gonna go for balls, and I'm just there to support him. You guys fought so hard. You earned yourselves in a championship day Sunday. How special is this team? Extremely, extremely special. I love this team. I'm so happy that I got drafted last and we're going to the finals. I love my team. Let's go Black Diamonds. There you guys have it. Black Diamonds and championship day Sunday. 
you guys do not want to miss it. More MLP coming towards you right after this. MLP Mesa is brought to you by Margaritaville. Escape to your personal paradise. Stay, play, live, and dine in Margaritaville. Pickleball United, the official court of Major League Pickleball. HSS, Hospital for Special Surgery, is proud to be the official hospital of Major League Pickleball. Circle, your water, your way. Frommas Pickleball, where Major League Pickleball players and fans get their gear. Michelob Ultra, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-port public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. And I said, Saturday, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get, you know? So if he wants the end boy, Water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Again, elects to stay back. Rautzakowska makes it to the net. Now controlling the point, keeping Buckner on the run. Yeah, she's just moving her around beautifully. Fantastic work from Eva Rautzakowska. Hey, 
So Trifanovic, she's got some work to do here to help keep her team alive. Summers bouncing up and down. Looks real comfortable out here right now as they have a 9-4 lead. Voice plays. Staying back again. I think Trevanovic is going to have to change things up a little bit. Possibly chip and charge, come in and force Summers to play a more tricky shot. And she does. Missed an opportunity there for Trifonovic. It did hit the net, but I think she had an opportunity to at least make that ball playable yeah. and force Summers to come up. 100%. That's a, that's a routine ball. So they'll swap sides, but 11 4 already the margin. And after that little drama or debacle with Newell talking during the point, uh, the bouncers have not won a point since. Uh, Bay Area Breakers have went on a nice run here. See if the bouncers can recover. Trufanovic makes her way in. What oh. a ball by Summers. Yeah, that's, that's hero work right there. She's got the speed to get it around that ball and draw it back cross court. And I think Trevanovic really thought it was either going to be middle or potentially line. And the crowd is chanting Pablo. Couldn't connect on that first drive. Kept it really close to the net there. So Johnson with some work to do. Great return from Pablo Diaz. He was there, ready and waited. Yeah, he's picked his spot beautifully. Good job by Tez, as you see here, to hold that position and force Johnson to go with the harder shot, which would be the cross-court ball. No. What a shot by Tez! Who is the, this man? The crowd goes wild on that point. Take a look at this. Johnson with a great drop shot and Tez backhand. Oh. A dink winner? Yeah, I mean, it was so low. It was so low to the ground. We call that a two for one. Tez hit such a good shot on the play before, uh, and Johnson missing this return. Bay Area Breakers up 15 5 as Christian Alshon comes up against Ben Newell. 15 5. Yeah, a little bit of pressure alleviated from Alshon. And it was due. It was unnecessary, um, certainly. I think and he planned to hit that before he showed up today. Careful here. Yeah, he needs to. Uh, Elsha needs to settle down, play some percentage stuff. Don't worry about looking good right now. Worry about the W. That's three straight points there for Newell. Look for a yell or maybe him to get fired up if he goes four in a row here against Christian Alshon. Yeah, something about good night seems to be happening a lot. Okay, so a good innings from the bouncers. Certainly not out of the woods, though. Radzikowska really had her way with it in the first time uh, these two met. Wow, I like that play by Buckner. It's a subtle change. Last time these two met, Buckner was staying at the baseline. This time she's making her way up to the kitchen. Yeah, look, it's important to give your opponent small targets whenever you really can. That would be a good one to come in on. Yeah, electing to stay back on this point. It works out, but not a fan of that strategy after the previous point. She got easily by making her way in. Sikowska comes in. Yeah, she found the opportunity first. I think Buckner missed one or two chances to potentially drive down the line and then move in on the ball. Let's go. 
So they'll split two apiece there. That goes to your point, Morgan. When your opponent's coming to the net in singles, it forces smaller margin on your shot, which makes it incredibly harder. Yeah, just applying that spatial pressure. Summers and Trifonovic electing to stay back in this rally. Well, uh, well, and it worked out for Trifonovic on this occasion. Possibly watching a lot of the Australian Open going on right now. <laughs> Can you fault them? <laughs> Just missed it. Summers just having the, the better depth on that occasion, keeping the ball nice and deep. Plenty of uh, top spin on the ball and that forehand, especially. And that ball will float wide. One point is the margin. Sorry, one point away from victory. Trufanovic fighting to stay alive. Summers hits the net, and with that, the Bay Area Breakers take this matchup and punch their ticket to Championship Sunday here at MLP. Great effort from both teams, Morgan. Yeah, it really was a hard-fought battle, ups and downs. You see everyone, you know, they're still friends no matter what happens on the court. A couple of calls here and there. Uh, the spirit of the game lives on throughout. Fantastic. So we will be seeing them on Sunday. For now, we will take a quick break. We've got a matchup coming at 5 o'clock Arizona time. Do not go anywhere. That'll be with the Premier level as well. So looking forward to that one. Do not go away for that. We'll have the New York Hustlers versus the Florida Smash. Oh, it's going to be a great matchup there. We saw the New York Hustlers earlier today. Sorry, I, uh, forgive me. Frisco Clean Cause. Clean Cause. Uh, yes, the Clean Cause for versus Florida Smash. That'll be coming up in around about 20 minutes. So we expect to see you back here. Uh, I'm Morgan Evans alongside Brandon Insekpong. We'll see you shortly. Take it easy.
It is time for one more match from Talking Stick Resort Championship Corp. This is MLP Mesa by Margaritaville. The SoCal Hard Eights versus the Los Angeles Mad Drops. We're back on the premier level side of Major League Pickleball. Cameron Irwin alongside Adam Stone. But let's take a look at our group standings for the premier level. This is group A, B, and C. New Jersey Five starting off awfully strong, as did the Seattle Pioneers. No surprise there with a one and two draft picks. Mm -hmm from this year, but this is where it's gonna get interesting. Group B. Uh, absolutely correct. We had the LA Mad Drops uh, defeating the Frisco Clean Cause earlier today, and then the Forger Smash taking down the so-called Hard Eights. Uh, so we have a, a do or die situation for both teams that we're about to see. All right, well, let's get to it. It's the Los Angeles Mad Drops versus the Hard Eights. Starting off is Mary Brasha alongside Lindsey Newman. Hometown hero, lives about 10 minutes away. And they're facing off against right. Catherine Parento and Irina Tereshenko. So hard eight, sir, first. Nice drop, very high on the first one from Brasha. Her partner uh, helped her out there, Lindsey Newman, and a very nice seventh shot drop for Mary Brasha, well done. Once they hit the ground, it's really hard to send those back all the way from beyond the baseline. Yes, definitely wow. true. Sets, attacks, dinks, so well done. Got to love the way. Mary Brasha backs up, gets that two-handed backhand into the mix. I would say, I would put it on the side of the Mad Drops. I would say that Lindsey Newman and Mary Brush are a little bit more known for their defensive style of play. Definitions of veterans of the game. Been around, great experience from both players. Yeah. Yeah, nice hands from Mary Brasha. I would say certainly not surprised. Catherine Parento is a phenomenal player, but I was expecting Tereshenko to play the left side. I was going to ask. I was waiting for the next point. Exactly. With that, <laughs> loving that backhand carve dink, but uh, certainly uh, not a shocker, I would say. phenomenally done in the, <laughs> the hard eights owner Tim Parks in the middle of the point yells out, out. because he thought <laughs> Irina's overhead was out unbelievable and Mary just kept playing through it to the middle for Catherine Parento and putting that ball inside out instead of hooking it to Mary Abrasha caught Lindsay Newman a little bit off guard. 4-4 four, four now. Good 
look, but it's long on the lob from Mary Brasha. Yeah, a little too much for Mary Brasha. Not a terrible idea, even though Tereschenko is one of the more athletic, athletic players on tour. On cue, Irina Tereschenko with two nice two-handed backhands, one of the better poachers in the game, really using every bit of that 5-10 frame. I actually was watching Catherine Parento during warm-ups make that exact same play, but she actually got the ball down, so you gotta watch out when she's lunging like that forward. She is deadly, even though she just mishit that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, nice move by Lindsay Newman, taking a little bit of a risk coming across the court. I don't hate that decision at all. Just too, hands too good on uh, the mad drop side. Tough break. The reaction body language of Lindsay Newman says it all right there. did a great job of working their way back forward to the kitchen line, just a perfect spot uh, from Catherine Parento on that forehand attack up the middle. Yeah. What a poach, Irina Tereschenko. Yeah, incredible play from Irina. At full extension, able to keep it in. I don't hate the let go from Mary Brasha, but just too good from Irina. Outside looking in, this is really uh, what takes these players to the next level. I'm not surprised at all to hear Catherine say that. It's definitely been one of the big elements as the additions continue and continue in the game of pickleball. Yeah, maybe if there could possibly be one knock on Catherine, it's her put away power, but man, she can do everything else on the court. Without a doubt, well, she's about to show us her serve. She's locating those. Exactly right. I believe that's at least at least two, if not three, right up the middle and perfectly placed. <laughs> Irina coming in hot. Very nice job for Mary Brasha calling Lindsay Newman off that ball. Irina apologizing. The ball got a little high on her up at the face of Lindsay Newman. She, she definitely pretzeled up Mary Brasha there, who was uh, looking a little bit more to the forehand side, was unable to get her paddle back to the middle. Very nice one-handed attack from Catherine Parento. Yeah, she was hanging back, thinking she might get another uh, lower ball at her feet from the midcourt. A uh, little too late on the decision process to come in.
sure. Another ball to the middle. Newman and Brasha got to get that ball situated. Some slight middle confusion from the hard eights early on. in the direction of the mad drops. Yeah, things are clicking on all cylinders. There you go, maybe that, that, they just needed one break to turn things around, see what they can come up with. But we are moving to the latter stages of this opening match and they gotta figure something out very soon. shots she's got to change the mo a little bit exactly right and uh, yeah you don't see that too frequently going down on one knee but effective for newman and a big fist pump to get herself going in front of the home crowd. Tricky, tricky for Lindsay Newman. Yeah, totally froze Irina. I don't blame her. I didn't see that coming either. She even undercut that ball. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't double digits, it was approaching that. Phenomenal <laughs> job of staying patient, not panicking, and getting themselves back forward. Yeah! And they caught her in the belly Go button in. twice. She fended off the first. Go exactly in. right. Parento was unable to get her arms extended and get that extra power she needed. Nice job by the hard eights jamming her up. one of the last 15 she's had from the back of the quarter of the midport just always the one just that gets, could, yeah. Yeah, couldn't get it over yeah, nice pressure from Catherine Parento hitting that drive and coming in very quickly afterwards nice two shot combination yeah, exactly what she wants there Lindsay Newman kind of catching Irina coming forward and then going with the forehand pancake, which is one of her favorite shots. I like this timeout right here at uh, 17, 17 serving 12. A little sportsmanship from the Mad Drops and the Hard Eights there, smiles on everybody's face. Just like that first match in the day, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little different between yeah. the Mashers and uh, the Fives, let's put it that way. Yeah, no doubt. And we really do have some interesting storylines here. Like I said, uh, we have Stefan Averne on the Hard Eights filling in for Riley Newman, uh, who has had a prior engagement in Australia. We also have, like I said, the hometown uh, of Lindsay Newman. We have the veterans, Tereshenko and Catherine Parento, and we have cousins playing against each other. <laughs> AJ Kohler Not yet. and Thomas we Wilson. There yet. Well, I know. You know what I'm saying. This is for the whole team match here. We got Jill Braverman on screen, rocking the camo. Love to see it. I can't see her. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that's, that's match five humor right there. I love it. <laughs> 18 to 12 now for the Los Angeles Mad Drops, Parento and Tereshenko. But I'm glad you bring up the other names. Um, oh, there's Lindsay Newman's little one <laughs> popping out. Uh, but I'm glad you bring up the other names as you, you do have uh, Thomas Wilson and Julian Arnold as a part of the Los Angeles Mad Drops. And Avern and Kohler are on the other side for the SoCal Hard Eights. They'll be next up in men's doubles. 
That was right on the left toe of Lindsey Newman. Yeah, tough ball. Catherine coming all the way over to protect Irina, who is in the back of the court. Nice aggressive dink from her. She's lost her glasses, but was still able to get the ball back. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, tough one. It's really hard to get out of the way when they kind of put it up by the chest. Newman tried to let her know it was going out. Nothing Brasha could do, though. No way to get out of the way. Game point. And game number one goes to the Los Angeles Mad Drops. Parento and Tereschenko just bringing a little too much heat. Yeah, really, really great start from them. I think the Hard Eights got a little bit of footing in the heart of that match, but just a little too little too late. So the Mad Drops are first on the board. We've had, I think, what, three go to a Dream Breaker today? Yeah, I think so. Three. Oh my, what happened? Cameron Blackwood got uglier. <laughs> What happened? We now have, oh. a, new, we have a new sideline. Dominic Catalano, I think, uh, is standing by with our winners. Dom, I think you look great. All right, I'm with Irina Tereschenko, <laughs> Catherine Parento after their victory. Irina, playing against two players who have such good defense on that side, how do you find the holes in their game? Um, I think we had a pretty solid game plan to maybe try to get the ball moving a little bit, and we were very mentally prepared for every single ball coming back. So I think the key for us was to stick to the plan, stay focused, and yeah, absolutely, this team fights to the end and they get every single ball back. And then Catherine, how important is it for you guys to set the tone for your gentlemen here and get 1-0 that early lead? Oh, I think it's really important. I mean, the first one, one up, um, it's a little bit more pressure on the other team. So I think we can keep going, put the pressure on, and hopefully get the second point. All right, Mad Drops 1-0, heading to men's doubles. Don't go anywhere. We got the men's doubles on the other side of this break. At Front with Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from Front with Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. The ProXR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. ProXR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. ProXR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. And I said, Sarah Day, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get, yeah. So if he wants the end Water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. The fellas have taken the court, which means it's time for men's doubles up next. The Los Angeles Mad Drops picked up the women's doubles competition with one point now on the board for them. If you're just joining us, which would be a shocker at this point in the day for uh -huh. Major League Pickleball, we're playing potentially up to five total games, but you have to win three and then you can be done. If you then find yourself at that 2-2 decision, you're gonna go to the Dream Breaker, which we have had several on the day and they have been fantastic. 
Right now, it's going to get interesting, though, between Thomas Wilson, go, right Julian here. Arnold, Stefan Averne, and A.J. Kohler. Yeah, has I think, space up. yeah, I think we've had three of four so far. Three of four on championship court, many others on the out, the outer courts. But I'll tell you what, this is an interesting situation. A, a big testament, A.J. thinks a lot of Stefan Averne because before this tournament started, he said he hates lefties. He would not play with a lefty. And then he gave the sign-off for picking up Stefan Averne. So, so Pretty big compliment coming from AJ. So Stefan was in the challenger level on what team? Uh, correct, he was with the DC Pickleball team. They did not advance, so he was available for pickup. And right away, the bad drops, finding point. Yeah, Thomas, uh, good mover, and obviously a big forward. Forehand, he showed both on that point. One zero. already from AJ over at the Cousin. I know that they have a healthy relationship, but a competitive relationship, so this is going to be a very interesting match. point by the mad drops. Me. You. You. A loose airs from AJ Kohler after some very nice shots from the mad drops. We saw a little Julian energy on Diamo Arnold getting pumped up on that previous point. Ex expect more of the same. Give a big smile to that Andiamo. Stefan Averne definitely favors that forehand, and you'll see him step over to his right to counterattack with that big lefty forehand. That one wasn't so big, but it landed nicely inside the baseline. creator of? That's correct. The Julian Arnold edition and exactly right. Nice two-handed speed up. Stefan a little bit late clearing his body to hit that forehand counter. Yeah. Oh. And yes, the apparently uh, Vox sometimes does say Andiamo when you open. He told me it wasn't his idea, but I told him it's a great, a great marketing plus. AJ not happy with the fans talking to the ref about someone yelling something in his backswing. He's staring over at the fans as we speak. go just letting out a little frustration on the ball yeah drive into the net from thomas wilson missed return from arnold maybe that can springboard the hard eights to string a few more points together kick save and a butte Nice pressure from the mad drops. Here we go. Go black. Here we go, Seven and four. You, you. There you are. What a shot from Julian Arnold. Yeah, phenomenal job from Julian. He really likes to hold and flip that backhand, and he had Stefan and Vern going for the Ernie perfect uh, kind of sequence of events for success for the Mad Drops. Yes. Yes. 
step in and some conversation from Kohler. Chirping, let's go baby, in a mini stare down. Julian smiling big, let's go boys. Julian taking a big walk around his half of the court before getting reset. No. Wow, just missed. Incredible get from Stefano Vern and a great counterattack from Kohler right at his Adam's apple, but couldn't come up with the next ball just wide. Get Kohler pumped up. You like to, to see that. And you gotta imagine the nerves he might be feeling playing on this squad. Ooh, he went for it, got all the way around, had plenty of time, thought he might drop, but he instead went for the drive. Yeah, I'm surprised he had so much time because he got a little bit of a late break of going backwards, yeah. but just clipped the tape, it would have been a spectacular shot. Too good. Yeah. Some dinner has been served at the hand of AJ Kohler. And he says, where you going twice to Julian with a little smirk on his face. They got a good energy and a good vibe going on on the court right now. <laughs> Really, really good, kind of at the chest and above. Lots of power from Wilson. Played a little bit of tennis at the University of Texas at Austin. So certainly uh, been in plenty of big stages and big moments in his sporting career. So if you're a burn right now, I gotta ask, what are you telling yourself when you're playing alongside AJ Kohler? You got two great opponents on the other team. You've been pulled up. Mm -hmm. Kind of this. You got nothing to lose out of you, but at the same right. time, you feel like a lot of pressure is right. on your shoulders. Right, nothing to lose, but kind of a whirlwind as well in the last 24 hours or so, finding all of this out. So uh, definitely, I, I would look for Stefan to concede a little bit of court when both players are at the kitchen. And I think one of Stefan's best attributes is his power when the ball goes up high. So it's kind of a delicate situation. He wants to give Kohler free reign to kind of do his thing and create some offense, but at the same time, I think he does have the better put away power. They got to get something perfectly situated for that middle. Well, we'll see if that can take shape. There's a look at Lindsey Newman right now, sitting courtside. I think, I think that was a look that said a lot about how this match is going so far. Right now, it's only about a four point differential between these two. So a 12 0 run today. Don't forget it. from Julian Arnold, kind of that. I'm not exactly sure what his walk is after he hits a good shot like that, but it's powerful, we'll say. <laughs> yeah. A weird situation. Kohler caught himself pretty far off the court, made his next ball awkward. Mad drops, six point lead. Flip the tape. Third shot, fifth shot, both drives from Julian Arnold. Pickleball game came from the tennis world. Picked up a paddle for the first time back in April of 2021. It's been a quick ascension for him. 
Yes, absolutely. Thomas Wilson has been playing for a while, but very sparingly early in his career. Definitely taking the game more serious the last two years or so. Nice ball from AJ Kohler. Kind of sitting backhand, but really quick hands to get over to his forehand side and put that ball right at his cousin Thomas Wilson's feet. Nice roll dink, Julian Arnold. from A.J. Kohler. Really strong with the flip of the wrist, former hockey player. One of the players out here with the least tennis background. A little bit of tennis in his younger years. Yeah, good look, got exactly what he wanted. Looking up at the skies. 17-10 now. Nice little half turny from Stefan. Got a lot of spin on that ball. I believe that's what created the error from Julian Arnold. Oh, we got a look in the truck. Let's go. Hey, everybody. There you go. Boxcar crew. A nice whip from Julian. Really holds it to the last minute. Stefan wasn't in a terrible position for that two-handed counter, but the ball just got on him a little too quickly. he was open for. It seems like he's getting his paddle on things, but not going the direction he needs. Yeah, he has an unorthodox style. And usually, yeah. usually what happens when you have an unorthodox style, maybe you have some deception, but what it happens is it's a little more difficult to repeat your mechanics. So occasionally you have some inconsistencies creep in, but at the same time, he can do some special things on the court that a lot of other players can't. So it's kind of a give and a take. Uh, you know, you can't have it all out here. No, and it's tough. And that's one of the unique things too about pickleball. And, and actually most sports, if you, if you take a look, and there's so many different ways to be able to compete, right? You see different styles uh, and little nuances, whether it's a, a different grip or a different style of movement. Maybe you're more defensive minded versus offensive minded, but there's a place for you even at the professional level uh, with those different, within those different styles. Definitely true, and I think pickleball is more so than most other sports in that regard. Maybe things might change as it continues to gain popularity, but right now there is a lot of variety uh, and a lot of ways to be successful, especially at the pro level, which you don't see in a lot of other sports like you mentioned, Cameron. Well, and a lot of people talking about tennis and how much it's you're having these pro tennis players come in across, but there's still room for those without a tennis background. It's just going to take that much more work. There's no way that ball's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, check that ball. Yeah, get rid of that one. Check that ball. <laughs> yeah. Real loose arm from Stefan Avern, like I was talking about, that high, high end put away power. Speaking of high end put away power, <laughs> Julian Andiamo Arnold. By the way, he is Italian. He says some people don't think he is because of his last name. He said, I absolutely am. My mother is Italian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a couple claps there. Got to get something going, guys. Obviously, trailing 20 to 13. Now we're never hard eights. Oh, yeah, that's good. Great ball on the two-hander from Stefan Avern. <laughs> Lindsay Newman's got a maraca in her hand right now. She just gave that thing a little shake. Ball long. Hey, we have it. We've seen some pretty solid comebacks today, but not an epic one. Hey, let's let's get let's make this one the first one. Yes. Chop, chop, chop. 
some form of noisemaker. You can see Lindsay right behind her official, just sitting down right there, the Moroccan in her hand. It is a game point for Los Angeles Mad Drops. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like there's a, a rattlesnake on the court right, somewhere. Right. AJ, <laughs> AJ was trying to get in there, and I think he was glad that he didn't after that put away from Stefano <laughs> Vern. But nice setup by AJ either way. Yeah. Oh, there's another from a bird. Oh, we, oh. Let Mary, him cook. Mary Brasha right here. She's got a noisemaker as well. That's it. movers in the game and you don't even really realize it sometimes because it's so effortless. Let it go, that ball's long. Remember, until they get to 18, which they just did, they were gaining points on every single opportunity. So here we go. 18 to 20. Yes, I mean, crazy, I said. <laughs> Haven't seen an epic comeback. Go, go, go. Oh, I was going to say, I was impressed. Avern was really pushing Wilson off the kitchen line, especially with that middle D. Julian not coming across. Yeah, definitely. And Stefan just... Kind of got his feet crossed up there, didn't get in perfect position with his contact point. Unfortunately, left that dink high. and kind of smiling, watching him do his thing. How is it playing next to a guy so electric like Julian? It's just fun to know you have an automatic engine. I mean, Julian's gonna bring the energy every point, every time. And so I'm out there just trying to do my thing, have fun and smile, because he's gonna pump everybody up, including me and our team. So it's a blast playing with him. All right, Mad Drops moving on to Mixed Doubles. They are 2-0. and We'll see what happens after this break in Mixed Doubles. Match point. 
It's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. Six carbs and 95 calories. Let's get to mixed doubles. The matchups, as it appears on the court right now, AJ Kohler with Mary Brasha facing off against Catherine Parento and Julian Arnold. Right now, the LA Mad Drops lead two to zero. So if they pick up this first mixed doubles matchup, they would then win the match. Cameron Irwin alongside Adam Stone. Dominic Catalano doing a great job down on the sideline as well. Check it in with all of these fantastic players. Now, I've got to check in before we get to this mixed doubles matchup with you. This is about to conclude the second day of Major League Pickleball. What have been your impressions to this point? I mean, I think it's been an incredible atmosphere. I really like to see all the players in one place. We had that on the very first season and did not quite have that for, uh, you know, a couple reasons I won't get into with some of the tour wars and things like that. So um, really nice to see everyone in one place and uh, to have, uh, you know, some some fresh faces. A lot yeah. of these pre premier players are established, but some of the fresh faces in Challenger uh, was really nice to see some up and comers kind of have a stage to to show everyone and showcase their talent. So uh, it's been it's been awesome. Uh, obviously, the premier guys are just, I mean, the guys and gals, they're just playing on such a high level now. I just love to see the growth of the sport in general. Yeah, you know, it's so funny because you sit here and you're like, man, I've heard about this name or this name, and you haven't quite seen them at maybe a tournament that you've been at. And all of a sudden, you see them play, you're like, oh, no wonder people are talking about them. So maybe who are some of those people who have impressed you? And obviously, it would probably be coming from that challenger level right. side right now. But right. just in the first two days, who? Who's really impressed you? Yeah, so we had we had the uh, uh, the Breakers yeah. who who had a, a, not a very well known team, but some strong upside. Christian Alshon, Pablo Tellez, uh They had Rachel and, Summers. And who, who, Eva Rad exactly, and a lot of those players were staying on the East Coast and not really in the mix on a national stage. So it was really cool to see that. Uh, just a couple that come to mind: Connor Garnett. Um, you know, so, some of those players that are you know picked as as a, a second player on a challenger team but have the ability by the end of the year could be uh, as as a, um, for the second draft of this season in the premier level. Yeah. So uh, really cool to see. And it won't always be like that. Eventually, it'll be ho even harder to break in. And, yeah. But right now, it, it's really cool to see how the turnover and you can be playing for a year. If you go for it, you can be relevant. Next double's now underway. Oh, when it hit Mary Brasha, yeah. that ball was going out of bounds. Tough break, and what happened there was Catherine had backspin on the ball, so it was kind of riding, and unfortunately Mary could, Mary could not get out of the way. Very nice job. These two have been on the same MLP team before, so comfortable with each other on court. Parento have played any tournaments together before this, but Catherine very versatile. I'm sure she can be very malleable to whatever the situation is. This is a great example. She's already playing now on the right side. She was playing left with Irina. Yeah, exactly. Good day, 
It pours tough break for the eights. Nice drive by Catherine, but clipping the tape, Julian Arnold on that two handed backhand, nothing they can do. Definitely a smaller player out here, but electrically quick with the footwork and one of the best movers. I only laugh because I asked him how tall he was this past week. He told me 5'9-ish. <laughs> yeah, I, I say 5'8 on a good day when people ask me. <laughs> I said, with shoes on, you're good. You 5'10. <laughs> Take it. Here we go. Three, five. Uh, from Mary Brasha, just having trouble getting one down. Doesn't even have to be the perfect drop, but just not allowing those opponents to hit down on the ball. Double, double. Did he get it? <laughs> he slid about as far as Lightning McQueen right there. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he said two bounces right away, but I'm not sure what AJ is asking the referee. Oh, he was asking for their score, I guess. As the referee held up three fingers. No, no, no. Point. Another point for the Los Angeles Mad Drops to make it now seven to three. Seven three. Inside out play from Julian. Being too high for Mary Brasha, and she knew it. Happens to the best of us. Action also happening out on the grandstand. Shot from AJ Kohler after some net assistance. But yes, the grandstand is the other two players in this group, the Florida Smash and the Frisco Clean Cause. As you see Matt Wright staring someone down. <laughs> well, we see, they don't. Yeah. We see Julian Arnold yes. getting a put away right there. <laughs> Everybody saw that, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're watching on the other stream, so you're good. Nine, four. For that one. <laughs> nice work, partner. Adrian <laughs> <laughs> just took a shot to the belly. Yeah, someone, <laughs> somebody said light them up from the crowd. <laughs> I think she's, I wouldn't say rattled, but definitely a little frustrated with it, leaving a couple balls high and then missing that counter. Uh, here we go. Grandstand court action as we speak. 2020 in the men's doubles match. Near side of your screen, Colin Johns on the right, Travis Rettenmeyer on the left. That's Matt Wright, who just misses one and drops down on the far side of your screen in the blue, and Zane Navertil. 
Oh, he had everything he wanted. He can't believe it. By the way, it's 20 <laughs> all out there. I know that feeling. He redeemed himself there. I think there's some kind of over there, but back to championship court, talking stick resort. Ah, we got the double view. Thanks, guys, and the truck. Florida smash lead 1-0 out on that court as well. You're good, Mary. Let's go right here. We're back out of the timeout, 11 to 5. Well popped up and nutmeg. Yeah, a little. <laughs> Kohler's a hockey player, that's the five hole. <laughs> Come on, Ace. as Arnold was in the midcourt. Jay Kohler's playing rather aggressive right now. I would say probably borderline sloppy. Come on! Josh has not seen go, AJ. Which is hard when you're also trying to find your rhythm. There's that balance of taking certain shots, but also you and your partner. Beautiful. side of your screen, real time on the left. No one's even watching the left right now. <laughs> Everyone just wants to see the replay. Nice play from AJ Kohler. Epic finish. from AJ, one from Mary, Go, Jay, right in that back, I guess, left corner from their perspective. <laughs> yeah, nice you move from Mary Brasher to get out of the way. A little too much action from Julian Arnold. Mary Brasher has quite tennis background as well. Started playing tennis back when she was nine years old. Coached by her dad. Some visible frustration from Mary. Space too. You got 
AJ Kohler coming over pretty aggressively. Yeah. Don't don't hate the play, but definitely left that ball a little too high and yeah. easy pickings from Julian Arnold there. No words. 18-18 now. 8-18, excuse me. Those are some hard eights. Oh my. Come on, eights. Let's go. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. It's match five of the day. 19 to 8. They're going to take a timeout here as the mad drops. Yeah, definitely. Stay steady. Situation obviously very dire. So, timeout. Anything you can, use all your tricks to, to kind of squash the momentum of the mad drops. But they're playing very well. Very fiery. It's going to be a tall task. He'll be able to be partnered up alongside, I'm assuming, his sister in mixed doubles. So yes. this could be a partnership moving forward in terms of seeing AJ alongside with Mary. Right, yes, definitely. And and you're exactly right. Uh, I mean, they're the hard eights. They like to roll the dice. Uh, took a gamble knowing that Riley was not going to be available for this first event and, and hoping that, uh, obviously, <laughs> one of the very best players in the game can uh, uh, make this team uh, better for, for rounds two and rounds three of MLP. Dinking in terms of letting Mary jump in there and go a little more cross court with Catherine Parento out of that. Yeah, right. That that was the pattern uh, throughout that point and a little slight firefight there at the end from the fellas. One by Julian Arnold. Loose arm from Julian Arnold. Great put away power. Nothing AJ can do there. Match point opportunity for the Los Angeles Mad Drops. Yeah, good eye. Good call from AJ, too. It looked like Mary was already ready to let that ball go out, but a little partner communication never hurts on those shots. ones in, in the, uh, well this match and the women's match as well so good defense from Julian Arnold but AJ Kohler there that was. <laughs> uh, I got to hit with her the other day or about two days ago. She used it quite a few times and effectively as well. Good shot, AJ. Nice ball from Kohler, big forehand, big spin. So another shot to add some more points. attack but I like him you know stalking the middle that's what he needs to do that drops again looking at a match point 
Keep wiggling back in, no freeze. <laughs> I mean, Keep it, adding points, one I mean, after another. They've added five. They was at 20 to eight just a couple minutes ago, so we saw the same thing in the men's match. AJ Kohler. Yeah, incredible hands. Catherine waiting right there in the Ernie position. A very interesting point. And another ball. Back the direction of the hard eights. Chipping away. One after another. This is where it gets tough right now. Matt drops just need two in a row. Make it 15 20. Yeah. Make it 16 20. Oh, Kohler getting fired up, too. Here we go, eight. That's the mixed double pump take that I've talked about. It is something that happens when the guy is taking too much court. I don't think that's really anyone's fault necessarily. Uh, just some slight miscommunication. Tough break for Brasha. I'm loving this. Mary Brasha is so competitive, showing her emotions right now with the partner. She's fighting. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go, drop. Another side out. Let's go, drop. Catherine Prentice ready to be done, facing yet another match point. Could you, I mean, how could you not think that this thing was probably in the bag at 28, one of the more lopsided <laughs> scores we've had in 10 straight points from the eights to be right back in this thing. Yeah! <laughs> 11 straight, it's 1920. My goodness, what is happening? 1920. Right off the line, is that the break they needed? Irina Tarashenko stepping on court with some words of encouragement. Still frozen. Oh, tough break. It was. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what. A lot of these matches are very structured. All three of these matches have been a little all over the place in, in this particular match.
to Los Angeles Mad Drops. Yeah, incredible match, incredible comeback. But like I said about so, some of the structure, you know, you have these dinks, they're going here, they're going there. But when you got the Iceman, AJ Kohler out there, anything goes, we're lobbing, we're, we're doing this, we're doing that. So very interesting point construction and a uh, uh, nice job to the to the uh, Los Angeles Mad Drops. Uh, they deserve this win and they got it 3-0. I like that, you call him Iceman, huh? The Iceman, the yeah, Iceman. a lot. Like, like we're going full time I mean, he, he, he has a lot of nicknames. One his biscuit. I won't even get into no, that. I, I, oh yeah. Oh, we we, 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 we talked about one. that last time. So <laughs> he's got like seven names. He's a lovable character. So uh, you know, tough break for the hard eights uh, with your number one draft pick out. But uh, you know, congrats to the Mad Drops. All right. It looks like the Mad Drops are about all lined up with Dom down on the court. All right. Take it away, Dom. Back here, courtside. One more time with the LA Mad Drops after they win 3-0. Congratulations, first and foremost. But Julian, I start with you. You guys and Thomas were 2010, and then it's 28. You made it interesting again. What are you and Catherine thinking there as they're coming back on you? I'm thinking this is MLP, and that's the way this is set up. So it's meant for drama, and uh, you know if. Uh, Maybe they get rid of the freeze completely. I don't know, <laughs> but it seems to be, seems to be a little bit more entertaining. I might have a heart attack on the court, but uh, <laughs> at least the fans like it. So that's right. And then Irina, how important is it for you guys to go into day two with a 2-0 lead? Um, I think it's very important, but uh, we're still hungry. We still have to earn a spot uh, in the playoffs, and uh, anything could happen. So. We're definitely feeling confident, but we're not taking our results for granted, and we're just going to put in the work tomorrow morning. All right, well, congratulations. Mad Drops go 2-0 and o on the day. That's it for here, us for here on a championship court. We're going to send it back up to you, Cam. Awesome. All right. Well, Mad Drops going 2-0 on the day. It has been a phenomenal one for Major League Pickleball Mesa by Margaritaville. We've got more coverage coming your direction tomorrow, so be sure to tune in because it's all premier level tomorrow. We can't wait to have Championship Sunday also just around the corner. We'll see you back here. Thanks for joining us in Arizona.